Oh, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> it's okay because the live stream, only the, the re upload will even hear that. I don't even think they caught the part about Coom, so it's fine. Oh, man. Oh, oh, that was the best part for the next 30 seconds. Oh, where that was and stuff. Me, me, me. That was a pretty good part, the Coom part. Yeah. All right, fine. I, like I don't disagree with that. You shouldn't because it would be wrong. Rax, do you remember how we like game. totally played through the whole that alien game? That was weird, huh? Like what what are you talking about in terms of like we just played through all of it? We completed an entire game in like 9 hours, but in m 3 streams we're struggling to get through a TV show discussion. <laughs> that wasn't exactly where I was going with it. I was just like marveling at the fact that we went through that whole game. We didn't really even like it. <laughs> what I what I'm curious about is what brought this to the forefront of your mind at this at this time. I was um, uh, moving things around. and I saw it. it. I don't know why it's in the recommended for me right now, but uh, um, yeah, and I was just like, man, yeah, we did that. Yeah. That was it. That's right. We did do that. That is something we done did do. We did do done did it. And it wasn't. Yeah, yeah it really wasn't. Yeah. Uh, huh. <clears throat> It was like a roller coaster that never got very high. No, it was. It was. There were certain little points where you're like, "Hey, this, you know." Hey, it's just yeah. I'm kind of having fun, sort of enjoying myself a little bit. Yeah. And then androids would show up, and, and you're like, like well, "Why? Yeah, GG, why? No. why? Why? Why are you here? Why are you here?" And we never found out why they were here. So you know, I just don't. Cute. It's. It feels like an obligatory thing with aliens games now i guess is that you just have to fight androids you gotta throw in them because you, yeah. you just have to in this aliens game you really have to fight androids you can't you, just you fight just, aliens we can't just i mean we as the developers who who can do whatever we want we we can't just not have androids that's you can't do that now there's people in chat now so we can we can pretend as though uh we can we can address them instead of just the ether um or each other Hello, chat. Like Welcome to uh, the Fab One Seven Four. Uh, we're gonna try and be yeah, fast hey, with chat. this because we're actually a little bit stressed for time, and I mean that in this in this in the EFAP sense, where it's like we've only got a hundred <laughs> hours. Damn. Uh, um, no. <laughs> Quick so, run. Uh, uh, qu as as people have or many have pointed out, right? There are people missing now. We did uh, Drinker, as you may remember, popped in in part one. This isn't quite the format. Um, for Drinker. Uh, I even, we did a talk about Arcane uh, the few days after he came on, just going over quickly what his favorite sort of parts are and stuff. Um, I can't remember which catch-up it is, but if you want to hear that, it's in there somewhere. It's the beginning of one of the catch-ups he's done for Open Bar. Now, so we lost him, and you're like, whoa, 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 where's Fringy? Fringy's uh, assuming, Fringy thinks that the show starts in 40 minutes from now, and it's fair that he does because he was asleep when messages were sent about that not being the case. But you'll see him in 40 minutes. Or less. Or more, I guess. It could be anything. Where's Jay? Well, Jay doesn't look at Discord messages, but claims that he does. <laughs> like, that's a wonderful existence. Literally, we were like, right, everyone's about ready to go. Then it's like, Jay has gone live on Twitch. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> um, so Jay knows that we're streaming. Uh, and Jay will be here after completing a reaction to uh, someone's video about him and Hassan. Um... It's all right, because to be honest with you, if there was one part to miss of our discussion out of these four episodes, it would probably be episode six, I think. Maybe the first half of episode six, at least. It's, it's probably the lowest stakes part of the four episodes. So, um, but it's not to say it's not good. It's like, all right, then. Well, where's Duma? Well, unfortunately, uh, Duma hasn't felt too comfortable coming back on for Arcane. He's, he's said he's more than happy to come on for um, a different topic sometime, but um. As many in chat will know, he's gotten into many, many arguments post-stream, and there are many, many comments that are very, uh, not friendly, uh, regarding him. Now, I wouldn't want to say it's, like, explicitly a negative, uh, response. Like, well, I guess you could say negative, but, like, in the sense that there's a lot of comments that are quite constructive in terms of, like, I think this was the problem with the argumentation, blah, 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 but you get a lot of comments that are also just, like, fucking get rid of him, and sort of thing. Um, which was unfortunate. Uh, we were hoping he'd come yeah. back. Uh, I left yeah, it up to him, we and he said he would rather not this time around because he feels like it would be uh, like like people would overall that the, the situation would be made worse because a lot of people were very unhappy with him. I can already see a lot of people are upset about that, and I'm glad. I am. I uh, yeah. yeah, I wanted him back. 
Yeah. Mm. I wanted to hear the conversation because there were a lot of people that would go on about how everything's a travesty in the writing and everything like that. And it was nice to have a dissenting opinion here and there. And it was an interesting conversation. It really was. I I liked episode two of this a lot because of it. And yeah, we got all, yeah. you know, groany and grunty about like when re repetition started to set in and a lot of things were repeated. But that was really all that was annoying about that. The conversation was great. I loved it. So... Doomer, if you're listening, if you want to come in, we won't say no. Just well, and, he, and he has the ability to join whenever he wants, if he wants. Yep. No, uh, right no there. crashes. Going in. Um, because you know, you know, he had he had plenty of like uh, barely anyone's referencing any of the good stuff he said or the insightful things he said. It was mainly just the well, yeah, he had a he lot says of good stupid stuff things. Say. Like, sorry, sorry. Or well, the entirety <laughs> of the first stream, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, you know, part of the regret is that I know that there was lots of things you wanted to talk about, and so I'm just like, you, uh... I know! The, the door's open, than... Duma. Uh, assuming you are listening, the door is wide open. And with that, yes. we really, like, I hate to rush us, but we really do just have to get into it. Um, because... Uh, yes, because... Oh, I guess, why do we have to rush? Time. Because, one, essence. because time. So there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, where... Get, yeah, carry on. <laughs> yeah, we. What is our our limit? Is five hours, six hours? I have to leave in about five and a half hours. All right, and I think with this one, because we really don't want to be like, all right, as soon as Rags leaves, we'll just set it to the next DFAP. We will probably carry on till the end. Carry on, yes. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. This will be the last arcane EFAP, All right. Yeah. See, someone already said <laughs> not again. It's like I know. Okay, <laughs> three. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So. Let us begin. Episode 6, which opens up on a flashback of a young Victor, which is possibly my favorite of all of the kids' flashbacks. It um, is my favorite flashback as well. We get to go to a new place, which again, one of the things I really like about this show is that you don't get set fatigue. You are always going to new places. You're exploring new colors. It's vibrant and... You feel like every every episode sort of takes you to a new place. You're always seeing a little bit more of the world. It's also not a useless flashback that doesn't do anything. Oh, it's it's <laughs> jam-packed. And um, yeah. I was just going to say that... where that happened before. The mm. shot opens <laughs> on some of the most grimy, like, gross water. Because the idea is that this is the the water for the lanes, or at least the what's it's the undercity slash. Well, there's so yeah, many it, names for this. A yeah, runoff. yeah, they kind of the, the trenches, the lanes, the, the undercity. Fishes. It goes by many names. And um, what a what's like me? What a clever fucking visual to have it be that we're seeing the reflection of a child jumping into the water to play in it, and it's like this disgusting, mm -hmm. grimy shit. And it's like, yeah, this is what they grow up in. Um, and as you just Built mentioned, character. Silco. Uh, refer to this as we get the city's runoff. That's how it works. Um, yeah, we follow the, the all these kids are playing and we follow the water down into uh, where Victor is playing. Um, noticeably away from the other kids with a little thing that he's put together, a little boat. He's just oh. off doing his own thing. Yep. And you even have a, a kid, like, curious for a second to look at him and be like, um... wonder who that kid is. Uh, is, it, is it implied that that one is Sky? I, I think that's about to ask. What? I'm not 100% sure. I, I, I thought know. that too, but I, I'm not sure. I is Sky a League of Legends like, but... character? No, no, Sky no. is the Gulligat's um, the assistant. <laughs> oh, okay. I just I didn't remember her name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm terrible with names, Jim. I don't think you. I don't think you are terrible with it. Nobody's really remembered her name. She's. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Victor. Uh, this this scene is just it's funny when I was watching it I was like I know what you're telling me and I love it it's like Symbolism. he sets his little boat it starts trickling along and he's he's looking at it and he's smiling and he's real happy and then it's just going a little too fast and he can't quite keep up with it until he starts really trying and then he falls over in his attempts to keep up with his let's say creation this it's just perfect because I know exactly where where we're going with Victor just the idea of like his mortal body is restricting him from being able to pursue his mm. mechanical ingenious it's like yeah because the boat just keeps chugging along like out of care in the world it doesn't have any defects it doesn't have a broken leg or anything yep and so yeah he he falls the boat goes off down the stream he follows it until he gets to a little cave and there's a Ooh. 
really weird creature in there, which, um... Gollum. Uh, I've actually got nothing for the for the creatures. Theo, is there anything about that that you can draw from the game, or is it because he calls it Rio, I, right? I've got nothing. The, obviously, the only thing I can even think of would be like Rexai, but I assume it has nothing to do with that. No, uh, Rexai is a well, it's a ZSI, which is a void creature, and that's down over in Sharima. Oh yeah, that's yeah. the void creature. That's Rags right. Yeah. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Rio and this guy who. Correct me if I'm wrong, have we not seen him since he blew up in episode 3? Yes. I believe so. I don't think we've seen him. We didn't. Yeah, so we haven't seen him since he blew he's up. He's been referenced, but we haven't seen him. And yeah, so the idea here being that if you're super attentive and recognize everything, you'd be like, oh, he's, um, hmm, okay, this is, because I thought he was just he's guy in background him. who made Shimmer, but now it's like guy who, mm -hmm. he's up to some other stuff. And he says, um... I think he just says, did you build this? And then, um, they, they end up just, he's, he's a very curious man. Um, and it's just the fact that we're getting dialogue at all is just like, oh shit, okay. This, uh, this is more for him than we expected. And he says, mm -hmm. um, why aren't you playing with the other kids? Does, anyone, does Victor say anything to that? I can't remember. No, he just kind of gives him this look. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't get along. Why don't you play with the other kids? And then I think he just, uh. Comes out of Victor's hiding, like, basically. how come you're not playing with the other kids? Yeah, weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then he says, Loneliness Loser. is often the byproduct of a gifted mind. Which is just one of those... It's, it's, I like to almost say it's standard. It's just like, you don't get this in, like, fucking Book of Boba Fett. Yes, I'm still referencing no. it. <laughs> <laughs> we're not done Did... referencing it. <laughs> no. I love punching no. bag whenever we're talking about Arcane. I love it. It never gets to old. To be fair to Boba Fett, no. Cad Bane... Did look at no, Boba Fett no. and say, "We're not so different, you and I." No. Uh. And that was um, that was incredible. Hold on, did they actually use that line? It um, wasn't exact. It was very close. But you're a I know killer. Batwoman you said admit it like it, twice. And then, and then. Yeah, he's, he says a lot of bullshit. So. He basically is like, "We're we're the same thing. We're not so different, you and I." Yeah. Which, by the way, a very very slight tangent. I know we're happy. We're, we're short on time, but I. My dad and I, we went to the theater proper, and we saw Moonfall, and it's the Roland Emmerich disaster silly movie, and it was oh, horrifically yeah. wonderful. Rags, just and they have like a line that almost says that. To the context of that, Roland Emmerich has said, fuck Marvel movies, like, they're all the same. Like, he's he's just a... <laughs> why is it that all these directors do this I, right after the movies I fail? <laughs> Mahler, I want you and Fr definitely Fringy, but and of course whoever wants to join, that movie is the per it is the Roland Emmerich movie. Like he's trying to find his the, the perfect version of his own movie, and this is his apex film because oh, well, it has everything that Roland Emmerich. It hits all of the check marks. We've got uh, plans to do a Roland Emmerich arc because the thing is, I'm pretty oh, sure Armageddon great. is like unironically really fun. Mm -hmm. It's like dumb, I would say dumb. this movie's this movie's a good EPAP watch too. He's, he's it's honestly so his movies are batshit. like entertaining. They're just not. Good. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> I was I loved watching it in the theater. My dad and I knew going in it would be terrible and stupid, and that's why we went. We did not ex we don't expect high art from Roland Emmerich. I know, <laughs> crazy as that sounds, everyone's gonna be like, "What?" I know, I know. He is like a fourteen year old who's making movies. He's kind of like Zack Snyder, but a little <laughs> like but different, but the same. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I can follow that. He's not as edgy yeah. as Zack, I think. No, no, no. Oh, that's been out for like two weeks. I completely missed that. Yeah, you know, and Roland's you like missed your favorite creator. Moonfall? Yeah. yeah. How could you? Well, I guess I know what I'll do for Metal Sports next week, because that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a movie. It it's is a, a film. Movie. <laughs> it um, is a film. There is a nice shot here that someone even in chat was pointing out, that they frame singed so that he clearly acknowledges the um, the disability that Victor has. It's like um, coming out of the shadow, just realizing it, which um, is going to play into more and more things as we go on. It's just like stuff that they definitely want you to know is happening, but don't care if you miss it, um, which is the kind of shit that I love. Utilizing the fact they're in a visual medium. You really like to see it. Yeah, visual storytelling. How about that? Ew. Yeah. Tell me what happens now. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. Give me a speech. Says, ah, one of your legs is. Uh, I see. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, yeah, you're I fucking crippled. You. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Holy shit! You're crippled. <laughs> you're oh disgusting. my god! Get away from me! Be gone! 
<laughs> and, uh, want to help me? No, fact. <laughs> Unclean. And like, it's gonna be quick, and it happens all in this episode, but the uh, what Rio is and what Victor sees is like a microcosm of what Victor's life's gonna be, I'm pretty sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Rio is this cute, awesome, natural little thing that's running around being happy, and Victor feeds it, and it's like, oh, this is great. Um, and then I think Singe's commentary on just that interaction is, the mutation must survive. He's yeah. dying. I'm attempting to prevent that. The mutation must survive. It's like... I just... This, that I language is very important, like, though. The, uh, yeah. It must. It comes, it comes across as somewhat innocuous, I think. Like, in the context of, I'm attempting to prevent that, and it's, you know, it's dying. Yeah. It, you know, comes across maybe more, uh... I, I guess more of a sympathetic thing that Singed is doing than than the mutation must survive might let on. And we will get the part two to this scene a little later. Yeah. Um, and then we get one of my favorite scenes in the whole show. Uh, is it involved is... Jinx? No. Oh, this one. <laughs> oh, not this one. Not this okay. scene was right here. Victor is sitting uh, at the place, I think. We've seen him a couple of times, kind of like where they end up going just to think. Mm -hmm. um, and Heimerdinger walks up, and he says, uh, Seems just yesterday I stumbled upon an aspiring young scholar from the Undercity here, ruminating in his steel oasis. Which I, I really like that, isn't it? It's just a, a thought, steel a steel oasis. oasis. Mm -hmm. um, like a thieves' den? Uh, what is a thieves' den, exactly? Oh, it's where all the thieves hang out. Oh, that's neat. In a den. Yeah. That's their steel oasis. Fuck it, it's fine. But uh, <laughs> the the sort of like like why would that be prompted as a as a because it's kind of like just just this is how I met you and that it, that it's like a bit of a gap and then I heard your prognosis. It's like oh he's talking mm -hmm. about it because mm -hmm. this guy's dead basically. Um, and he says, "Do you contemplate death?" And he says, "Only that of friends." It's just because. I'm a thing as old as fuck, and apparently Yordles live for a very long time. It's like yeah, he, said, he said earlier he was or 307 or something. Seven. Okay, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's an old man. He is an old he's man. He's not as old as... He, he's he's older than Bilbo. Yeah. Oh, damn, yeah, you're right. Um, and then Victor says, I suppose your legacy has been well secured. What haven't you to show for your life? And it's so... Uh, this is just uh, one of the prime examples. There's lots of them where... The char it's not even just the show for us to, it's not even just for us to dig into the show and, and, and look at subtext for our own enjoyment. The characters in the show are aware of subtext. Like Heimerdinger's response to Victor saying, like, you've got a well secured and important legacy, good shit, is you should be proud of what you've accomplished, Victor. It almost doesn't make sense, like, if you look at it just uh robotically. It's like that wasn't a response to what Victor said. It's like, well no, because Heimerdinger is responding to what Victor's thinking about. Yeah, what he's implying, what he's referencing. He's like, you're, you're secure. It implies I'm not. He's insinuating the contrast. Yeah. And, like, Heimerdinger's expressions, he's just, like, so sad because he knows exactly what he's thinking about. Yeah. Um, and he says, my achievements will be short-lived even in your memory. And uh, I think you see a little butterfly land and then it leaves, as Heimerdinger says, uh, those who shine brightest often burn fastest. And it's just like super depressing, but also uh, the mm -hmm. best time I think it could possibly do and say. Yeah. Nothing for it, as they would say. Um, and then you get the intro, everyone's favorite. <laughs> um, There's still a lot of split like <laughs> commentary <laughs> on that intro. There's still, yeah, there are still there are the people who think <laughs> that it's bad, and then there are the people who are wrong. No, right, calm down. The, the intro is awesome in if you remove the music visually. Yeah, visually, that's got to count great. for something. It absolutely counts for something. I yeah. will say that the music is fine. It just was, you know, it was just out of place in the first episode. I think I parts think of, of the music are fine. Show. Yeah. Um, all right, where are we? Love to Mel. Oh, yes. Jace tells Mel that uh, Victor is dying. It's actually, you know, I should be more fair to the scene. It's a pretty good one. Um, she's upset. She's, she's annoyed at him because he fucked off. Uh, which, yeah. After fucking her. Like so. scene. Yeah, women don't like that, right? They're, yeah. They're yeah. against that. And they even have her, like, aggression represented in what she's doing. Like, she's moving yeah, it more aggressive. Uh, mm hmm. 
And but it it's just really well done because like it's one of those situations where it's like, yeah, what are you gonna tell me that would make me feel better? It's like my friend is dying. It's like, like yeah. Oh. Uh, I like okay, how good one. In in I'm glad we're kind of at this scene right after watching a Roland Emmerich film <laughs> where characters are where characters are just horrifically simple and stupid and stubborn in every way to draw out drama. But in this, once he tells her what's happening, she's like, "Oh shit," you know, and then she understands. Oh, good excuse. Like a normal, yeah, yeah, like it. a normal human being. Yeah. Instead of them drawing out how they're how they need to feel for a certain, I don't know, directorial whim mm -hmm. against all reason. So it's really nice to see. Yeah, that was that was kind of something I was afraid of seeing. Like, oh, great, are we gonna draw out some really needless drama over this shit? Because he took off after fucking her. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> but nope, she she gets it already. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's not like it's a character. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's some. Um, you know, it's like, like, yeah. it's like, interesting like, to think about too, because uh, remember the dynamic right now is that she's kind of a puppet master, and so it's like, I don't hugely care about him, and he's annoyed me. Mm. But then it's like someone's died, and it's just like this huge thing for her to deal with in terms of like, how do I approach this? And then, um, because I, I think this is the scene where she goes from trying to strictly be a bit of a puppet master to being like, actually, this guy, there's more to this guy than I realize. When he says, um, when I'm with you, nothing feels impossible. He's got a lot of investment in me. Yeah. Like, maybe there's more to this guy than I'm realizing sort of thing. And she, uh, she then even says about, like, her history, that she was exiled mm -hmm. from Noxus. Um... Yeah, because you call like, someone from Noxus a Nox... Noxian. A Noxian? Noxian? Yeah. Uh, Fun fact about that, by the way, uh, the thing she's painting there is the Immortal Bastion, which is the huge fortification that the capital city of Noxus was built around. Which is important for the last episode that you know that about the painting. Yes. Technically. I mean, I say important. It's important to us because we care about details, but... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's, you can tell from the last episode what the painting would probably represent, judging from her mother's reaction to it. But uh, still, um, then we get a bit of bit of Victor looking at that hex core, getting all getting real tempted at this point. Which is so it's so interesting to think about with Victor in this show, um, especially for people who played the game. You're just sort of like waiting for that scene where it's gonna happen, right? Any second yeah. now, mm -hmm. this is gonna happen. But they really, I feel, are aware of that and play with it quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, thanks to the coughing up the blood and different crazy shit happening from him touching it, he uh, concludes something. We will get back to that. The way they show it, like, the hex cause, like, weird stuff all around him, like completely enveloping the rest of the shot when we first come to Victor in this scene. I think that's a really cool way of showing what's going oh, on. Oh shit, yeah, I should I should have mentioned that. I will get the screenshot. And it's a nice uh it was mentioned before about the way that they um scene transition. But obviously Mel was sitting there and then he is here, which uh there's a lot to think about with this image. Mm -hmm. And this is partly why people are very invested in Victor, I would imagine. Hmm. He's going through some stuff. Um, but yeah, next up we got... Uh, so, yeah, there's some weird stuff going on over in, in Silco's henchman land where a lot of people are missing and doing things and Jinx is out of the loop. So she goes to uh, the last drop bartender and asks him what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell he... First of all, he couldn't even see that she'd come in. She sneaks into the room very easily. I'm not saying that for any other reason than pointing it out. I, 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 I it won't be relevant in episode nine at all. Um, but she's also like scary to him. Um, so it's likely that the the either that he just is scared of her in general, or the fact that he's been told that she needs to not know about what's going on, which is that I Silco is aware of Vi and trying to deal with her before Powder finds out, sort of thing. Hmm. I don't know how widespread the don't let Jinx know... Well, I guess the information that Vi is out probably wouldn't have been disseminated that much for precisely this reason. Yeah. Like, some goon might just let slip to Jinx, and that's exactly what Silco doesn't want. <laughs> I, can, I can hear the whistling wind of the lol menu. Don't think I'm not on to you, Maul. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. There is a. I figure that's fine for ambience. Nobody's gonna be too bothered by that. But yes, you could hear little wind sounds in the background here and there. Um, you know, I've heard that sound before. <gasps> wow! Must have been the wind. Yeah. It's funny. In the wind. Uh, Must have been the wind. But yeah, she just gradually coaxes out that uh, the Silco's preparing people to get some girls. Um. And then she even baits that she's gonna... You know she, like, attaches a, um, a thing to his back? It's such mm -hmm. a, like, there's a brief moment of, like, is she actually gonna fucking explode him? It's like, no, it's just the little, <laughs> it's the little paint one, or the... Paint yeah. Paint paint him. It's yeah. a prank, bro. Which we haven't yeah, seen since, prank. uh, she was a kid, right? I think, that version. Yeah. Anyway. Close. Yet another staple of Zon. Is it, okay, with your accent, I can't tell. Is it Zorn or Zon? Zon. 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 <laughs> okay, Theo, that doesn't help. Why would? Yeah. But no, your question is fucking broken because it's an accent thing. It's, it, there's loads yeah. of ways well, that, to work that way. Well, for spelling wise, right? Z a u n. Z a u n. Yeah, okay. Zon. Okay. Yeah, Americans Zon. would say Zon, okay. but we would say Zon. 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 Yes. Um, do do do. So, uh, then we cut to good old Caitlin and Vi, who um. <laughs> They both like and dislike this moment. So they Someone in chat just said, Steel Oasis. I get it, Rags. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hey, it only took, what was that, like five minutes? That's fine. <laughs> I'm sure they're just catching up. Yeah. I'm sure they're just catching up. Yeah, I'm sure they're catching up. Um, so they're at the top of like a cliffside and they need to get to the bottom. And uh, so Caitlin's like, oh, I don't know, how are we going to do this? And Vi, like, very confidently is like, I got this shit, and jumps and then fucks it up and falls. Yeah. And I like that as, like, a, she's so confident and yet she can fail. But the thing is, the fall looks pretty bad. Looks pretty bad, yeah. It looks yeah. really yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with a stab wound. I yeah. don't know, man. Like, yeah. you got to be careful. We're veering on she should be dead. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean... She doesn't have a mechanical stomach, but it is pretty true, bad. It's true. It is pretty bad. Um, yeah, it's quite a way down, and oof, you know. Um, I'm not sure ooh, how to yeah, how cool. I would tweak this, but I'd probably make it so that you don't need it's this scene really intense. at all. Yeah, if if oh. you need her to be out of the picture even further, just don't have it be so such an intense fall. Yeah, because all this is communicating, other than you know they get down there and Vi's kind of in a fucked up state where she yeah, can't which, perform as she normally does, is that the structure is unstable. And which uh, is right. that was already achieved with the stab, I think, so we didn't really yep. need to do it this way, yeah. but, you know, that's what happens. Um, it does get across that the structure's unstable. Maybe it's to is, knock her you know, out, so it does that do that, way Caitlin true. is kind of... I think, because Caitlin now needs to go about her own method because Vi can't tell her what to do anymore, and so she is forced to ask the locals. Well, yeah, it does It does knock Vi out of the picture for a little bit, so Caitlyn has to do some stuff herself. But uh, just worth noting, someone's watching them. It's <laughs> the firelight. Yeah, that's, we do know him at least to be that at this point. <laughs> Known as the people of the board. Um, <laughs> and it looks like you see a bunch of bunch of goon people running around. Are they? Are we supposed to think they're firelights or Silco's goons? I think it's I believe Silco. Silco's goons. Yeah. Yeah, because firelight's a little bit more distinct, aren't they? Those look more... Yeah. They yeah, always they have use boards, their masks, and Randy they goons. tend to, like, you know, tend to be a bit more coordinated than that. Like, I don't think you'd be out here standing around watching them if it was them, you know, doing whatever they're doing. Yes. Um... Wait, where are we? Do, do, do. Um... Eh, let me get my coffee right back Savika up. Savika, yeah, she's gonna go tell, uh... Wait, oh god, VLC's frozen. That's terrifying. Uh oh. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, no. oh it's all over, everybody. We tried. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, well. Bye. Well, come back for part Glad four. Glad we started early. <laughs> One, um, well, while it maybe recovers, is, that is the next scene, right? Theo, you can help me out here. You have your own vision. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, yeah, the next scene is Savika with Jinx, yes. Yeah, she's saying that. Yeah, so uh, Savika walks into Silco's office with uh, uh, power there. Jinx is waiting for her. And she uh, drugs her out and puts her in the chair, specifically to ask her what the fuck's going on, because Savika's gonna know, considering she was the one that was uh, beaten up by these girls, whoever they may be. Mm -hmm. um, and there's uh, a moment where she's essentially told that um, 
like Savika basically thinks that this is the end for Jinx almost because as soon as she finds out the sister is there and stuff, she's going to explode. And I think she says, Silco will finally get the message that you're no better for the cause than you were for your family. Um, mm -hmm. Which is like, damn, bro. <laughs> Jesus. Also, I'm just going to get a new vision. Fuck you, VLC. You want to freeze on me? Kill you going to restart it or? Um, yeah, that's, that's the, yeah. All good. Um, hang on. Let's make sure I frame it right so that people at home don't get a, a balked screen. We don't want that. Nope. Eh. Bork. One sec. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, this, this, uh, Jinx looks like it's gotten to her for a moment, but then she's like baiting. Um, I, I wonder how much it legitimately was getting to her. And how much it was an act to get Savika to keep going. I uh yeah, I think it's one of those moments, it's like um Black Widow in, in Avengers. It probably yeah, that's did ac that's actually just what I was thinking. Probably something that did affect her, um, but she can still use it to her advantage, sort of thing. Yeah. Um because ultimately it's her stuff, right? Like she'll be thinking about what Savika's just said, how much truth there is to it, and then um realizing, wait, Savika's here and enjoying this. Fuck you. Like that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the expressions again, just top notch throughout the scene. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, the choice of words from Savika to say that he'll finally get the message she just says in response. I think I know how to send the message. Uh, mm -hmm. We see the result of a little bit later. There's also a shot that I love. Hopefully, I can get it before we get hit with copyright. Uno momento. Eh. Uh -huh. Esteban. Oh yeah, she puts her knife uh, through the thing, and I was just like, wow, she stabbed that through? And it's like, well, no, it's probably one of the bullet holes that uh, Caitlyn put in there, isn't it? Mm. Um, but yeah, we for very quickly zoom into her when she uh, Savika mentions Vi, and the, oh. knife, the knife turns into a, like a visual. I didn't mm. even notice that. That's cool. Wow. There's a lot of ones like that, and obviously she's realizing in the background. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of things yeah, on this is, lady's mind. There is plenty going on in her head, but she's still cognizant enough to put it aside and not implode for the moment. Yeah, what, guess we, we, what we know from this now is that she's not only aware it's definitely Vi, but that she's here. And so... Mm. Uh, and Savika seems actually kind of happy about this, just because it's accelerationism, basically. Get her fucking insane so we can finally move on without her. Yep. Yeah. So he is interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not really wrong to think that Jinx is uh, kind of a you know, ticking time bomb in that sense. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. I could be. I could easily see myself fucking hating her if she was on my team, and it was my boss that liked her, not me. Yeah, because it's preferen <laughs> It is preferential treatment in a big sense, because she is useful, but she's also unstable as shit, and sometimes shoots up the entire crew. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> um. And then we get another really good scene, and it's with a different character. A little character known as Marcus. Yay. Uh, opening with a shot of his daughter in a frame. Him frowning at his own reflection in the mirror, yeah. and then slamming the sheriff badge onto the table. This is storytelling, by the way. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. It's just, sometimes you don't even get to appreciate this sort of stuff, because everyone's been lulled into liking shit like <clears throat> Book of Boba Fett. So that you you don't even expect this to happen. You're just waiting for someone to say something because that's what storytelling is. Um, I feel this I am way. Angry. Yes. This yeah, is how I feel. I'm angry because I'm the sheriff. I'm going to. Sometimes talk to I need to remind mirror. myself of the things that I want and how I am feeling. Do you remember reflection? <laughs> Ten years ago. Damn you! Reflection. Stop dropping me. And, yeah, it's uh, it's neat as well because he's clearly really unhappy, and then he notices a laugh, and then he smiles briefly because it's his daughter. Mm -hmm. Like, like oh, yeah. the one it's thing a, I care I feel about. Like that handful of seconds sums up his character, like, completely. That's exactly yeah. who he is, right there. It's him in microcosm. Unfortunately, his, his daughter's real happy because she's playing games with Silco in his yeah, house. Uncle Silco, woo! <laughs> Fucking terrifying. Um, in his house with his daughter, with his goons. <clears throat> like, 
very mm. bad. And uh, yeah. <laughs> this scene is something a lot of people seem to forget when judging Marcus as a person. Uh, we'll put a little pin in that. That'll be relevant next episode. So It will be. It says, uh, I fucking love Silco's dialogue in this scene. It is top notch. We got... Vicious. Mm -hmm. Do you remember... So everything he's saying is supposed to pass past a child's brain, but it's also supposed to be incredibly threatening and informative. How do you yep. do that? He says, do you remember our old friend Vi? She was about your age when your father uh, told me that... Uh, well, sorry, she was about your age when her father went on a long trip and her daddy assured me that she went with him. Could you imagine that? Being separated <laughs> from your father? Fucking look he gives Marcus <laughs> as he says that as well. Excellent. It's like, it's Silco, like, you little bastard. Christ. He's Holy always shit. got this look at... He, he's always got this very plain look in his eyes that just says... Bitch. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, like, the summary of the scene is Silco is like, "Vi is alive. You told me she died." Um, and he was like, "She's safe. She's fine." And that reflects what Marcus was interested in, which was just saving a life. Uh, it doesn't matter that she's not dead. She's out of the picture. And he's like, "She's literally not out of the picture. She's in the lanes." And he's like, "The fuck?" And um. Silco basically says, Vi and Caitlin cannot be allowed to resurface. Do we understand each other? So, mm. this is as blatant as it's going to get. If those two get back to Piltover, I kill your daughter. No. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's just loads of language in the scene. Like, um, yeah, I think he says, like, let's talk outside. And Silco just goes, can't you see we're playing? It's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> um... And then, of course, uh, the house of, like, tiles falls apart, and he just says, accidents happen. So, like... Yeah. There's so many lines like that. that yeah, they'll never know it was Silco, yeah. Out, so like, ev the laughing way he says, everyone makes mistakes, right? What's he's, important he's, is that we don't repeat them. He's, he's, this is why people like Silco so much. Seems like that. We've got another one of them coming up this episode. Uh, so, they anyway... Because like he's a good person, like... <laughs> make that clear. Victor discovers the hex core reacts to organic matter, though it falls yeah. apart soon after. It doesn't sustain. Aww. It means they still need to do more work and um, we get into desperation levels here. He says, I feel my body eroding and uh, uh, Jace says, I'll bring Heimerdinger and maybe he can figure it out. Until then we do what's best. And it's it was we were watching this. Um, I remember me and Fringy were like, they're going to bring Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger is going to be fucking terrified by this thing. And he's going to suggest destroying it. That's what's going to happen. This yep. is going to happen. Yeah. Um, just because of how well characterized everybody is at this point. Uh, it, Jace brings in Heimerdinger because he wants to help Victor without realizing that this is probably not the kind of thing that Heimerdinger is on board with. Probably the exact opposite of what Heimerdinger is on board with. Yep. Because this shit's dangerous, dude. It is indeed. Now... Um, Vi takes Caitlyn to a safe house type thing, or it's a house they used to play and live at. Uh, that's that's the implication. But considering the area and who we see around it, it's like things must have changed compared to what it was because there's loads. It's basically like a drug addict's like fucking place now. Yeah. There's all these shimmer people everywhere. The lowest of the shimmer Which, addicts. Yeah, this is this is the parts of the world that no one likes to see, and it's like, hey, we're that doing a thing wrong. you're supposed to do if you want us to believe that Shimmer, a, a, a drug, has a really bad effect on a society. Yeah. Can you guys think Showing of any show theme. that maybe I could reference that does the opposite of that? Uh, mm. Mm. Let's start with a B. Um, b, 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 b. It's on the tip of my Bubba's tongue. New and house. With Book of Boa. Did you, did you sing the theme song there by accident? Uh, I, I might have. <laughs> you just went. It's funny. Um, if if anyone in chat, you may have watched our coverage. We were confused all the way up until the beginning of the last episode as to what the fuck Spice even was, and it's like the biggest thing in the whole show. <laughs> it is the source of like all of this conflict. Everything to do with the, the Pikes, why like the Tuscans were murdered, why Boba Fett's so invested in this town and how he's gonna fix it, all has to do with spice and they it's not even well done. He just goes, It's been killing people. And we were like, Oh. <laughs> oh cow. You, they're, they're that's a great question, Rags. We're not, we're not getting that far. So, spice is, is so delicious, they're eating too much food and exploding. <laughs> oh no. 
they oh, eat no. till they explode. Terrifying. Um, so yeah, the uh, Caitlin's just looking at them, and they're kind of monstery at this point. Uh, and she's mm. just staying away um, and gets into the place. But Vi is pretty delirious at this point, probably from blood loss. Um, and she starts and seeing Crowder running around this place a lot. And I feel like it's worth appreciating when a, an actual stab wound is causing severe damage to a character. Yeah, you yeah. don't get that a lot in a lot of shows. It's kind of neat. Um, is uh, fading in and out of complete consciousness here. Lucidity, as they might call it. And they have a pretty interesting conversation. Uh, Caitlin says, it's not going to work if we can't trust each other. And she says, you topsiders always find a way to screw us. Um, hey, racist, I, calm down. I think Caitlin says, like, oh, yes, we're, you know, it's it, all of your uh, your problems are our fault. And uh, while Vi is looking at, like, a... Uh, what win am I looking for? And, 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 and hallucination? Hallucination, that's it. Of, of powder. He says not all of them. And that, I think, is as blatant recognition as you're going to get that Vi feels heavily responsible, responsible for what's happened. Yep. yep. Directly says, I shouldn't have left you to the powder ghost. And Caitlin interprets that as being to her. Mm -hmm. uh, related to the brothel scene. That's yeah. very nicely done. Um, and you know, she's like, We're not monsters, we're people. Um, I think, I can't remember what she prompts, I think she says something like, you know, you, you got to learn to trust or whatever, and then she's like, you don't know anything about me, and that's when she says I shouldn't have left you, yeah, she sees powder, um, but Caitlin says, I can tell you've got a good heart, and then we hear the echo of that line from Vanda all the way back, was that episode two or three, I can't remember, oh, it would have uh, been three, uh, two, sorry, two, it was, yeah, yeah, it was two before she was going to turn herself in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everything's running through Vi's head right now. Just, just all of the things, and um, still pretty aggressive with Caitlyn. But Caitlyn clearly believes in Vi right now. Um, moving on though, uh, Heimerdinger demands the destruction of the Hextech. He's uh, he has a flash to um, what we assume is Rise or someone else anyway, destroying uh, I believe lots of that's things. Brand. Oh, really? That would be my guess, because I remember I mentioned to you that in current law, Brand was a student of Rises who like wants to use the power of the world runes, which are the biggest magical artifacts in the setting. Think Infinity Stones uh, to like do horrible shit, and he did like just annihilate a village with them uh, in kind of this sort of manner at one point. So, and you know, fire. So that's my guess. No, that's true. Definitely a more fire of it, uh, image. Um, I'll have to see what that... Because I'm assuming they're just going to develop the fuck out of that as we go on with this show. Uh, it, it could easily just be a random mage schmuck, and it's still fine. But yeah, its potential for healing is irrelevant to Heimerdinger compared to its potential for destruction. Uh, and this time, it doesn't quite work out. If you remember back in the first three episodes, Heimerdinger's demand for destruction basically overrules anything, but now Victor says that's up for the council to decide because he already knows that Heimerdinger's power is lessened at this point. Um, and uh, before this scene ends, uh, he's like, I've got to go do something, and Victor's like, what? Like, 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 literally, like, what could you have to do right now? And we do find out not seconds later that He's basically immediately going to plan the destruction of Heimerdinger's career, basically. Yeah. Mm. And I assume he does this very easily in terms of setting up that plan, because he'd already thought about this. Well, it was only a matter of time that. before he might have to enact something to get rid of, get Heimerdinger out of the way, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, Victor mentions he has a friend to visit as well, which true. I think it's easy to see where that's going, considering the starting scene. Well, and when Victor pleads with Heimerdinger, Heimerdinger's response is, Victor, something's changed. You're different. And then mm. goes back to the hex core, and it's just like, mm. Mm. <laughs> Stop, no. Um, yeah, and then Caitlin walks outside the, the building, and she bumps into this guy. Um, get a... Does he have a name? Oh, probably. I, I don't know. I don't remember that. he's got one. I just don't know if they say it. And, uh... I may as well take the time to get the visual of when we first met him, but this is the thing. I don't blame anybody for not remembering him. Um, yeah, it took me a moment to remember who it was. 
but this is here and it's something to appreciate that's kind of like how i feel about it it's like i wouldn't blame people for being like eh. and they do you know they give you all the information you need even if you don't remember him it's that he's an old friend and i think he explicitly says uh her old man saved my life i probably owe him more than that or something like that mm -hmm. um yeah he and uh this is him and vander in the first episode and then of course he is now here. Uh, this is top notch for representing what Shimmer has done. Mm. Uh, this guy is a complete fucking mess. This stuff is bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> and yeah, to the point where Caitlin thinks he's like a threat, just from the way he looks. Look at him! Look at the, look at the gross on his head. Like, it's got fucking hell! Tumor. That's a nose. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> top left. <there>. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh yeah the, uh, it's it's so blatant that it's like awful that even i think a little bit later she's like why fucking take shimmer What's which is point? a worthwhile question yeah because if, if this is what it does to you which by the way fucking allegories for real life drugs eh um, <laughs> what kind of person would willingly inject themselves with addictive substances i don't know jim mm. Um. Do oh yeah okay. Uh yeah he says um it, Shimmer makes me it essentially makes you feel more powerful and he says to be like someone and to make other people afraid. Mm. Like he's uh, it just it just boosts you up like we saw it we've seen it several times and it's just like the second you've taken one dose it's pretty much you're fucked. Um. Yeah, you are instantly addicted. We saw it with the henchman in the episode three. Yes, we did. Uh, though I imagine Shimmer has changed a little bit since then, but it's probably still got that level of property, I'd imagine. Um, so, he takes her to a little potion seller, and the potion seller is like, hey, uh... Potion you seller. Your strongest potions. Yes. Give me your strongest potions. <laughs> you cannot have my strongest potion unless oh, you man. trade, and don't worry. I think everybody agrees with the criticism here. She immediately gives up her rifle, which is... Yeah. yeah. All you need for this scene is for her to offer something like one of her buckles or like little belt things on her on her arms and stuff and then like to be given a look of like are you fucking kidding me yeah and, i can't imagine the price is super super high considering where this person is yeah like and she has but, no idea what this stuff is worth so then you have yeah, her offer some bullets would... maybe and then the woman like somehow gestures she wants the gun or maybe it, even you have him just... say like you're gonna have to give her the gun and she could be like you fucking no i can't get and then you could just have his yeah. paws and be like, uh. Yeah. Because, it, you know, the, I, I have no problem believing she would do this trade. I just need her to have been pushed into it. Yeah, she's not gonna... It, it would show how important the gun is to her. It, it almost seems like, oh, it's it's just a gun. It, it It's not worth that. I mean, it, it, here it is. Instead of really wanting to hold on to it, because it did save Vi's life earlier. Yeah. This is the thing it represents it is her a lot. Way of defending herself. Yes. So um, she should be hesitant to give it up. Mm. I do like the idea, by the way, that the potion seller adds something before handing it over, as if to imply yeah. that had they stolen it, which they Nothing could do, yeah, it wouldn't have worked. So, but um, yeah, I just would have liked to get a little bit more prompting because I can believe that she would give up the gun, even though because if someone said like, "Well, you no, know, she would never give up the gun," it's just like if it means saving Vi's life. Uh, that's the interesting conundrum, and I think that she would eventually give it up. Um, yeah, I mean, I know what they're going for, like, oh, you know, she started out here pointing the gun at little tumor guy, like, a whole bunch, but then she realizes all the chaos and shit down here, and now she realizes that, you know, she can't, she doesn't have to, you know, solve all her problems with violence, and so she's going to give up her gun as kind of like a uh, representation of that. But uh, no, you're right. It was it was kind of immediate for her to just go. All right, here you go, my most prized possession. I, I thought the kind <laughs> of angle they were trying to play was that was furthering the thing from the first episode of the topsiders not knowing how to haggle in the undercity, so they can just get overcharged constantly. Which, it's a different yeah. situation, of course, because I, I guess. Know, but why would like, a potion seller want a gun? I, know, I, 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 I don't know. It's valuable. valuable. Yeah. There's, she could probably trade a it gun is a else. pathway to many other things. Yeah. It's true, and Guns it's a good fucking gun. Apart from like, the use, yeah. it is. Um, 
and yeah, just something to know. I, I really like this shot, first of all, showing that the guy is like just locked into staring at that bottle because it's likely a shimmer variant of some kind. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> shimmer in it. Ooh, and then he purple. like, he like sort of goes and like, like, you know, realize, like looks away sort of thing. If I can get that shot again. Um, there's a better one a little bit later as well, but just, uh, he's looking at it and then he like wakes himself up like, ah, I'm not, I'm not, that's fine. Yeah. And as she drags it away, they have this shot as well. It's just like, look at that fucking guy. He is, even his eyes glow, uh, pink just briefly. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just really nice and subtle to show just how much this has just destroyed his life. This, this, uh, this stuff. Um. You have Silco to thank for all of that. Yep. So, uh, next scene, Marcus uh, is going with Silco's plan to frame the Firelights, which I think is super interesting to think about that he didn't do that up until his family was threatened. Oh, hey, it's not Jay. Oh, hey, not Jay. Hi, not Jay. <laughs> Gotta give him a second. It's F. Hi, yeah. F. It's boot up. He's revving up. Ruh, ruh. Okay. Do, 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 do. Ring glow. Ring glow. You there? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Don't worry, you haven't missed too much. We're only halfway through the first episode's coverage. At an hour, so yeah, not fantastic speed, but we're gonna have to keep going. We're gonna have to keep going. Um, oh, oh, God. Uh, we decided to start a little early, because we could. Uh, so. Yes, I, I, yeah, so for those of you in chat, I was, I was asleep while all of these plans were set in motion. I so told I them that up. already. Let them know okay. that you're not to blame. See, I told you guys this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> and well, then, then uh, I would just clarify that these plans were set in motion while I was You asleep. said that you would say it's just clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> I think I used that That's exact bad. word. I have, you I do have a little gaslight here? Hell yeah. Let him drink his here. first coffee, let him boot up. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Don't blame I you. Just <laughs> it's not, it's, it's not Pringy's fault, chat. This yes, time. Yeah, yeah. This time. Um, Fred, J Jay also started up a stream. Um, and we've now realized that Jay wouldn't have made it even if we hadn't changed the time. So Jay is a liar. Jay is cancelled. And that is, that's good. It's good that that's happening. Anyway. Man, so much stuff happens. Like, I know, the world right? doesn't stop when I go, you know, it's not like the world hits pause and revolves around me. There's pause? all sorts of things happening. Which I think is unfair. If we were going to pause at any point, it should be when Frankie goes to sleep. All in favor? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm I, not sure. I don't know. I, <laughs> Frankie's like, well, actually, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, uh, like I said, I just I think it's interesting that it is now that he's engaging with framing the firelights, which he was clearly against doing in episode four, but he's it's, mm -hmm. you know it's too much pressure now. Um, and then the first question Jace obviously has is like, where the fuck were you with all of this? How is this only being dealt with now? And uh, Marcus says that they've been dealing with the Hexgate security, so we haven't had time to deal with like undercity terrorism essentially. Um, which and is a nice, just to add, that's a neat addition to the world building uh, that, you know, verifies what Silka was saying about Topside leaving them behind, because they don't really need the fissures as such anymore, because they're yes. a global shipping lane now, thanks to the hex gates. Um, and then, so this scene is actually the most blatant scene of Marcus being a clever boy. Um... He basically tells Jace the only way to deal with the firelight problem is to lock up the bridges, and <laughs> we wouldn't want to do that. And then Jace is like, do it, and he's like, oh, are you sure? Oh, when it's wow. like, that's exactly what Marcus wants. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want Silco coming into his house again. Well, that, plus the fact that he can snipe off uh, Caitlyn and Vi, because that's his primary yep. job from Silco now. So it puts him in the best position he can get. That is the best thing he can do right now, considering everything. But uh, there's another interesting interaction where, and I think this is the most blatantly shrewd that Marcus is being, and it might have been picked up, where he's like, oh, um, I, that, that Kiriman girl, she, uh, she got someone out of prison with, uh, you know, like, with your approval, anything that I should be helping with? And Jace, like, hesitates with what he's doing, and he's like, uh, no, we got it covered. Which is interesting, right? Because does this mean that Caitlyn did all of that without Jace's knowledge and he's covering for her? Is that what we're supposed to gather from this? Uh, it's either that or Jace 
didn't know the extent that this would go to, to the point where it's being picked up by the head of the enforcers, which makes him think that, oh, like, did she do something that's, like, legitimately, like, a fucking big deal? Because, um, Jace looks shocked when Marcus brings it up. My assumption is that Jace is realizing Caitlyn forged his signature. Um, but that he trusts Caitlyn so much that he figures that whatever she's doing it for is important. Wow, Caitlyn should be very, very, very appreciative of Jace. 100%, yeah, because that never actually gets brought up again. Uh, yeah, Jay, Jace. there needs, in season two, there needs to be a conversation between Jace and Caitlyn about their, them. Like, what what are they to each other at this point? What's what what's going on? What Where do they stand? Not just relationship-wise, which isn't going to pan out, but it's what Jace knows about it and that that conversation needs to take place and it's something that i'm looking forward to seeing well yeah because uh we we'll, we're almost there but like the relationship between jace and caitlin has um dramatically changed since they would have last uh spoken to each other and neither of them realized that yet because they've become different people to a degree it's really neat now they've just like they they just grow apart I don't think that's something you particularly see very much when it's not like dealt yeah, with. Yeah, because they're huge separate. Yeah. yeah, they're separated. But they, they go down different walks of life, and they just end up different people. Um, but yeah, so the the bridges are now going to be closed up. Uh, well, they're closed up in the sense that you you have to be inspected before you can cross the bridge. That's how it works. Um. Which leads us, uh, by the way, that scene, Jace is just writing something, and we're about to find out what that is, because we have a council meeting where it opens with uh, Heimerdinger saying, we have traded honor for prestige, um, and to return to what we built this place for, it's going to take vigilance, and we must hold each other accountable, which was, I think Jace was just waiting for a word to jump on yeah. Heimerdinger, because he's like, and who holds you accountable? And... Uh, so I quite love the character work in this scene. Heimerdinger is just like, I'm going to explain in simple and calm words why we should do a thing that's obviously the right thing. And like when Jace fucking attacks him, Heimerdinger's like, what? Like what, he has what? no fucking clue that this was even a potential. He's completely blindsided. Um, and yeah, Jace says Shimmer is rampant, attacks the, the Academy Square and the Hex Gates, enforces fear, the lanes. Like, what the fuck have you done about all of this, Mr. I am leading this place? And mm -hmm. Heimerdinger is legit like, I have no fucking... What? <laughs> what, what is <laughs> happening? Like, that would be pretty, like, stunning. Like, uh, Yeah, because he's, he's never received these criticisms before. He's obviously, yeah. you know, like, I like Heimerdinger a lot, but he's obviously been pampered a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. nobody's a dick to him, because he's nice to everybody. Uh, and he's kind of distanced himself from everyone else's affairs. Yeah, he's he's happily just been in in the science, uh, which uh, he's missed the politics, which again this was all set in play in the previous two episodes, um, and yeah, so he, uh, Jace like stands up and he's like, "What's your plan to fix this?" And Hybrid is like, "Oh, I see what this is about. Your hex tech needs more time," which is again just cutting right to it. Hybrid knows what's going on now. He was a bit confused, mm -hmm. but now he gets it because he's just looking for that motive. Um. And there's this moment where I think Heimerdinger goes from here being like, oh, you're suggesting bullshit, I'm gonna deal with it. But, um, and so, like, I would argue he's aggressive and ready to, for the fight, that's Heimerdinger's expression here. But then, Jace starts talking a little bit, and, um, a statement he starts coming out with is, you are the true father of Piltover, and your years of service can never be repaid. And the second he yeah. starts saying that, mm -hmm. Heimerdinger realizes what Jace is about to do. And, uh, the expression. Absolute <laughs> falling of his face. Cause it's just like, mm -hmm. oh, look at this little guy. He's devastated. Because this is simultaneously... The fact that you would even try that, the person who I have helped so much and mm -hmm. taught so much. And he spoke up for you so much. Just, uh, yeah, he just never would have seen this coming. He didn't, and his little ears, they flopped out as well. Mm. <laughs> even Jace isn't pleased with what he's doing. No, 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 no. This he's entire demeanor yeah, around he, the scene. He's not a fan. He feels like he's he... got to do it. Yeah. He doesn't want to, wanna, but he feels like he's got to. Because in, in his mind, he thinks that's like the proper thing to do for 
pilled I over, basically. And a poor Victor. That sounds like like thumbs up a lot himself. about. Yeah, he's not doing it for himself. So he wants to help Victor and hopefully pilled over as well. I think Victor is like at the front of his mind right now. It's like I we need so. this technology oh, no, 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 no. to save, save this my friend. Right after, yeah. <clears throat> I feel like um, that's the statement to sum up all of Jace's character, or like a huge amount of it, is he doesn't want her, but he feels like he's got her. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't like Heimer say Jace is doing crazy shit in his basement? So that crazy shit in his basement is precisely why the counselors are on Jace's side. Uh, Hextech yeah. is why they're invested in Jace, and why yeah. they're going to side with him, because they would rather proliferate uh, Hextech in all of its possibilities, instead of going safe and controlled. Yeah, and not to mention this was um, this was kind of bouncing off of when they were when they were speaking during the opera, and how Jace basically said like, if you invest in us, you get a front row seat to all my cool shit. Yeah, like and uh, so everyone is already like literally and figuratively invested in Jace's work. Not to mention, Jace has a very real point that humans cannot wait for progress because they don't live as long as Heimerdinger does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have Victor has weeks, band. maybe. Yeah, months. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah, he doesn't have all this time. Weeks from the looks of it. Yeah, it's pretty pretty bad already for Victor. Um, they don't have that there was a... of time to get things done. They can't plan that far ahead. They don't have like, okay, we have a century timeline for this particular project and all of its uses. Because a century is real... an entire person's lifespan plus. When I also, was young, I used to read a lot of... Yeah, go ahead. Just as someone said, and yet neither of them bring up Hextech. Uh, Heimerdinger explicitly brings it up, and then Jace says what Theo just said, which is that we can't wait for progress. Humans die. So it's, it's addressed, but I don't even think it needs to be addressed. The point here isn't that um, the Council fully understand the nature of the safety of the Hextech. It's that he's being completely backstabbed right now. Um, and there's not much he can do about it because the Council have been bought, essentially. But go ahead, what were you saying? There was an old science fiction story I read, because uh, I've read many when I was young, um, where a human was converted... I forget the name of the story, I wish I remembered. But there's a part where they have this, this crew of different alien species, and amongst them there are humans. And a human character is talking to one of the aliens, and one of this alien species, they live for hundreds of years. And they say that one of the... They think one of the reasons that humans, at least in this world, had progressed so quickly in terms of technology and things like that whereas his race had taken much 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 longer to do it was because the shorter lifespan of humans had encouraged them to be a lot more risky and to try and get things done faster because they knew they didn't have this huge swath of time to just kind of sounds kind like of something that went on in mass effect you know the solarians only live for like 30 35 years yeah, but you got you got races like the uh, the Asari who live for like hundreds and hundreds of years, if not like thousands of thousand or records. something. Um, so I remember like I remember that being brought up, like you know why humans are so you know bold and brash and abrasive and quick and everything is because they don't live long enough. So I remember that being a Mass Effect thing as well. Uh, and I'll, I'll, gi I'll give you one more, because uh, I've responded to four things from the same chat, because the, the goalposts keep fucking moving. Ima doesn't bring yes. up Jace's new invention. Why? He has no reason to bring up the invention beyond saying the technology is untested. That's it. Yep. He, he can't... What is he going to say? Like, I saw them put a plant on the hex core, and it made it become a bigger <laughs> plant. And then it died. It's like, yeah, there's, there's really no... All he can say is, I believe that's going to lead to bad things, which is, like, the point he's making. Uh, the and thing is, like, the councillors aren't taking that seriously right now because they want to get their, their supply lines open, their business is thriving, etc. Not to mention, how is he going to explain that to the council anyway? Are they even really going to listen, like, as, as non-scientists? Yeah, I mean, the, the, this is what I mean. It's, it, it all lines up as far as I can tell. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. He can, I gotta, he can cite examples of magic-destroying cities, yes. Changes nothing. You know what else destroys <laughs> cities? Technology. Yeah, you know what else destroys cities? Armies. <laughs> like, I don't know. The thing, Heimerdinger isn't wrong, it's just that he's not going to be very compelling, and this is what he's been telling the whole time, only now they have very tangible results from Jace's inventions mm. that really stand in the way of allowing Heimerdinger's uh, mindset to come through. 
Um, and yeah, he says, uh, it ends with, it's time we give our beloved father a well-deserved retirement. And he's just mm -hmm. like, don't do this. Don't do this, um, it's obviously not about whether or not he needs a retirement or whether or not his points are just he's, he's too old to understand. It's it's literally uh he, he's worried like, like, about what out of the way. Well, Heimendinger knows they're trying to get rid of him because he's the only thing standing in the way of safety. Oh uh, well, <laughs> destruction. Sorry, the other the other thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the other part of safety. Um. Uh, but yeah, I really like they show each of the counselors. Some of them are shaking. One of them is like it's Caitlin's mum who looks really like fucking worried. Because like, uh, this is this is big potatoes, but they all have the power to do this, um, and so they start committing to it. Uh, and how am I getting it? Uh, Jace is the last one who uh, he still hesitates. Yeah, he's very hesitate. hesitant to even raise his arms. It's like, because uh... he's his very well aware he's he just stabbed his mentor in the back, and he never did anything mm -hmm. wrong to him, basically. He even looks away from him. He turns yeah, his head to the other side. I think it's important that uh, Heimerdinger is still blown away that Mel would agree. And it's, I think this is a moment of, like, he has to realize that Mel is not quite as straightforward as he probably thought. Yeah. Mm. Um, and yeah, and he's just seeing everyone else vote him out. It's so <laughs> sad, the devastated look on his face as they yeah. all vote. Like, man, I didn't think I'd give a shit about Heimerdinger. Fuck, man. And don't you think it's only because he's getting voted out? He's just like, oh man, you're probably all gonna destroy yourselves. I've seen this, this all before. Dude, there's so much to it. I think that it's the fact that his he is like, as he was described, the father of Piltover. He's like the yeah. one that created all of this, got everyone together, focused everybody on the ideas, and he's getting removed. Um, and he's watching all these people who I think he would believe just with his like basic understanding of like, dare I say, humanity, that like they wouldn't vote me out. These, like I've been with these people for probably decades, uh, so yeah, it's just it's incredibly stressful environment for him. But he's his whole life's flashing before his eyes, I'd imagine. Um, he's completely blindsided, I imagine, which is why, like, even if there was more that could be said in his defense, he isn't able to really say it <laughs> because, yeah, and, uh, like, what the fuck is happening? Jace what? comes in with the final vote, which means it's passed, and Heimerdinger is just fucking. Gotta, 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 gotta deal with all that. Um, but uh, I think it's worth mentioning. This is uh, this is very fast. Um, in terms of a process, what, what does everyone think about that? I think it's uh, easy, easy to abuse, and we've already seen the abuse. I know when I watched this the first time, I felt like it happened too quick. The, it's not a huge deal because there is some setup that leads to be like like everyone's got their motivations for it happening. The, this has been sort of referred to before. I just feel like it's suddenly happening, like someone just brings it up and everyone votes on it, and then you would figure boom, that father there would be a process over. for this, you know? Not yeah, this, yeah like I want the father to be gone. Right, hands raised, he's gone. Yeah. You'd like assume there'd be safeguards paperwork. to prevent this kind of speed of of trial happening, though. Well, I yeah, wonder. Does, uh... Does Piltover have the division of powers? Like, I don't know yeah. that Heimerdinger ever thought of that is, sort of thing. That's where I was going to go with this. Yeah, so I imagine true. they're kind of a young system in a sense. I know that 200 is like, that's not that young. It's like, it is if, if like, it they've not young. dealt with a lot of these kinds of issues bureaucratically wise or count. I imagine this council has been very straightforward for so long that they have rules that they're not even like. You know, like, of. Britain has Probably. rules like this in relation to the Queen, where it's just like, why the fuck does she have the power to do this? Like, don't worry, she'll never use it. It's like, yeah, she but... never, Because she never does it. But what if? <laughs> but that's yeah. the thing. I, I can believe that they maybe, when they were setting up this council, it's like, well, if every other member votes for a council member to be removed, then, like, that's reasonable, right? That means that mm. something's wrong with that council member, or this is the right thing to do. Without realizing, it's like, yeah, but what if they're all politically corrupt and essentially paid off to get rid of them? What if it's a it's a thing to get rid of the person who stands? I just don't think he ever foresaw that it would be used against him in a really like slimy yeah. way. Because I don't think he foresaw that people could get on the council while not being, you know, of a similar mind to him in that way. Because you'd theoretically arrive on the council by standing for what Piltover was built for. And um. As far as I'm concerned, it's probably something that Mel and Jay, like Mel knew this was an option, and then got Jace to push it really hard 
and then, like, this was all done so quickly and effectively. And then the rest of them, they're not really voting him out because of what Jace has said. They, they just know that they've got to follow along with what Jace suggests at this point if they want access to more Hextech shit. Mm. Especially with Heimerdinger's whole premise being we got to stop the Hextech shit. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's built really well. I'm not sure how I would tweak it to make this maybe more easy to digest in terms of a political system ch having such a significant change. Yeah, um, I don't so know. I'd have to give it some thought. Um, yeah. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. It would help if we had more time, certainly, to, to drag it out a little bit longer to maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head. It feels quick. It feels like it just sort of happens in an instant. Um, but... I think in it, the context of it being galvanized by uh, crisis in that sort of way helps smooth things along. Yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Oh, oh, hi, Jay. Wow. How was your stream, Jay? It was great. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get to see it. I would have, but I was... Um, <laughs> yeah, we were just doing EFAB you now, so we're too busy. Yeah, 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 yeah I thought stuff. we were starting at 7. Which is, yeah, well, half seven, which is currently half an hour fucker. late, if that were the truth. <laughs> like, well, if if we were starting at seven, I would have ended stream and come on. Oh, okay, yeah. but because wow. that was my plan. My plan was to stream for an hour and then come on. Oh yeah. yeah. But then, considering I was late anyway, I thought I'd I'd spend a little longer wrapping up. <laughs> <laughs> Since right, I'm then. already late, I'll just be later. This is why people <laughs> want to kick you. This yeah, is exactly true. why. You, well, because I'm not here. Because you're a flungus. Let's say he has to be here Got for us him. to kick him. You missed Heimerdinger getting fired. How could you? No. Well, no. Fair, I don't want to relive that painful memory. That's true. Um, well, all right. Enough pleasantries. We must move on. We're already running the out only of time. Thing that, the only thing that would have really improved this scene is if Jace looked down at Heimerdinger and said, Okay, Boomer. Damn. <laughs> The show is meant to be able to be consumed by like teenagers and stuff, right? That's a bit harsh, you know. I think that's like R-rated yeah. shit. And from your I silence, think, I think you agree. I, I think, think Jace so. should have directly said to Heimerdinger, "Heimerdinger, I need you out of the way so I can help Victor with Hextech." <laughs> I think that would have probably improved it. And then the other counselors are like, "I agree, but not for the reasons you may think." No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and they just, yeah, yeah. V Victor needs our help. Yeah. Now, Who's Victor? next scene, there are many people who claim that the interest of Vi and Caitlin and Caitlin and Vi comes from nowhere in episode 8. Um, I'm just taking off my copyright screen there. So she gets her the, the, uh, the old potion, and she's flipping out, and she grabs her as she's flipping out, and they just, they just, they just have this little thing, and it's like, is it, oh, uh, uh, it's fine, don't worry about it, moving on. And, uh, it's great, great guy. We've, we've already had a few other little bits and bobs. It's just, you know, there's an interest of some kind between them about something. Anyway, moving on. So you got, no, no. uh, she sees the name Powder and Vi on the wall from when they were comparing heights when they were younger. And she's like, who's Powder? And she says, I thought she died. She's my sister. And she says, how do you not know she's alive? And then she's like, hard to check when I'm in prison. And she's like, well, don't you have parents? These are all very normal <laughs> questions, but like when you listen to them, you're yeah. like, oh my god, Caitlin. Like, <laughs> Can you say privilege? Like it's, it's like, just mm, like these questions are very awkward for, for, for her to understand. The answers are all really horrible. It's like, no parents? Yeah, they were killed by enforcers, assholes. Like <laughs> all right. Well. Oh. Where did they go? Hurry up. Um though the potion well, seems she to says, have... why didn't they comply? Oh god. <laughs> I was taking the head off, I think. But uh, the potion seems to have done a magic slash fantasy, which is heal the wound just completely. It's it's all done now. Um, mechanically, Shimmer is a, a fantasy juice that does all kinds of things, and I think we've already had it implied it has healing properties. Um, so I'm mostly fine magic, with this. Yeah. Magic shaman lady in the shadows might be special. Yeah. yeah. He, he took the Shimmer, it got him right back on his feet. True. Um... So anyway, uh, they 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 real sort of restated that this place is very rickety, and uh, then they hear noises outside, Ooh. and it's Silco. Oh my god! Ever the one to make a cool looking entrance. Sure. <laughs> oh. 
it's quite a it's almost like I'm, a vil, you know like you have hero entrances like such a, such a villain one where he's holding hmm. the um the shimmer vials and these the, the the creatures of this area of people who have just been destroyed by shimmer all surrounding him and stuff it's just like uh he's drunk jesus he is he's already done the slow clap entrance so now it's now <laughs> for this one yeah true. he's, he's got a more. checklist of entrances to do <laughs> yeah dude um he's silko he's got this covered uh, one of the one of the lines he has that I found really interesting. He says, um, "Candidly, I thought you were the prize of your second-hand family, but Jinx is more than I ever imagined." I wonder if there's an implication there that he was actually planning something for Vi of some kind. Um, because in, a lot of people talked about this, but in the scene with uh, in episode three, it's interesting that he gives the command to Deckard to kill them after the explosion, like I implying maybe that the command previously wasn't kill them. It was something else. I don't know. Like, there's, there's thoughts yeah. about what was Silco's plans exactly, and it's just like, I'm pretty sure he was gonna kill him. He definitely decided to eventually, but, you know. I may have had a contingency of, if I can make Vi see things my way, that'd be a fucking asset to have on hand. Maybe, yeah. Um, also, it's probably worth mentioning, I, can't remember, I don't think we ever mentioned it in the, in the streams, but um, uh, Goga mentioned the reason that she's got Vi on her face, and I was, like, convinced by it. Um, was, her prison number was 516, and so 5 for 5, 1 for 1, and then together they make 6. Sure. That's enough of a reason hmm. for her to put that tattoo on her cheek, I think. Interesting. Um, um, and then when she put it on, she was like, oh, my name's Vi! Oh, what a <laughs> well, coincidence! <laughs> what well, do you think about that? <laughs> another uh, another theory I heard was uh, that's the number of people that she lost. I don't know if that works. Uh, you have to push it a little to make that work, right? Because you have to, you count, you have to count powder when her whole thing is getting to powder as soon as she can. Like, uh, she didn't confirm powder dead, so powder can't count. Which means we have Milo, Clagger, Vanda, and her parents, which makes for five. Mom and dad, yeah. Unless you want to say five for V and then one for maybe powder's dead. <laughs> She's the one of the other thing, but I think the, the, the five, one, six thing works just the better. And I think that was just the right way of trying to be like, okay, we'll keep the stupid Vi tattoo, but we'll try and justify it a different way. <laughs> I was... I'm... Well, that, <laughs> that, 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 that noise. How does that sound, how does that sound on your hands? <laughs> it's kind of like, it's it's kind of like you were eating, wanted to say something, and then gave up halfway through. <laughs> The, the, food, the food was so delicious, like, I can't talk right now. Mm -hmm. I want to talk, but, oh, God, the same. I'm not eating. Um, what do you think, Jay? It's like, even weirder. I don't, I don't believe you're not eating. I don't believe you. I'm not eating. That's you're lying. The noise that That's happened. a lie. <laughs> not Jay. eating. I, like, I like stopped halfway through my words, like, hang on, let me try again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck are anyway. you saying? <laughs> anyway. Try it again. <laughs> the thing that, um, like, if, if I was like a fucking writer and I was put that on my desk, it's like the character's name is Vi and she has a tattoo uh, that says VI on her face. My immediate thought would be to go, okay, do people call her Vi because of that tattoo? Well, here's the thing. Like, I think this is one of those things that they had to, well, they maybe had to throw together, like, suddenly on the spot, because they realized maybe they'd made a mistake, because in the in Vi's lore in the game, her name isn't Violet, I don't think. Or at least... Right, that know, makes sense to me. Like, so, the, the nickname Vi probably came from the tattoo. Right. Hmm. Okay, yeah. To, to me, that would be the best explanation that they could have in the show. Well, I mean, like, I think this is like, sufficient. What well, the got. thing the thing about this to me is that right, even if her her um, prison number is that, and she's getting a five for the V and an I, you know, right, whatever, right, there she still must be aware that that's her name and that what she's doing is getting a tattoo of her name on her face. Like that's still got to be something that she knows is happening. So anyway, I will take your silence as agreement. I'm just glad they let him mm -hmm. get tattoos in prison. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta keep all that creative freedom flowing, you know? Um, Alright, where are we here? Yeah, so uh, 
Silka does villain speech. Uh, Jinx is walking around. She's overhearing this. She's not quite sure what's going on. Vi decides instead of battling these fucking shimmer goons, she'll break the um the structure they're in because it was already pretty rickety and uh, just uh, I think it topples forward so they just move forward as in like you know it's toppling to them so they go straight through because then it won't hit them. Basically, the kind of thing you should be able to figure out as a human being that they never do in a lot of movies. You know what show they didn't figure that out in? <laughs> Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> I the remember stupid Boba Fett. droid was chasing them down a really long street. They just didn't turn left <laughs> or right because they were like, "Why would I do that? It's stupid." No, we'll, we'll be I don't cornered if we keep going. We can't just keep they going in circles. It's not like this is different a directions. Did that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. just split up? Yeah. 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 There's a scene I remember, in between uh, when they're getting chased by a guy with a baseball bat, and they make a joke specifically about the fact that three of them don't split up because he keeps following them because <laughs> he's still afraid to go in a different direction. Hmm. I remember Absolutely. Batwoman did that too. Batwoman's chasing this dude in fucking Batmobile. Dude's on foot and he's just running down the street. <laughs> it's just... Happens all it's the like, time. All the time. Up. <laughs> um, People lose 75% of their IQ whenever they're being chased by anything. Yeah. To be fair, that actually, you know what? And if I was being chased, I'd probably lose some IQ because I'm a little, a little bit scared because I'm a little pussy. Yeah, probably uh, a little pussy. I mean, you do like also eating noises live. while you're not eating, so yeah. So um, this whole structure is about to fall on Silco. Um, I've seen people mention, like, plot armor that he survives this. Like, it looks as if he knows there's a big eye. He looks at it, and so he probably would have been like, I'm in the center of the eye. This is the best I can do. Yeah, like, he pulls a Buster Keaton. He does, yeah. Um, like, he does move himself, so I think he moves himself into the eye to give himself the best chance of survival. Then... We get a, a little music number, because there's destruction everywhere. Vi and Caitlin are climbing back up, and um, Powder pops the flare, for lack of a better script of what it is, because I'm not even sure. Oh. Um, the flare, the, that's what she was told to uh, light. Uh, and back Violet when she was will always find her. Yeah. And i uh, seen it noted that it makes a big blue smoke, which is... The closest thing I think we get to a connection to Jinx's tattoo, she's got blue clouds that go oh. uh, down her arm and like torso, I think as well. And, I didn't um, think about that. Yeah, that makes well, sense. Well, and I just wonder if that's why that tattoo is there, that she's thought about pulling this thing for her whole life, basically. Um, but yeah, uh, Vi spots it. And uh, they do a sort of montage of them heading toward it while uh, Silco is losing his fucking mind. Um, this is kind of the first time we've ever seen Silco do that. He's always been calm about things, but this time he's actually he losing his shit and kicking the yeah. hell yeah. out of these, his henchmen, which is really strange all of a sudden. When he tries to do his usual response for a moment, you see him by here. He's just sitting down and having a think. Not quite working out though, and so he gets up and starts doing a big yell. Um, and I think that what we're supposed to take from this is that this is the most stressed out Silco has ever been in his entire life, and he can't control himself anymore like he usually does. We've got all the pressures of the usual stuff with uh, Piltover versus Zorn, but now his like favorite person in the world might uh, think very differently of him if she's able to find out something that he desperately tried to control and has now failed to. To the point where he knows I think this is about to fall apart. Uh, yeah. Lots of things going wrong for Silka right now, and he's got not really able to do anything, so he's just fucking flipping out. Of course, he had to, like, throw together a response in an afternoon, because he didn't know that Vi was alive, and then suddenly she's just in the lanes. Yeah, this is all happening yeah. really quickly for him. Also, there's this shot, and combined with the music, which I can't share, uh, quite mm -hmm. effective... Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I didn't it's even good, register so. the music was Woodkid the first time around. It was what, sorry? Uh, Woodkid. Uh, do you remember the person who did the music for that one trailer for Assassin's Creed Revelations? That one song? Oh, was it that guy? That, yeah, that, that was that a guy. really cool trailer. Neato. I remember that trailer. They had a lot of good Assassin's good Creed artist. trailers. I like Woodkid. Um, but what's also happening at this point is that the, uh, the bridges are being sealed and Marcus is covering it with all of his men. It's just... Uh, we knew this would happen, and it's happened. Um, 
Until the sequence ends. And yeah, seriously, Silco is fucking up his uh his friendo there. He's curb stomping him. Yep. He's um, already dead. The sequence ends with, with Powder's flare running out and her getting a bit frustrated until she hears her voice being called. And um this is the thing. It's gonna be different for everybody at this point in the show, but I was so fucking invested in this Pretty after invested. the first oh, three yeah. episodes. <laughs> Look, I know. I was life. just like, oh my god, they finally met back up and they everything. Oh shit, I've skipped something actually. Yeah, I've skipped. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. A couple of things. We'll, just get, we'll get back to that in a moment, all right? So, we get part two of the flashback for Victor as a kid. Um. He's clearly collected some of those little, like, flowery weird things that uh, Ryo eats, right, to deliver them. And he sees Ryo. This is the first shot, by the way. It's just like, it's man, this looks like fun. Yeah, um, alive if not exactly uh, well. Yeah. Uh, I think would be the way to describe that. Oh, yeah, it looks really rough. Um, On the milking machine. Well, it either it could be milk. It could also be ejecting. Uh, I want that, I want that gecko milk. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Singe, he's uh, he is he's an interesting fellow. That guy. <laughs> well, yeah. So Victor's terrified, and yes, uh, for, for Rio, obviously. Um. And is it the when Singed walks into Victor holding him, he he repeats that the mutation must survive. He's, yeah, mm -hmm. I thought you understood the mutation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, like, Victor's just like, you did this? And, uh, Victor, leaves. Victor would have just thought that meant, oh, you're gonna save its life. Yeah. Not this. Not doing absolutely anything to keep it, to keep it alive, which, mm -hmm. um, we then cut to, like, they, they very deliberately split this up, and I like it quite a bit. They pan, and um, the room changes, and look how far Singed has come with Ryo. He's now in this giant tank. Mm. Just all yeah. this experimentation. Still alive. All the quote notes unquote. on the walls and stuff. Yeah. Um... Singed is an incredibly interesting character, given how little time he has in the show. Yep. Mm -hmm. And still a little more to go. Yeah, we still got more to go. We still got a little bit more to learn about him. And uh... it's also just well executed because, uh, especially with Victor's first response once the scene begins, that's exactly what have been going through his mind as he came here. Yeah, Re recalling you know the second time he went down to singe the lair and found Rio like that. Yes, completely concluded by his line where he says, "I understand now." Mm-hmm. And uh, this is a cool moment for the game fans too, because this is totally normal for the show watchers. That's singed. That's what's happened. That's what he looks like after the explosion he was in. Um, but for the game, it's like, oh fuck, oh. that's singed. Singed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, and they know that. You, if you watch the scene knowing it's a reveal, you could tell that they did that on purpose. Yeah. yeah. It's a dramatic beat when he turns and everything. Yeah. Shit. You just and... like him because he also makes goo. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I like I like that uh, no. in the show we have several different types of scientists essentially. Types of goo. No, not types oh, of goo, just types of scientists. Like it, it, we we try to it, it feels like we're hitting all of the uh, I guess important archetypes that we want for scientists to explore you know these concepts like Heimendinger is hyper like socially responsible scientist. He's always concerned about, let's slow it down, let's chill out. We need to make sure that this is safe. We need to test it. We need to we need to steadily march forward, even if that means that we're going a little bit slower to make sure that we, we're safe and we don't hurt people. And then on the other side of the spectrum is Singed, who is entirely devoted to like science and making progress in science and achieving these things, you know, beating death, essentially. He is completely subsumed in in that goal and and not even like there's no doubt in his mind that this is the way that he ought to operate and then it feels like victor and jace are in the middle kind of oscillating between both sides um but with different motives in mind yeah. uh because like with in the case of victor it's it's it starts to become more about himself and saving himself whereas i guess with jace it's more so about trying to yeah this is what we got to do to like save the most people um 
it's just really cool to have all of those perspectives in the show and explored throughout it. Um, I think Singe is like really great as a method of exploring that. I can't wait for more of him. I can't so, wait for more of him. I'm super excited to see more of Singe. Especially with what he's been up to. Oh, yeah. The show yeah. fits into, mm -hmm. um, with its attitude towards science being, um, all of having all of these attitudes towards science explored is pretty relevant to what's going on in the world where we have currently, where we have um, stuff like IA being, I, AI being developed, which could potentially be very dangerous, but we're still developing it anyway. I feel like it's a very relevant modern concern that this show is about, even though it's literally about magic. Allegory. I mean, I would say, yeah, I guess, because this one's more focused on death, I guess, life and death. Like, that's kind of what Sims is trying to work on. Yeah, um, he's... He takes must survive. And, and just how Victor has gone from being disgusted to being like, I need help. Uh... In... Mm -hmm. I suppose I probably should wait for this, but I'm just wondering about in the context of stuff Sinch says later, if the mutation surviving has, like, how one interprets that. Well, do you want to stuff... put it in your back pocket? We'll get there. Yeah, I guess so. No, a little lunchbox. I don't have a lunchbox. Loser. So Silco is looking. Uh, he sits down in his office and he realizes, wait, He's what the still fuck? Still mad. Um, Jinx has drawn like a bunch of shit with a knife and arrow that points up, and he spots that Savika has been uh, tied up. Let's say with the word liar inscribed on her on her arm. Yeah. Which is not good uh, for Silco. That means that. Obviously, Silco uh, uh, Jinx has found out everything from Savika, more than likely. Means all the shit that he just went through was for nothing. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I think that's the last we see of Silco for this episode, isn't it? It's going to be next time. His uh, second act low point. Yes. <laughs> he is. Yeah. He has quite a life, that Silco. Um, so anyway, back to what I was jumping ahead to, because I fucking <laughs> love this scene. Um, we've got like. <sighs> Jinx is pretty tangled right now. This is very much a difficult situation. And she already is almost like, Vi's not here for me, that fucker, and throws the uh, the flare. She's obviously angry. But then Vi is actually there. And Woo! like, this is the thing, she's already a killer, she's already kind of a psycho. But like, I just fully believe that Jinx doesn't want to, to have to deal with any of this. And like, this expression where she sees Vi, it's like, one of hope, as far as I'm concerned. Um, representative a bit of, like, wait, me and her, that was like the best time of my life. Yeah. Um, and anyway, it's just a huge moment, because they both come very far, and you you as a, as a viewer okay. are like, this could go in many ways. And uh, I think they handled it incredibly well. So... They, she hugs her immediately, and it's it's neat in a sense that Jinx would be very against that with pretty much anybody else, but she's already just let her in completely. Um, yeah. So quick, and she's already tearing up as well, because this, uh, we got all the context for their, um, their childhood, so this just, you know what is being appealed to here with both of them. Um... Because all those, I guess, negative feelings that Jinx has been cultivating and dealing with, it's hard to, like, when the person's right there again, I guess, and, like, they did show up after you lit the flare. I don't know. It's hard to really deal with that at the same time. Well, not to mention, too, it was pretty, like, just from some of her designs, how she painted her nails both blue and violet showed, yeah. like, in a subtle manner that she still was really hoping to see her again. She was always on her mind. Um, someone just said, it's amazing how the AI drew all of this. It's almost like humans did it. What? what? So, the only thing um, that that makes me think about is I've actually seen some people watched our Boba Fett coverage and concluded we said that Arcane was made by robots. Um, why? 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 So, I, I can why? explain this, because listening comprehension, work on it, right? Go back and listen again. What I say is that Luke was constructed in audio and visuals completely artificially. Though, if you keep a good eye on him, and you listen closely, it becomes clear he's robotic. Then I said, a lot of people say that there's no chance of anything like not human ever being able to come close to human. 
And then we immediately say, well, we've just watched Arcane, so we know that even if it's not human, you can still get to the point where it's almost better than human. And some people were like, yeah, but Arcane wasn't made by an AI. It's like, that's not what we're saying. That is, uh, <laughs> man, that is really broken <laughs> comprehension, yeah. Just, like, listen again, and you'll understand our point, because for some reason you thought that we thought that this was all made by an AI? Like, <laughs> no. And I'm not saying that's what that chatter is saying, out. it's just the only thing I can think of that he, they can say that. Could you imagine finding out, like, literally the entirety of Arcane was made by an AI? That, that was fucking terrifying. Terrifying, and I'd be like, please get Dude, this AI to make be... more. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be right in the corner. Shaking uh, back and forth, like, oh my god, it's well, terrible. Like the it problem is that AI, like, and AI did that. It's like, well, I guess that's the end of that era and the also, beginning of the new robot god era. Yeah, but, <laughs> like, but the thing is, the um, point at that point, right, is you want you don't want like Disney to own that AI. You want anyone to be able to use that AI. Yeah, but Disney anybody would just have to own like, that AI, right? Because it Disney, was just Disney would just have French. full control. Was, like they can they just, can make a movie at the touch of a button. That's amazing, but anyone could do that. It's just Disney owns the button. So we're back on this topic again, are we? Yeah, please. Let's, let's, let's um, move on. Yeah. Well, and I was just going to say that uh, even if this we're all handcrafted, I do believe AI will be able to uh, create this shit on their own eventually, of course. Eventually, yeah. Like, what we, so what we saw with Luke was it getting better. It is already better than Mando Season 2. And it's been, what, a year? Yeah. I, I don't see how anybody could not be convinced. Give it, like, a hundred years. Give it a thousand, like, however oh. long you think it takes, we're going to head towards there eventually. It depends. We could uh, reach some kind of fundamental technological limitation that stops progress, right? Uh, that would be the other possibility. I suppose that's that's possible. I, I guess the thing is, is that when we already see now that you've got like artificial intelligence that can like create musical compositions and artwork, and it's not like there yet, but just give it time. Yeah. Um, I don't know why that you'd assume that it wouldn't be possible with enough time or enough, you know, continued development. I mean, I assume that it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, something I like as well is that um, when I was watching this, I was like, just tell her you were taking to prison. That's the first thing you got to get clear straight away. You didn't abandon it. And she literally says that first thing. It's yeah. Like, I didn't want to leave you. I was taken to prison. And uh, uh, Powder's reaction is Marcus. And then she goes, I don't know. Like, the, the, the fact is that uh, Jinx would have been told by Silco through Marcus that Vi was dead. So that means Mar either Silco lied or Marcus lies. Some someone's lied, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah like yeah. the the thing is, uh, Powder Jinx. Really, at this point, I could call her either. She's um, this is great, but things aren't quite like they used to be. Um, like she misses the fuck out of Vi, and 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 it's nice that they're reunited. But I mean, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, basically. Uh to ask are you real first yeah she like, says are you real which is pretty yeah. rough well that implies she she's very well aware of her like mental situation it's like oh she sees all these things and doesn't even know if most of them are actually real building puppets I, like, of, the, of the dead friends i and... imagine in like less clear f terms this has happened in some form before yeah maybe even that mind. yeah um, yeah, and then we get one of my favorite expressions throughout the whole thing. This is in response to so the confirmation Vi is real. This is real. We're here. This is happening. I'm your sister. And then just uh, Jinx breaking down because uh, she says things changed when you left. I changed. Mm -hmm. And like just w with how she looks when saying this, to me it's just like she's not happy at, about where she is right now. Yep. But she's there, and it's kind of hard not to well, address it. What she wants now, she realizes that it's closer within her grasp. Going back to how things were before is far is closer to being in her grasp than she ever realized it was. But she's still realizing it's probably not possible because of um, it, she's voicing that frustration. Right? She never knew it was this possible, but it still isn't. She's so close now to getting what she wants, but she still can't have it. Yeah. It's, uh... well, I, I imagine she wonders if it is still possible, because... Uh, Vi well, just the, the, fact that it's Vi, the fact that Vi exists is alive and cares about yeah. it. She's got all these things confirmed right now. And this is mm. her reaction that 
I may have been I may have gone too far. Uh but that confirmation is then damaged significantly um, in a moment because Vi says we, we've, we've both done things to, uh, to survive and what matters is we're together, which I think is the closest we'll get to what Vi went through in prison. Um, mm -hmm. She's probably done some stuff in there that she is not proud of uh, from I that line. she's killed some Silco coons. <laughs> probably, yeah. Yeah, probably proud um, of that though. Just a just a quick video game thing. Uh, that I guess is worth mentioning. Uh, Vi calls Jinx Pow Pow here, as you know, a nickname for Powder. Uh, later on in in the video game, later down the line for her, she starts to call that gun the minigun Pow Pow. Oh, interesting. Yes, well. Um, so it would be nice if that minigun came later, though. Just saying. Yes. But yeah, this in terms of like. A juxtaposition of character. This is such a soft moment, and Jinx is totally like this is the nicest and calmest we've ever seen her. But then you hear footsteps, and I was thinking about this when I was watching it the first time. I was like, Caitlyn's here. Um, and the problem with Caitlyn yeah. being here is mm -hmm. several fold. You have to understand all the characters in play right now. We go with mm -hmm. Caitlyn first because she's probably the easiest. Her perception is. I've broken someone out of a prison to help understand how Silco is destroying different things and controlling different things related to the fight between Piltover and Zorn. So far, I've done really well and made sacrifices for this Vi person who I believe is a good person. Um, she's got lots of issues happening, and we've just bumped into Silco who tried to kill us. I feel like at this point we've got enough to work with. Um, and we're kind of like, you know, are we heading out? And then it's like, well... Vi's got to see her sister first. Her sister, who 100% matches the person who's fueled C Caitlyn to go on this adventure, the person who's killed a bunch mm -hmm. of enforcers, the person who's been blowing up parts of Piltover. So Caitlyn is obviously feeling partially betrayed and furious, but then go over to Vi, so it is like, loves one of these people and fully respects one of these people, um, having to deal with both of them, completely crossing swords and needing to calm the situation down before it gets any worse. And then Jinx, being someone who has incredible issues with abandonment, betrayal, mistrust, lies. She's got all this confirmed from, uh, from, from Vi, so it's working out. But wait, Savika told her earlier, she's not here for Jinx, she's here for the gemstone, and she's working with enforcers, or is with an enforcer. And this person shows up, um, and so that's all you really need. Vi is hanging out with this person. Savika said she was hanging out with an enforcer. And that she's lying to you. She's not actually here for you. She's here for the stone. If enough of the facts from Savika line up, then, uh, it's all it needs. You just need to push Jinx slightly over the edge, and she'll, uh, mm -hmm. the rest will be done by something that's a part of her psyche right now, which is represented perfectly by voices in her head. Uh, she pushes Vi off straight away and starts charging the Gatling gun. Mm -hmm. Um, a fucking expression as well. She's, it's, it's like she's so fucking ready to kill Caitlyn already. Uh, which has got to be a little bit. And we got that little, yeah. It's, uh, you, I was just gonna say, uh, like the little birdie there, just chilling out. But um, the crow is stressful in this scene because with every few lines, it cuts back to it going like, brah, <laughs> just like. <Yeah. laughs> Like he, he's, already figured out, he's already figured out that something's gone wrong. Bro! I'm paying Why, attention. Well, yeah, because the crow was invested in this working out. Um. Yeah. It's like, no, it's not working out. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Vi's just trying to calm them both down. And, uh, All it takes is that one little realization of her to turn the fucking gun on Vi. Like... Yeah, she because she starts putting it together. She's like, "You weren't yeah. actually here for me. You're trying to get that stupid fucking You're stone." Playing me, yeah. yeah. And uh, and meanwhile, while that's happening, Caitlin is like, "Your sister is Jinx," and <laughs> that Vi is like, "No, no, 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 no. like, 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 hang on, like, because <laughs> yeah. stop yeah. it. You're ruining it." Yeah, that's that a little bit please, snowballing please, out please. of her yeah. control. Yeah, like, because that realization is quickly. fucking terrible. Jinx has killed lots of Caitlin's friends. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile. Just to the left of Vi, Jigs is losing her mind, uh, and they spin around us again with the fucking dead. Look at that shot, man. 
Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Hello. That's, that's bad, man. And yeah, she's... Again, uh, Milo's here representing something. She's weak. Yeah. She's being manipulated. She's being lied to. Can't trust Vi. Doubt. Um, but then Vi does a really good job of coming across as very fucking genuine. Even when she's aimed the gun right at her face, she's like, um... Uh, she says, like, no, I'm here for you. And she even, like, grabs her arm a little bit. And it's just this great moment of... Because even I was like, you can only push this so far. The flaw I often find, and we're going to get into this big time as, as this stream goes on, with Harley Quinn-type archetypes, is that it's an excuse for a writer to do something they do anyway. Which is when, you know, I'm like, I'm pretty sure 2 plus 2 is 5. And Free's like, no, it's 2 plus 2 is 3. And then Rag's like, I can solve this situation. It's, and then, I don't know, there's an explosion that happens. And Rag's like, actually, maths is kind of gay if you think about it. And then we all, like, have a huge fight. And it's just like, why is nobody talking about the thing that would solve the problem? Everyone's just going nuts. And then Harley Quinn archetypes, they're allowed to just do that for free. They can just literally talk about anything they want at any time and destroy conversations and create drama. Great. It's just a free pass. But, um... I was actually impressed with this, that Vi says all of that, and then puts her hand on Powder, like this is the best possible argument she can make, and Jinx really doesn't have anything definitive to work with, and so she actually stops. She's like, I need to think, because she's still got the voices in her head telling her she's wrong. Um, this is carnage for a fucking brain. <laughs> she yeah. just, if you look at her face, she starts uh, hyperventilating as well, as Vi is talking to her about how she can trust her. And, uh, yeah, uh, I was already sold pretty much at this point that they're doing an incredible job with Jinx. Mm. This is really hard to nail, um, but I feel that she's reacting very straightforwardly to a lot of what she's been given when you apply the variables of her brain and her sort of main concerns, her main insecurities. Yeah. Unfortunately, look at this fucking, these frames. Yeah, it's like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then she hears something, and um, I want to say this now so we can get out of the way instead of being like, maybe uh, we find out next episode that the Firelights were keeping an eye on Vi, which we saw, and uh, they decided to attack her once they had confirmed that she's working for Silco, and they treated her hugging and, and being connected to Jinx as evidence of that. That's why they attack now. It's not a coincidence. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. Because right. I think a lot of people... Think it is, but a certain character makes clear that this, this, the reason they went for now is because they they believe all of them are working for Selko. Um, so one sister started working for Selko. Who's to yeah? Say he doesn't shit about the other. Yeah, well, they have a whole conversation with that, which we're yeah. getting relatively close to. I love this action scene. It's been great. Um, yeah. the Caitlyn's gunning for the gemstone, Vi is just looking to defend herself from whatever the fuck is happening, and Jinx hates these people and wants to kill them, and she's firing her, uh, Gatling gun throughout the whole thing, pretty much. Um... There's a lot of, like, quick shots, but, and, you know, it's very frantic in pace, but there's still enough for you to clearly understand what's going on. Like, a particular sequence I'd refer to with that is, uh, you know, when one of them throws a, a blob of the crystal thingy at Jinx, she ducks it, shoots it, and then, like, quickly as the person's going past uh, slaps a grenade on the back of his uh, board mm -hmm. and then there's a few quick cuts around as everyone realizes what's happening we get a cut to the firelight leader as he picks up on that and he goes down there and you know saves that person as they're about to well fall to their death or whatever they have a lot of moments where jinx jinx is very aware of the environment she picks up like all of the details all the noises mm. they show her several times doing that yeah she shoots through the um the thing we saw them use in episode 4 to freeze people. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and as he's flying past her, just this... And it looks fantastic. Looks really good. All that detail. Um, but yeah, she attaches the grenade, like Theo said. Bobs mm -hmm. him up. Um, and the leader does realize. Yeah, lots of little interactions like that in the fight. Um, more importantly, I guess, for character, is that Vi's just trying to fight off the biggest one out of all of them, but casually sort of keeping an eye on Powder in the fight and realizing something a little disturbing, which is that she's very much enjoying this. Yeah. As Ooh, bullets go killing. fucking flying past her. Like, That's yeah, my she jam. almost tags Vi as well during the fight. Um, but this right here is... We're going to get a lot of this in Season 2, I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. 
it's gonna I would be hope that's what it's going to be about, I'd imagine. Um, but yeah, and uh, this is, I think I was trying to point out, but this is the thing that Jinx does in her fight scenes. She bites her lip, but she's, they're also yeah. showing her just having loads of fun as well. Um, which is not what Vi would, would, what would like to see, and it's obviously... A bit of that, uh, that, that pink glint there in her eyes. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Um, but yeah, Caitlyn's knocked out and kidnapped, and the Firelights steal the gemstone with it as well. Um, yeah, this happens. Uh, Look at the play doctor go. Look at her. Just dodging that shit, and then, um, this is mm. the thing. Does she have the power to be able to kick a guy like that over? It's like, hmm. I, I'm... I guess if if everyone gets these basically supernatural capabilities, I I don't know. I guess that's just part of this world that people can behave like this. I think um I think they do work to justify it here and there, but uh that Jinx, guess because it's it's she essentially to be just superhuman speed being yeah, able she's to just too scrawny pull yeah. things just, out just make it and. Out put things on other things in the time that it happens. It's just superhuman speed. Well, because meanwhile I mean, you have yeah, I, I Vi get... is partially exhausted from brawling the fuck out of this one guy. Like, I fully believe that that just happened, but with Jinx it feels much more like we're relying on a little bit of tune physics. Yeah. Well, I guess that's what I was about to say. If we're talking about, like, an animation, how, like, what are, what are we doing when we're trying to figure out, I guess, like, how uh, fast people can move or how heavy things are or how things operate? I think the show does a half and half good job of making it grounded, but then also like jumping into a bit of craziness with it. Uh, and so, like, someone's saying, which are more justified for Jinx, I guess. Someone's saying that Joe Rogan punches like shotgun blasts, and he's five six. He's always so like really muscular. He's also huge. That's like we're comparing Jinx's body Jinx to Joe not Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx is explicitly scrawny, like very scrawny. Yeah, I'm just imagining Joe Rogan in a fucking uh, Jinx wig now. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, there's gonna be memes of her face on his body now, <laughs> or maybe his face on her body. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Jinx gets slashed on her leg by someone getting a shot, and and I I just like the fact that. She like screams and then in response aims the gun at him, charges it up, and he just looks fucking terrified. Like, oh god, what have <laughs> I done? Like, I probably shouldn't have just tried to go for that easy strike. Uh, Vi gets knocked out because she's distracted by watching Jinx. Yeah, watching her like beat the shit out of someone with the minigun, which is kind of fucked up. Yeah. Um. But uh, Jinx gets distracted from executing the kill by them picking Vi up. Um. And they slam like a staff to the ground and it just makes like the smoky bomb shit. Smoke clears. And you get like what feels to be like, I don't know, the closest you get for, for uh, Jinx being normal to be like, why? And then when she realizes she's gone, meaning she can't fucking confirm whether or yeah. not this shit is all real, if she's being lied to or not, she just, uh, the, the screen all flips out with the scratches and everything. She just, just shouts no. Loses so. it. Oh. Which, yeah, uh, no. I, again, I was just fully no. on board with her being like, ah, oh, it sucks, because you don't even know if you can trust Vi, but she's just been kidnapped now, so what does that yeah. mean? It's like, I don't know. It's, yeah, more really good expression work as the smoke clears, and she, her face goes back to, you know, the, the more vulnerable expression she had earlier in the scene around Vi, and then, yeah, when she's gone, just... Just shit, man, <laughs> like... Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's episode six. We're at two Woo, hours. Of act two. Oh, not too bad. <laughs> How was that for um the fact that it came out in Acts? Like, what was what was the feeling with this being the end of Act Two in terms of a cliffhanger? Um, they did a good job of building the hype. <laughs> like yeah, I definitely wanted to see what happened that. next. A lot yeah. of things gotta are gonna line up. Oh, we so got a lot of characters in a lot of places. Well, I so mean, I'm, I, I'm real glad that I got to watch it like a minute after this. I was gonna say you don't <laughs> count rags because you got to watch it whenever you want. I met Theo. I think is the only person here. Maybe Das, but you you were literally not allowed to watch any more until 
<laughs> yeah, I was just sitting here like counting down the days until the next start. <laughs> the was it, were there weeks between the um? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, a it week, was right? one week between each act. That's not so I bad. Little, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I was I was a little late to the showing and everything like that. By the time I had watched it, all the episodes were out. Well, la I think uh, I wonder Sorry, if like don't. Netflix is going to actually try and do that with more of their stuff now that it seems like if you want to get people to keep talking about your show, that staggered releases is a good way to do it. I'd be mm -hmm. fine with them releasing mm -hmm. it weekly because I would just talk the phone. Just talk, talk with everybody. Um, about it. There, there yeah, is a fun element of the discourse. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The fresh episode that everybody could talk about all at once. At the same no time. No one's being yeah. left behind, you know? Mm-hmm. As, and, you know, it gets talked about for a while instead of a uh, kind of, you know, the conversation sort of gets stamped out a what lot What did you quicker. think of the entire show? It's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> this is right. yeah I think it is, hard, <laughs> it is hard for people to talk about their thoughts on an entire show rather than, yeah. Look how long we talked about fun. Boba Fett. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about it for uh, long enough that when I we compiled it, well, I shouldn't say we, you compiled <laughs> <laughs> you know, compile all the episodes into our uh, one. It was funny. It lasts um, like in the nine live, hours. In the live chat, someone was like, "Wait, so what is this video?" And someone said, "Friggy compiled all of the videos <laughs> into one." It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, that was pretty funny. Who told you this? Um. So anyway, we open on episode this seven. Intro is really cool. With a Look music video. It reminds me of Infamous. Oh, this cool. music video is fucking bit. pretty. I love uh -oh. it so much. Hey, Rags, what do you think of this? Open the music video. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nice. Nothing at all. Wags. Okay. Nothing at all. Silence from the doggo. Yes, he thinks nothing. Yeah. Well, that's fine. We'll just we'll just keep going. Um. Uh. Yeah, I think it's pretty neat. Um. Uh, the quick, I guess, tonal introduction to who the firelights are. It's just like the the oh, compilation. I'm, I'm back. What? You back? I'm back. Yes. Oh, what okay. do you think of this intro, Rags? Um, I, I'm not a fan. It's just not. I just don't. I don't care for it myself. Uh, it's it, it's it's just a. I just don't care for it. It's. Too, it, I don't know. It feels too. I don't like it. Too urban and hip hoppy, which seems like it just doesn't mix with a lot of the other stuff. I don't. It's not my thing. I just didn't care for it. Yeah, I uh, I like the art, but I have to agree. I, I, I didn't know what the hell it was doing, honestly. It, it kind of reminded me of that that show Devil Man Crybaby, where there's like there's this character for like several episodes. For some reason, he's just like rapping for like two minutes and it leads nowhere. And I'm not even sure what the fuck they're doing. And it kind of reminded me of that. I think it's fairly clear what they're doing with this. I was, was going to say, but you, I keep talking, so you go ahead. Nah, that's, well, like, that's, that's about it. The, the lyrics like give explicit reference to like what the firelights are about. I'm sure the lyrics are... Well, I, it's I, I just like it's... the intro lyrics. Like I, I get how the lyrics are part of it, but like stylistically, I just, I, it's not my thing. I didn't care what for is, it. What is it? What does it mean though if like the lyrics are totally appropriate and you just don't like the method by which the lyrics are being conveyed? I guess it means that I like the lyrics, but I don't like the tone in which it's conveyed. I, I, that's that okay. seems pretty well, basic. I, I guess what I'm saying Isn't is like, like the most it? appropriate genre to represent the firelights, like, like, considering like. <laughs> Well, yeah, because like I'm not a, uh, I'm not too into hip hop and rap and stuff, but Neither I can I. super appreciate this is pretty damn awesome. Um, I guess I, mean, I appreciate I it. Is, I, 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 I'm not quite sure that I, unless it applies to a lot of the music in the show, like if if we're gonna, you know, if it's like oh, it feels too modern, it's like well, pretty much all of the songs are not like fitting like a Victorian era thing, like you would hear in Dishonored or something, so. Do we apply the same one to like every single other song that we I'd have to show? I'd have to see the examples individually. I'm just thinking I don't about know. how good Dishonored is. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I guess my cross reference would be uh the club music in um episode what is it, episode four, four? or five? No, five, 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 five. Our five, reintroduction yeah. to the Undercity. Uh I think the song's called Dirty Little Animals. If that fits, I think this fits. Mm-hmm. 
I really yeah, like I think, uh, Digital Animals' lyrics really inform yeah. Shimmer's effect on the world as well. I think it's really good because the, the lyrics, like I mentioned before, are kind of similar to Playground from episode one, in a way, but very different in style, tone, and focus. Yeah, which is indicative of what Silco's effect has been. Mm -hmm. I definitely like those visuals, though. It definitely gives me, reminds me a lot of Infamous's uh, cutscenes. Yeah, definitely agree on the visuals. They're good visuals. I'm just. Did anybody here play Infamous, or was it just me? I played I Infamous played Second it. Son, but I never played the first one. I played the right, first one so... when it first came out. I have basically no memory of it. Oh man, <laughs> I I fucking I adore Infamous. I love that game. It's uh, I that that game is uh super cool and super duper underrated. Barely anybody talks about it when they talk about cool PlayStation Three games. Mm -hmm. Game had a great tone. It's really leaned into like the comic book sort of a uh, vibe, but a little bit darker. Um, it had the binary morality system, uh, which that aspect of it wasn't great, but I did like some of the like storytelling choices that came of, of it. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a cool game, and it's just nice to be reminded of it every now and then. Yeah. They should, um, they should, they should re-release that on like PlayStation. Um, I guess it has to be on PlayStation Five, which I don't have, but they should re-release. Yeah. You'll get it eventually. Give it time. Give it a few do, decades. Well, they need to do Bloodborne first, okay? Can can we just halt they, all re-releases until they do Bloodborne on PC? On PC? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Then, then, we can just, then we can all just get on with our fucking lives. Just give that game a frame rate. Like, I don't care. Right? Yeah, um, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So. Uh, in chat, Disco Elysium is getting an adaptation from Amazon. Is that true? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, we are we are getting a lot of video game adaptations. Like the Cuphead show just came out like yesterday or like two days ago. Apparently, we're getting a Bioshock TV show. There's going to mm -hmm. be a Fallout series on Bioshock. Prime. One's going to be terrible. I, yeah. Well, so <laughs> we we have very much entered into that era of video game adaptations. It's, it's um, really funny that a game that a lot of stupid people on the internet shit on for being communist propaganda is getting an ad <laughs> from Amazon. Wait a minute. That game has a great art style. Um, they, that I need, that I game has a it. fucking beautiful art style. I, I highly recommend that game. I mentioned it like a few streams yeah. ago. But people call it Bioshock know. communist propaganda? No, uh, Disco Ooh. Elysium. Oh, okay, okay. I was I was confused for a second. They're like, wait, this is new. Well, I mean, someone called <laughs> someone said that Bioshock was free. Someone said Andrew Ryan was an ardent socialist or so a socialist. Uh, uh, <laughs> someone who is right. I thought you guys would have picked that up. It's all about, you know, getting the value of your own work. <laughs> 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 that, that would never not be funny. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, Arcane. Anyway, press yes. on with anyway. our uh, after that really cool intro. Well, I, I, I like the opening conversation. It's, uh, again, like, just taking advantage of the dialogues. You've got, um, Caitlin immediately says, oh, I knew it was a mistake to trust you. And then Vi basically just says the same in reverse. Like, fucking, I don't trust you either. And then she's like, well, you walked us into two of Silco's traps. And then she says, this one isn't Silco. We'd be dead already if it was. And she just goes, oh, mm. very nice. What were you going to tell me about your <laughs> lunatic sister? <laughs> like, I, just, I just like that Caitlyn's so straightforward at this point. She's captured so well. She's got nothing to lose. Um, I'm sick of it. Yeah. And then uh, instead of answering that, Vi is just like, oh, yeah, what, what the fuck's the glowing stone? And then Caitlyn's just like, ugh. And then she's like, that's what I thought. It's like, yeah, they both got things to keep for now. There's no reason to give. But the problem is, like, Caitlyn didn't make it about the stone at all, so it's just like, yeah, it's kind of true that I was here for more than I let on, but I mean, you know, you're a prisoner. <laughs> like, it's kind of hard to argue, it's just like, yeah, okay, fine, we've both not been 100% honest. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Echo uh, is introduced, he's back, he takes off the, the, the mask, um, and you're like, oh yeah, uh, I feel like a lot of people would have guessed that was him at the, this point, because... Even for the reason alone, there's like, where's that kid been? The kid, the white yeah, kid, that's, where's he been? I, for a couple episodes, when I, when we got this reveal, for a couple episodes, I've been wondering, is he going to come back? Where's he? Because we're running, we're running out of episodes here for his him to kind of come murdered. back. His dad got murdered. Where's, so, what's he been up to now, you know, without his yeah, dad? Yeah, so what's, what's happening here? Yeah, Where are sense, we get, when are we going to get him? He has been here since episode four, it's just that he's been yeah. masked up, so. 
as yeah. an avid echo enjoyer there's like slight aspects to his design or motifs of his that let you recognize him like for the first yes. time we see him as the firelight leader he's got his stopwatch swinging around and uh spoiler i guess in the game echo has time shenanigans um <laughs> there's also the red uh scarf thing he has which he has in the game that was like clue number two mm-hmm. and also the the kind of baton thing he has it's not the same one as he has in the game but that's the kind of weapon he uses that was actually what uh, gave it to me i was like pretty sure echo has like a big stick he hits people with yeah. it, it looks rather like right build it's like i'm pretty sure that's echo i wonder um, if they're gonna give him the one he gets from the game because the one he has in the game is like the hand of a clock he stole from a clock tower in piltover neat I feel like uh, when you think about the fact that he had that clock, it's like, right, so there's a really cool example of uh, incorporating an element that is more recognizable from, like, the original source material, 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 <laughs> and then trying to contextualize it uh, and not not put too much emphasis on it, you know, a little bit more mm-hmm. subtle. Indeed, it is a stick-like weapon, yeah. Uh, so. so, I meant the clock, but... The... No. The... Lock is a stick like weapon. Yeah, it's a stick like weapon. Uh, Echo God. believes that Vi is basically as evil as Powder, and um, he assumed he just explains that yeah, it's like so you're working for Silco, and I love the from his POV. There's plenty to sort of run with on that front, but from Vi's POV, that is such a fucking absurd claim. She just says "fuck you," hmm. like I love yeah. that. It's such a straightforward yeah. like. Why would you even suggest that, you idiot? Like, I, of course I don't work for Silco. Killed oh, Vanda. Uh, like, what the hell? And it's just like, well, I don't know what's going on. Fucking Jinx, you know. Another thingy from the game. The whatever it is he's keeping the gemstone in, like, heavily resembles his Z drive from the game. People don't know what that is, you know. Uh, the Z hey, drive is his nerd. time travel device. What does the Z stand for? I don't know. Zyme. <laughs> Zy- oh, damn it, you said Yeah, it I got it. <laughs> I'm going to Zyme travel. Um, yeah, he says that he's been following her since she's gotten out, and uh, he like refers to it as, like, what the fuck are you doing showing an enforcer around um, the lanes? Like, that's a problem. And then she's just like, you never talk to me at all, like, you always punch first, and then he's like, who'd I learn that from? And it's like, oh! Um, My man's demeanor has changed. Yeah, he's, she points uh, that out. Growing up. Um, yeah, because he says people change, and it's like, obviously referring to himself, his theories about Vi, and of course, Powder to Jinx. Because dialogue. Well, it's important for these characters as, as well, because those formative years, you know, that they mm-hmm. spent apart, Especially for Echo. He was well, a little youngster. He really was. And you get a big blast of that when uh, she says you never used to stand up to me. And then she manages to get... I don't know how she got her cuffs off, uh, but she did. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, and like, Echo he's... Says, and you still block with your face. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like that line. <clears throat> Gang all up in her personal space and everything. Like, Jesus. Well, yeah, and, and he... Oh, uh, stay out of personal space. No, but stay out of personal space. I like that when... So, um, I know the right thing. Congratulations. Oh, oh. Clap. Ooh. Anyway. Is so, that a Simpsons thing? Or... Applaud me more. Applaud me more. You know what, chat? could hear that, but you I couldn't. Thought... It, came Wait, through, it came through on OBS, but it didn't go through on uh, Discord, so... chat could hear me clapping oh, you, but well, you that's couldn't what, that's... Oh, I see. Okay, I see. I see. <laughs> I, I believe you. Chat, don't reveal the truth. Okay, thanks. Uh, anyway, so yeah, he, uh, she he, like takes off the cuffs, and uh, as he's realizing from the sounds of it dropping, he's like shocked because obviously this should be like, oh shit, uh, we might have to fight. And then she just hugs him, uh, which is which is a nice moment because uh, of what we know about them from those earlier episodes. Which episodes one through three, man, are they important for just making everything that much more meaningful. Oh yeah. Um, uh, where am I going here? But yeah, uh, he's he's trying to maintain the fucking tough demeanor. But the thing is, she knows she's known him in a time where he was literally like fucking. I don't even know how old he was at the time. I, mean, like, I think hey. he's the same age as Jinx, like oh, overall. Go. Um, and 
I think that's quite important as a moment for his character because, like, he is just a kid playing at gang boss. Like, even if he's a very a crime lord. Kid. Yeah, kind of. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, and and, and Vi's like not gonna put up with that bullshit. She knows who he is. It's like, oh, mm. good yeah. stuff. And they, you know, it didn't even take that long for them to pull off that payoff. Uh, if you consider the time in episode three compared to this, but it's just, like it becomes that that meaningful. Uh, so, back over to Singed and Victor. Um, and he just has some fucking glorious lines. Uh, the favorite for me, obviously, being Nature has made us intolerant to change, but fortunately, we have the ability to change our nature. Mm. It's like, yeah. All the things you can think about what he's referring to with that. Jesus. And, uh, yeah, Victor says, Will it work on plants? And Singed is like, You'll not hear about the plants. <laughs> um, I know the look of a doomed man Yep, and he says if you take this path they will despise you which is like them game fans just getting their giblets tickled you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm making myself my giblets. more just talking about him because just everything he says there's so much to read into it but nothing to like it doesn't go anywhere particularly just yet other than like implied potential roots but he talks like he has a long and storied history. Like yeah, he's, he's been, been around, around the full of time. wisdom, but like ev not even evil wisdom, evil just wisdom? Ruth yeah. ruthless wisdom. Just evil wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the kind of person you'd want to be a Sith Lord. Instead of this cartoonish bullshit, you get like someone who's like, I'm not yeah. here because I like pain. I'm here because it's the best way to achieve my goals. Um, and yeah, and he says, uh, love and legacy are the sacrifices we make for progress. Uh, another great line. And and I really like that in terms of what it says about his priority. Well, it says exactly what his priorities are, but, uh, just, he has completely discarded the notion of, like, reputation and honor and glory. It isn't, it's entirely dedicated to science. There's a to contrast. bring about the ends that he believes important. But there's a contrast there as well with Heimerdinger and Victor to an extent because of the conversation those two had about legacy specifically. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it was all yeah. about legacy. Well, in in a sense, Heimerdinger maybe even sets up this point from Singed being that he didn't disagree with Victor when Victor said, "I'll be forgotten," and Singed mm -hmm. is saying, "Sacrifice that, and you can live." Sacrifice what? Being forgotten? Like, it doesn't even matter. You know, like, the legacy of Victor right now doesn't mean a lot compared to being able to extend his life. Uh, at least I think that's his POV. Um, and yeah, uh, Singed actually makes reference to, he says, the, this is why I parted ways with Heimerdinger, which means those two have a history as well. Mm -hmm. And he takes the vial and says Jace will understand. Yeah. Which, you know, you don't even need to know anything third party in any way. Just like, hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> I wonder if that oh, line man. will become more interesting as more seasons are made. Yeah. And then we cut to Jace, who's doing buff big boy things. Holy moly. Uh, He's got a big old body on him. <laughs> Hammer boy? Something. Hammer lord. Um, yeah, he's um, he's making something. Some, some, something's up. But uh, Mel comes along, and she interprets his uh, action here as one of essentially coping. Like, why is he? Why is he so mad? What's going on? And he's like, he's coping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, at first, it's like, oh, because because you know the stress of being a leader, the stress of all this stuff happening. And then she's like, no, what is it really? And he's like, I betrayed my fucking boss. And I was like, yeah. yay! It, there should yeah. have been acknowledgement of that. Good stuff. Um. It's tough. It's tough. Tough flumes. I think he says he was his mentor and he betrayed him. It's like I like that. It, there's no attempt to, you know, a shield exactly what the action was. He was successful. It's all done now. So there's no point in lying about it. It's like yeah, I betrayed him and it worked, yeah. and that sucks. Mm -hmm. Um, and she says it's your time now, Jace. No more red tape. Meaning, uh. He's essentially replaced Heimerdinger as they're all council members, but one of them gets to be the head of the council. And apparently that's him now. Yep. Which is kind of amazing considering where he started in this story. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, but that's but hey, he's got the, he's got the, the hex junk. tech. So it's the hex tech that did it. Yeah. He's got like some he's of the most it. insane leverage that you yeah. would ever have. Um, like, hey, I'm the person who put us on the map as a global shipping lane, and I'm only just getting started. So uh, here, have some actual magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now she says in relation to him making more thorough decisions about what's happening next, she says, I'll stall the council. In the meantime, try not to lose your nuts holding a nut in her <laughs> hand. And um, I saw people, there was someone who said that that was like some of the cringiest dialogue in the whole show. I really don't I mean, feel that way because... I think it's the spell um, being a little... She's being a little know, fun, but yeah, yeah. Little she's fun. also referring to don't lose your resolve. Mm -hmm. Like, you're on the right path. Don't think you're not. Because she's still manipulating him. Yeah. She's literally saying, don't lose your fucking conviction, all right? Do Does... not misplace your almonds, Jace. Exactly. Almonds. But she says it in a funny, jokey kind of way, uh, which is probably <clears throat> indicative of how her relationship is changing with him. Even even without the manipulation, I think it's just kind of good advice, because flip-flopping is uh, not the greatest of moves Yeah, it's when you're in a position like this, and it's definitely not a good idea when you're trying to do good. The joke wasn't good, though. <laughs> what joke? It was hardly oh. a. It was. I don't think it's a joke, it was, really. It's just a. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even think I wouldn't elevate it to <laughs> joke level. It's more like I know, a, like uh, she was sitting uh, in her in her chambers. Oh man, he's really gonna love this. Oh, he better love this. <laughs> right. Oh my god, <laughs> it's a fucking banger, Jay. Wait, man, I really shit. hope he he drops one of those nuts. Like, nice say it. <laughs> she walks in and <laughs> she like, sees oh, it god, fall off. She's like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what if he doesn't and she just. Like, while he's not watching, knocks one off the table. He's like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's straight. Oh, oh, my God. oh, oh my. don't lose your nuts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. She says it too quickly, and he's like, what? And she goes, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's, it's fine. Oh, it, 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 yeah, you dropped this. It was a, it <laughs> was a thing in the moment. Should. It's fine. Like, yeah. <laughs> you dropped it. She's nice. like, oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. Um, we find out that things are getting fucked by the bridge is closing, and Savika suggests that Marcus is rolling on him, or flipping. And I think because Silgo does not want it to come across at all, as though he's not in complete control of Marcus, he just says, um, no, he's doing everything I told him to do. Um, because, it, 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 you know, Silgo can't be sure of Marcus. He's already said that that's the case. He can already tell. Marcus is waning, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, he's like, I gotta go find Jinx and explain what the fuck's going on. And Savika says, um, I've got him more in common with cave lice than Jinx but I didn't see eye-to-eye eye with my old man either. And Silka just goes, and? <laughs> like, it's, it's such a, like, hey. And she, and she just he's says... He's really fucking done right now. Yeah, he's so in a fucking mood. And she says uh, she'll come to you when she's ready. And he's like, all right. Uh, but the, the chem baron has scheduled an assembly. So. Uh, that's an unexpected line from Savika, I think. She'll come Savika. to you when she's ready, like Savika. Um, but it's just like, I wonder, why did you say that? What a, hmm, hmm. Well, like, I know why she said it, but like, why, like, she, would, the, does she have any past experience with wayward children? Does she have, so what, why are you offering this insight, you well, know? So the, the line she says after it is that she'll come to you when she's ready, meaning she, that's what she did with her dad, right? I mean, yeah, maybe. I, if so, I can't remember. I just no, no. That is the line. She says yeah. she'll come to you when she's ready. In reference to Jinx to Silco, because she said that's how she used to deal with her dad. But, oh, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. It's it's twofold of like a genuine piece of advice coming from probably a place of compassion, and also, can you stop thinking about Jinx for like five seconds? We have business. Yeah, yeah. and I yeah. think that when you give the show maybe a rewatch as well, you can get it on the first time around. Savika's just more than muscle. Um, but she's mostly treated as muscle by everybody. Um, and I, I honestly think they're going to elevate her to the leader in, in season two. There's a really good chance of that happening. Yeah, I, I we were getting to it, but her interactions with the, the mob bosses, and I I really like Savika, uh, Savika as a character. She's, she's kind of one of my favorites. Hmm. So then we got It's like that archetype, rough, that rough archetype done in a really awesome and interesting way. Yeah. Uh, so then we get a Jinx scene. I'm a fan of these scenes. And it opens mm. on a shot of a little fly thing, a little green fly thing in her workshop. Um, 
which I think mm-hmm. not exactly, you know, we, we, we'd be planting those flags, but it seems like if they're in her workshop, you see more of them as time goes on as well. It's just like a bit of a through line happening here. Interesting. Another flag. Yep. Done did get planted. So, what is happening in this scene? Five things on her desk. This is this is a scene to me that I think a lot of people could be like, "Ew, that was just a Harley Quinn scene," and it's like, gotta pay more attention. All right. So, (laughs) this scene is Jinx trying to figure out what the fuck just happened, and it is entirely chaotic. This whole scene is fucking chaos. Um, Talking to Milo is is giving her all kinds of shitty advice, and she's aggressively trying to figure out what the fuck happened. Um, She's saying, I didn't lose her, they took her. And uh, I think you hear a whisper saying she's with an enforcer, you saw it. Remember her name. Yeah, and and Jinx says, she was there for me. And then, yeah, when they say remember her name, she's like, why would I remember her name? She's a stupid topsider. And then there's a pause, and then she says, Caitlyn. So, she finishes off stapling up her wound and laughing like a maniac. Also, and that's the thing. It's like, we've got that. That is the scene. But there's just a little other thing going on in here that I absolutely love. Yeah, um, I think I know what I think. Well, I, um, Wait, actually, might it be the same thing that I'm thinking that? Well, well I, I showed you and Jay uh, specifically this. Because uh, it's something that I love about this scene. So, she's um mm-hmm. she's got big big old insecurities about being weak. That's a that's a big thing for her, yeah. alongside all the abandonment stuff. But this scene, we're doing that again. Um, she's got a wound to fucking fix. She grabs a little staple gun. I want to show it now. Hang on, just uh, oh. be careful for copyright. I'm um, seeing it. So she grabs it up, loads it. Uh, ah, God damn it! Sorry, folks. This is awkward and scuffed, but that's <laughs> the way I have to do it. She looks at herself, gets it ready. It's all angry and, and floopy. Um, uh-huh. you know, just, 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 just saying random words to give a bit of a gap. There we go. Does yeah, the first staple it. and looks at herself in the mirror. She's fucking hurt, in pain. That's that. And then mm-hmm. you see her look back in frustration at the at the wound. Like, f- fuck. Like, she looked at herself in pain and then looked back annoyed. Because that's weakness, obviously. That's how it works. Yeah. Um, she does the second one. And again, in pain, like, it's hard to ignore the fact that it's fucking painful. Uh, put copyright up again. And then looks again at the window, like, like it, it's the reverse this time. Like, she knows she's in pain, then she looks at herself to confirm it. Like, it's like she's constantly aware of how fucking shit she is. Um, mm-hmm. And then she gets really frustrated, like, because this is happening. Again, ignore all the dialogue and the whispers right now. Just pay attention to the expressions and the the staples. Next one goes in, and she likes... This is the kind of face you make when you're just struggling to fucking ignore the pain. It's fine. It's just just, I'm dealing with this. Fine. And then she does this expression of, um... It's not anything anyway. It's just just like, whatever. So you're, like, like trying to roll her eyes at the the idea of it. Getting better at controlling herself. Um... And then this expression straight after, it's like, she's like losing her mind, because mm-hmm. what is even happening here? You're trying to pretend that it's not painful to come across to yourself as less weak? Are you fucking insane? <laughs> like, what the hell's yes. happening? Yes. And, yeah, yes. and so you get these expressions of her just, and everything's flipping out, and she's like, uh, what am I even doing? And then, um, the last one. that one goes in, and she's like, sighing chilling out. That's in the moment of the scene where she remembers it's Caitlyn. And then you get the best one, which is she puts the last staple in and fucking cackles. Yeah. Um, it's almost like we're going through a little bit of an arc here. Like, just, just laughing at the pain now. Mm. Um, she's got a lot going on. <laughs> so, the thing that I was gonna... It's not as much detail to it as that. Um, the the eye that's covered by the shattered part of the uh, mirror is the same eye that's covered that uh, Silco's messed up eye. It's the same one. Or at least on the same side if you keep in mind that mirror is reversed yeah. the image. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, I really like how like this is 
I can't recall the time before this that you could actually make out the words that Milo's like ghost voice. No, was I saying. think this is the first time that we hear them properly, yeah. uh, and we hear them again. It's later still tough too. to make it out. I would say. Yeah, but, uh, but like, yeah, there are there are words you can get out of it that are like just, the questions she's responding to, which I think says in, a lot about her mental state. Yeah, that what that he's getting louder. Yeah, he's, he's louder more, than he was before, and <laughs> and I guess it's like just in case you hadn't noticed, she is having conversations with like entities of some sort. I feel throughout like the whole throughout the whole show, a lot of people watch her scenes and they're like, "Yeah, I get it, she's nuts." But I'm just like, there's so much like, more happening. Um, well, it, it is just the thing. This is animation, so like all of those expressions were deliberate, like very deliberate. Someone sat there and thought about those and took time to create them. Multiple people. Um, it's all on purpose. And I think knowing that it's all on purpose, it's like, hmm, you know, <laughs> like it, there's a lot to read into uh, all of these. Disagree on the interpretation that, ugh, whatever, this is a small wound. Instead, it seems Jinx is almost losing consciousness. She's definitely not losing consciousness in this scene. She's, she's getting more active. She's getting more and more right. in, uh, into this. I mean, that doesn't surprise me either. She's not going to be, like, the pain from a staple into your hand is annoying as hell. I wouldn't say that's going to make you knock out. That's nowhere near enough. Mm. Um, it's your pussy. To an open it's gash true. on the leg, that's gotta hurt like a bitch, but like the progression is her wanting to not tolerate the fact that it hurts and you know, yeah, like I said, she's trying to brush it off, and then I think she realizes how absurd the situation is that she's trying to lie to. She knows it's painful, there's no brushing it off, yeah. either you and it hurts nobody, or it doesn't. It's like there's nobody here, but that's yeah. not true. It's not that there isn't it, nobody <laughs> here. That's what's so fucking yeah, good it, about it. That's, that's why it's working, yeah. Uh, yeah, because she's got all that going on while thinking about, did my, my sister's alive, first of all, holy fuck, and she still likes me, but does she though? Because she was with that's the Enforcer, though, yeah. and Savika said that she yep. was here with the Enforcer for the Gemstone, but she came there for me. Like, oh, it's that poor brain of yours. I, yes. Yeah. I have all these people Battle. talking down to you, try to tell you different things, and you see all those conflicting things happening to you. It's like, I don't know what's real, I don't know who's lying, who isn't. And also I'm she hurt, never... and I'm hurting, and I'm trying to lie to myself, and are they lying to me, or are they not? I don't know what's... Uh... She does never... She never receives a consistent line of information that is never in doubt. Like, it's always... But wait a minute, what about that? Hmm, what about this? Yeah. And she has a friendly manifestation of doubt in her subconscious that's always talking to her about all of these doubts she has, which yep. is really nice. Yeah. Thanks, hard, um, hard disagree. She's definitely being shown to nearly pass out at the end of the last stable. No, she's just relaxing because she's done the, the job. And she's remembered the name. These are the two things she wanted to do. Yeah, like the, the stapling is done. Yeah, and she's just relaxing. She's, she's, she's not she passing was. out. Um, <laughs> dude, dude, mm, look at that flying thing up there. Oh, also look at Jinx's go. like, motif going in the music, which are those like Discordant violins. Strange. Oh yeah. yeah, beautiful. Discord violins. Yeah, Discord violins. I like Discord violins. Um. So yeah, uh, Vi gets shown Echo's sanctuary, and she's like, "You built all this," and he says, "After Vanda Silco filled the lanes with Shimmer, um, and everyone who came here was an addict or a victim, and they needed somewhere safe to start again." Which is like, oh man, Echo, you're a legend, huh? You've been trying to fix the lanes yourself. And he even says, like, in relation to the mural, that uh, all the people who they've lost over the years, uh, the kill count is much more to Silco than it is to the Enforcers. That mural is a really important part of Echo's character. It's an incredibly significant thing in his material long before the game. Uh, long before the show. Not long before yeah, the game. Before the game. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Now we're getting uh, into no. the deep lore. Because, uh, like, in, in the teaser for him when he was showing up, he was defending <clears throat> a mural. It didn't look exactly like this, of course, because it's changed um, from a weird chem monster thingy. Uh, and the stinger of the whole thing is that in defeating the big thingy attacking him, uh, he ends up destroying the mural. So with his time travel, he goes back to do the entire thing again because protecting that mural is, like, more important than not getting the shit kicked out of him again, like, yeah. multiple times. Also, they're like, asking... Um, incredibly highly. 
How can I comment on the pain of being stapled? I have stapled myself twice in my life by accident. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Once. Wow. What a great, what a great way to be able to dunk on someone. Fucking painful for sure, but let's just say I wasn't I'll passing have out. You I, know. Was, I was wired after stapling myself. It's a sharp shooting pain. Uh, and then you're like, get this fucking thing out of me. Yeah. Oh. I wound up with a staple through my finger. <laughs> just, that's a, he's, no possible way he knows what this feels like. like I did it twice, actually. Yeah, you, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> first one was like primary school where I was just stapling paper together. <laughs> Just because that's typically what you do. And I remember going like, staple, staple. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck just happened to me? It's like, yep, you just stapled a piece of paper to your thumb. Like, nice. Uh, now this is a part of me. I'm a cyborg. <laughs> I'm a cyborg. Uh, that's great. Does, does that leave scars? Because I have a, a school stationary scar. Uh, the, it's just two really small dots in it. So that I don't think I can see it on my yeah. thumb. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't keep a scar from mine. Staple is a deadly I, weapon. I, I sliced my finger open with a like an, a tool we were using in art class once, and I still have that scar. Neat. Hmm, that's fun. I sliced my arm open with a box cutter in while in work. Jeez. This sounds like a suicide setup, doesn't it? But it really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, the scar for that looks cool, but uh, yeah, I was just opening boxes and I slit, and then I saw blood dripping, and I was like, "Wait, what?" And that's how like shallow the wound was. I couldn't even feel it. Um, anyway... Yeah, so you, you couldn't feel it because you cut your arm off. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. Terrifying. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, another thing he's, uh, Echo says is um, if I'd been with you guys that day, things might have been different. Um, just like, oh man. I don't think so. You were a little cherub. You probably would have been. Oh, well, you might have died too. Vi <laughs> says that to him. Yeah, I think Vi says that. You, you uh, probably would have been a ghost, a spooky ghost puppet. <laughs> ghost ball. Um, he shows her the mural in response to her saying, "I know my sister. I can reach her." And I think what he's trying to show her is that the people in the mural are dead <laughs> and gone, and Powder's one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and he says, uh, your sister works with him not because she has to, but because she wants to. I'm sorry, but that's who she is now. It's not easy for Vi to hear, I don't think. Nope. I don't think it's easy for Echo she certainly to say, doesn't we'll see later. She certainly but... doesn't even consider it. Um, yeah, then we get a pretty... There's so many good scenes in this. Uh, the We're at the bridge. And it would appear that Victor has been held, and uh, Jace comes personally, and he's like, "What the fuck are you doing? Do you know how bad it looks for me to set this bridge shit and then have my own partner break it?" And Victor is literally like, "I, I like, you ordered this? Like that's it's not even about apologizing or trying to explain. You just like, you ordered this? Like what the fuck? Yeah, why, why would you do that, you dumbass?" Um, yeah, and he says, uh, "There are people down there hell bent on destroying us." And then um, he's like, yeah, I, I went there for help. And he's like, help from, from the Undercity, the person you went to to help? They're dangerous. And he just goes, I'm from the Undercity. I'm, yeah. It's like, and Ooh. then he gets up and he's like, I'm the fuck out of here now. Some real cringe posting from Jace. Yeah. Like, uh... <laughs> You're going to lose subscriber, man. <laughs> the victor unsubscribes. Uh, yeah, great, great little moment. That's probably going to make Jace think maybe a little harder on. It's like, damn, that's true. Whoops. Um, you can see how he would have arrived at this point. His experience yeah. with the Indercity has been getting bombed and attacked. Like, it's easy to I'm fall really... into the traps of prejudice like this, I suppose. The impact on his character, I think, is most clear when, like, just after he stands there and says, I have posted cringe, and then looks yeah. down at his feet. Yeah, yeah. he knows. Like, he knows the cringe. No, I'm getting gracious. It shows them it. It's like it, it, it's easy to it's easy to fall into traps like that. Yeah, Victor quote tweets I'm... him, and it just sets off a chain reaction. <laughs> he quote tweets him. This ain't it, chief. Yes, <laughs> ain't it, chief. Quote tweets him. Is this you? This you? This you? Yeah. Uh, uh, Victor was looking at his, his cane there for a second, noticing that yeah, there was the cane there right at the bottom. That used to be his cane. Did you see that? He was looking at it. Oh wait, you mean at the near the beginning of the scene? At the beginning of the scene, yeah. He's yeah, looking yeah. at his uh 
crutch and then sort of looking at the cane part. You mean that, like the it. handle almost for the... Yeah, well, I think it's scene. thinking about that used to be cane that I would just hold. Now look at it. Yeah, well, like, that's half of it. The other half is probably that he knows that there's shimmer in that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's all, it's, it's, I, I, yeah, I think it's working on both them levels there. And uh, Jay says, did you get help? And he said, no. He said, nature is resistant to this sort of tampering. Just like, hmm, mm. that's not what happened in that scene. <laughs> You're a lawyer. That'd be really you, funny though, wouldn't it? If so it was like, so that's actually not what uh, Singe did. He actually did provide help. So that is a plot hole. <laughs> that's what <laughs> your critiques are like, Morla. Oh no! <laughs> I'm melting. Uh, yeah, and then Jay sees um, they, some some people throw a Molotov, which is just obviously bolstering the um, his perspective, which is gonna get super bolstered uh, in the beginning mm -hmm. of next episode. We'll get there. Um. But yeah, I really feel like it's this is the point in the show where it's just like, fuck, Jace, your life sucks right now. You've got so many... He's probably the most powerful person in this world, at least as we know it, like within Piltover and Zorn. But like, that's part of the problem. He can make significant changes, but he's just not sure which ones to commit to. As well as mm -hmm. like, he was fully invested in this mm -hmm. thanks to his relationship with Victor, who's struggling to... Like, those, those two's relationships getting stressed as well. And then it's like, this whole bridge thing, was that even a good idea? Like, I'm not 100% sure. And then the, the stress of what he did to Heimerdinger. A lot of people like to say that Jace is kind of meh. Um, I question those They'd people. They'd be wrong to say that. <laughs> He's got a lot going I only on. said that at the beginning. Wrong people say it. What was that you just said, Jay? I said it at the beginning, not at the end. Jace is a really Fine. interesting story of an idealistic person trying to do good. True. And then we get the, the I just remember all the villain scene. Basically all the villains meet up and have a chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was totally expecting I'd at least recognize one of them from the game, but I was like, nope. I was expecting a few different people here, uh, from like either the game or the card game. Yeah, it's just a, such a prime scene. It's like, oh we can just put like characters from the game in there. Like people are gonna like that, but, but no, they no. didn't do it. They do their own stuff? Disgusting. Gross. Um, Put them right, back in so the box. You get, uh, they basically make it clear that things are getting fucked up by that bridge situation. Uh, everyone's checked when they go over. It's really hard to do trading. And um, Silco is like, Jinx will take care of it. And they're like, yeah, well, what we've heard, Jinx is fucking off her leash right now. And uh, you're like, you're losing control, basically. And then their little air conditioning machine stops. And it's like, oh. Oh, maybe it's system. a little too cold in here. Maybe they want to warm oh, up. Yeah, warm up. Well, nice. Considerate um, of, of them. That's nice. nice yeah. And then uh, Savika's fucking around with a tank in the back and starts releasing a gas. And they're all stuck. Oh, no. Bleh. And he tosses out some uh, some gas masks. And they all pop them right on while giving another just Silco level quality speech about how he's the one. As much as we've heard a lot about how much he destroyed the lanes with Shimmer. Uh, he's the one that apparently made the air much more breathable. Um, yeah. He's the one that he's he's brought it higher than it previously was in many ways, and he's frustrated. I love the, the library's like you've grown complacent and fat like under these good times. <laughs> the sun. And he's you've forgotten. The powers of left. It's uh, it's just oh. it reflects a lot of things, right? A lot of things. Where a bunch of people that were helped by Silco are now like, you're not good enough. He's like, how the fuck did you even get here? Remember that. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, uh, there's a question of how is Silco immune to the to the, the gas? Because like even Savika puts on a mask. All I've got well, for that is that he's got an infection from the thing from the from the water. I think, I think it's fairly important. The water it says, like, it says you don't recognize it. This isn't. I don't think this is actually gas. This is the air they had to breathe before, which I guess you could call that like gas. But that seems to be his Im implication there. Yeah, that the Silco was, so Silco was there at the time that there. this was the air at the time. It this could be. Yeah, it could just be with. that he's used to it. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's the point uh, Finn is trying to make when he, you know, doesn't go for a mask because Silco doesn't have a mask. Mm. 
Yeah. It's, it's oh yeah, he's he's definitely trying to come across as though this doesn't bother him either, but it's clear yeah. that yeah. he can't handle it. Fucking Atagi was he collapses like and he starts begging <laughs> with his hands. The <laughs> uh, yeah, and Silco knows that he's not going to be able to put up with it for very long. And he's just and and like the the mask is ready to be taken, but uh -oh. Finn doesn't want to have to take it. Yeah. Uh oh. What? Uh, I got robots. Is that me or? That seems, seems to be you, buddy. To seems to be fine on my end. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Robotin. I might have something's up. Hello. I don't know. Hello. 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 Let me check on something. No, yeah, still on the green. Ooh, I don't know. Does anyone hear I think me? No, I think no Rax is having the thing again. Oh, bye, Rax. He's just going to talk as long as he wants to, <laughs> he right? He does that That's all the time. We'll normally. go to Singapore, see if that does anything. <laughs> Welcome to Singapore. Hey, Welcome. Singapore. Hey, we're back. I was okay, wondering so, if it was just me or not. So that wasn't just me then? Well, no, it's I guess not, horrible for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh no! Oh wait, so no, someone, no, it's fine. It, it calmed itself. Yeah, it's uh, someone in chat said that um, Silco does eventually breathe from the mask. It's like I only—I don't even know that he only does that once, and uh, it seems more so like a look. I can breathe with this. You can't because you're on the yeah. floor Ooh, struggling. Ooh, this is nice. Ooh, that was a yeah. Gesture. That's what I assumed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he puts them all in their place, and it's a great fucking performance. And it's like one of the ten problems Silco's got to solve. <laughs> it's just like mm -hmm. the life of Silco. It's a fun Good one. meeting. I got Before yeah, no. uh, the chat went all tis me, I was curious because I, I don't think I was, I was. I think I was paying attention to all the other things that were happening. But our, our boss man, our, our Raiden boss man guy, um, with the with the mechanical lower jaw, does it ever animate? Does it ever change, or does it is it always a static piece of metal? When it's it, it always a static piece of metal. Also, I, I, also, his name is Finn, apparently. Yeah. I believe he yeah. is also a Finn. cameo, but I can't remember for who. Like, um, I, don't think it, and... I don't think it moves as an object itself, but obviously it moves with his jaw, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, but it all keeps together. Yeah, I was, I was curious yeah, because one, that's, one. in games, that's a thing that happens a lot. If you have armor skins and whatnot, it stretches and bends around the character. Yeah, the, like, it's a, like it's a piece of flesh. It's elastic, yeah. Yeah. Um, something cool that I don't know if anybody else noticed. The before and after of the background in this scene. Check it out. Oh, the things Plants are, are dead. Wilted. Plants are withered. Come on. That's cool. That's, quick. That's really cool. Also, <laughs> I think... I don't know if it's on the... I think on the top left, those plants look a lot like uh, pitcher plants and they lure in tiny critters insects and then they get stuck in the sap and then the plant eats them it's a carnivorous plant neat so i don't know if that's uh supposed to mean anything in particular but i don't know um so is it the gas acts very fast it's um we just have to assume that it's directly poisonous more so to like flowers and shit um and it and it just sucks to breathe as well <laughs> for the people. Did I get the right thing on the screen? There we go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Silco says we came from a world where there was never enough to go around, and that is why we fight. Uh, very annoyed with these people, understandably. So moving on. Get to visit. Can you people get off my ass? I'm trying yeah. to deal with Bill Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. Uh, Mel's little friend is talking to her about some stuff. They mention um, this threat from the Undercity makes us look vulnerable. And then Mel says, it's too soon. Jace isn't ready. And I assume she's referring to we got to push him a little further before pulling the old let's make weapons card, which they're going to try soon. Um, because Jace is, has been against it for a long time, but we're, we're getting there in terms of convincing him, and that's what I think Mel's goal is, but during the scene, she's also handed a letter with the Noxus symbol on it. Spooky. Who knows what that'll do? Mm. Um, 
Yeah, I actually like this interaction, right? So this this clearly a kid hands uh, Caitlyn a bowl of water after she's just been had a mask taken off and her binds kind of removed, and she uh she like looks at the kid, then she like pushes on a frustrated look and hits it out of his hand. Like that's what I'm supposed to do, I think, because this is rude. Yeah. Like, because it's like Echo hates. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, that I could imagine Echo just being like, oh, "Fucking hell, <laughs> it's just water." <laughs> Piltover people, yeah. pilties, <laughs> water. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just a matter of vibing. Like, it's chill. We're chill. Let's go have a little walk around. <laughs> Stop everyone being oh, swaying. Oh, oh, Mahler, do you do you like the kids' fingernails? Wait. Oh yeah, you just, you're, you're right. I did I did spot it. But I didn't think to mention it. Um. Wait, what about fingernails? Now I'm curious. Hang on, I'll, I'll show it with. Yeah, he's got red and black. Oh, hang on. Like that orange. Yeah. Deck orange. Okay. Yeah, they look. Oh, because I guess looking at here, I thought it was orange and black, like Halloween, which is a. That's thing why I hesitated. Like, I was black. like, <laughs> it might <Yeah>. be. <laughs> it could be like a faded out red or an orange. I think I think it probably is an orange actually. Kid's just going trick or yeah, treat. Orange, just slaps yeah. it out of his hand. Well, he's wearing a mask <laughs> too. It's orange. Yeah, he's got. Well, he's, oh, yeah, it's all coming together. Full on Halloween. Um, so then we get a scene of Silco almost like depressingly is setting up his device. And it, like, I always interpreted that as him being like, oh, I wish Jinx would do it for me, but okay. <laughs> but turns out she is. No, not like this. No. Yeah, she is here. And it's like, oh, shit. Because he's been looking, mm -hmm. waiting for her to talk to him for a while. She's very aggressive and unhappy right now, and obviously he's going to be a little bit worried about dealing with this, but it's just so funny that he just dealt with all of his fucking lieutenants being dicks. <laughs> now he's got to do this. It's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> let's so do it. Things to deal with. Um, so, yeah, this... Uh, we can really do to summarize the scene is just uh, Silco reassures her that he didn't lie, he didn't know. And that uh, he tells her very explicitly, Vi is not here for you, she's here for the gemstone, for sure. And that uh, we need to finish, I think he says we need to finish the weapon in this scene. You need to finish the weapon, yep. Um, which does pretty much convince her. But there is just an expression, funny enough, this ended up in the uh, one of the Boba Fett videos, just the expression change in this bit where uh, she's she seems sure of her position. And that she's kind of enjoying causing him pain because she's she's certain of what he's done. But he does do a really good job of convincing her that she's mistaken, which uh, is so unfortunate because, like, a lot of what he's saying is true, but a lot of it isn't. Um, yeah. and it's just what's that added to it? Being manipulated. Yeah, her her psyche falling apart because she really doesn't know who to trust. Um. But yeah, uh, how her face changes here from, like, almost rage. And uh, he starts talking about, do you remember what happened? How I found you? I took you in? Where no one else was? And yeah, it, it, she just drops from anger to just sad. And mm -hmm. contemplative, I guess. And uh, they do a fucking excellent job of making it clear that's exactly what's happening. All those eyebrow movements and eye movements. The little, little blink. the little blinkies, like she's trying to hold back tears. Yeah. With the With little all the blinkies. Uh, distortion effect from her mind being what it is. Um. Yeah, she's having a lot of trouble here. Uh. And that's the thing. Um. If you remove Vi, it's like who's the next person that gets straight to, sort of a Jinx's. Core is like Silco is next up because he's essentially been her yep. dad. So she's not um able to stay as confident with this, and obviously she's uh she's questioning it. And then I think the scene's way of saying she believes but, Silco is that she she does the uh, injection. But then runs off. Yeah, she's still struggling, but she does take what he said to be true essentially. Which is not good, in a sense of, as a viewer, you're like, great, now she thinks that Vi really doesn't care about her. But, um, not enough evidence yet, surely, so, you know, maybe something good can still happen. Yeah, I think he says, she and the Enforcer are back for the stone, not for you. I am your family, not them, and I need you now more than ever. Hmm. 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 <laughs> 
Rives, what did you think of Jinx at this point? Like, what were you thinking in terms of where she'd be heading? Where she'd be heading? I don't know. At this, at point, this point, I'm still... At this point, I just, I don't know. I could see it going either way. But, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if it went either way, because either way would be pretty well justified. She is there, definitely struggling to figure out what she wants and what she needs to do. Yeah, it's, it's not like I was... It's not like, for instance, I was watching a Roland Emmerich film. And I was, I was, I was, I knew in my head everything that would happen just because I just knew what he does. And I was like, you're going to die. You're going to do that. That's going to come back later to be this. Da, 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 da. And you're just kind of calling it all out and watching it all fall into place eventually, but not in like the clever, oh, they're setting this thing up. So this is going to happen. It's just more of those eye rolly kinds of, oh, you're just following yeah, your I've own seen this formula shit checklist. You're just following yeah. all the beats regardless of whether it makes sense to do that. Yeah, but here it was, it, safe. it was definitely an yeah. aspect of we could go multiple ways and both are uh, pretty well informed. So uh, we, we just don't know. Just don't know. Um, so yeah, we, we got a pretty cool scene with Caitlyn getting introduced to the Sanctuary. And obviously um, she's not quite going to swallow everything that uh, is being put out there. I should, I could have put that better. Um, about the Sorry, state of the world because she has a very <laughs> different perspective. For example, uh, Echo is talking about how the Silco pays in forces to hunt us, and then Caitlin is like, "That's not true." And even we know it's like, "Well, I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know." But of course, she's an enforcer, so she's like, "What the fuck?" She's just not aware of any of the corruption. Um, and she says, "If the enforcers have become more aggressive, then the gemstone is why." And uh, Echo says, yeah, but we can beat Silco with the gemstone. And she says, that's just going to make things worse. She says, if you keep this, the cycle of violence will never stop. The city needs healing more than I ever realized. Let me help you. Which, uh, it's pretty fundamental for the whole show, IMO. Yeah. Fundamental for the character as well. Yeah, this is big for for Caitlyn. She's realized she is, very thoroughly now that stuff's going on. She's fully out of the sheltered life that she was trying to leave. And like, yeah, she's seen the real world that people tried to keep from her, and just, oh man, is it fucked? And I think when she gives that sort of speech about understanding that the city needs help and that that's her only goal, you have Vi in the background staring at her quite longingly. Uh, I think. At first, she's kind of with Echo in the gosh darn topsiders. Then as Caitlin talks, she starts getting a little bit like, oh wait, hmm. And then she has a face where I'm trying to get to it. But these things, to me, are little little bits from the show being like, hey, uh, what might be going on here? Just saying. And I was like, I'm like what? And it's like, also, nothing, nothing at all. I also really like that Echo just, not just hands it over. It's like, oh yeah, okay, I trust you now. Because that would already break his character. We know it for as of now. Mm. Just like, okay, you make a good point, but I'm coming with you, and I hand it over because I don't fully trust you yet. Yeah, he, uh, it's satisfying because it feels like that's something that he would demand, and there's benefits Absolutely. to it. Um. So yeah, they're heading over to Piltover. Great. Yay. Vi a greater degree of respect for Caitlyn even now. Vi doesn't want peace, especially not with Silco. Vi wants to kill Silco. So no, she wants everyone to be better off in the Undercity. She definitely wants to kill Silco herself, more than likely. But she doesn't want... If you remember episode 2, she learned all about, like, how ultimately a big war is definitely not what we want. We just want to get rid of Silco. Uh, so she's very much happy that Caitlyn's concluded that it's true that everyone here needs help, and it should be Piltover's responsibility to do something about it. Um, and then we go over to Victor and Mel and Jace. Just having a chat about this, uh, I guess, grenade that was given by uh, Silco to Marcus to Jace with the commentary that it's from the Firelights, not, the, uh, not Silco's goons. And uh, I think even Victor says, like, it's, um, it's like, he's, like, impressed with it, even though it's really crude, right? I can't remember what he says exactly. But, um, Considering it's inspired. Crude, but inspired, yeah, yeah. Mm. 
And then Mel is like, is this evidence that they could weaponize Hextech? And Victor's like, ah, I don't know about that. Like, this is a bit of a, this is a, bit of a leap. I think he even says it's a leap. Um, but of course, this is... Mel is cranking it up. Uh, the pressure from what she's she wants, which is to encourage the creation of weapons. And she says, if we assume the worst and they've made a weapon with a gemstone, we need to prepare countermeasures. And, no. uh... I think Victor's just, like, freaking out already. He's just like, absolutely not. Yeah, he mm -hmm. knows immediately what Jace is thinking. He's like, no, no, <laughs> no fuck stop off. it. Yeah, and I think she says Heimerdinger's inaction is what brought us here. And um, if you just keep an eye on Victor throughout this scene, he starts not talking as much and just fucking frowning because he knows that his input isn't valued, essentially. Which, in, in a sense, is partially his own fault. He's uh, avoided getting involved with any of this stuff, but he also knows that um, this is... I, th I think he can start to detect a little bit that Jace is being manipulated. Um, and he's also worried about what decision he might end up making, because uh, as she leaves, she says the decision is yours to Jace, and Victor's just right there, doing this all about the Hextech, and he's just like, hmm. Yeah, and he says, uh, we're scientists, not soldiers. Hextech is supposed to improve lives, not take them. Improve. Indeed. Chase says one of those lines and Victor gives one of those responses that I think you like, Mr. Moore. Like, we don't have a choice, followed by there's always a choice. Yeah, he says, <laughs> we may not have a choice. <laughs> there is always a choice. True, Victor. Absolute Chad. What he says just after disarming that grenade, what did they mean by this, do you think? Uh, oh, you mean, cause, yeah, so, probably for the sake of people listening, Victor accidentally triggers the, the grenade and it starts to go off, but he disables it right before it explodes. Um, I don't... How convenient. Do we need to explain what that represents when he says there's always a choice? Disabling the bomb <laughs> before it explodes? <laughs> you can... There are things you can choose to there's do. There's a choice, but you feel compelled to do some things. Uh... Yeah, I like it. Um... Where are we? Oh yeah, so Jace says he needs to think about it, and he ends up going to his um, his home that we saw in the first three episodes. And uh, I think he speaks to his mum. I can't remember if that's... Yeah, I think he says to her, I'm worried I have to do something I never thought I would. Uh, mm. And I think the way the shot works... Oh yeah, because this is kind of a montage sequence, actually. We get a lot of different things happening. So Echo is leaving the sanctuary with Caitlyn and Vi. And Victor is carving uh, runes into his, not only his skin, but his, um, his brace as well. Which is interesting to think about. Uh, that whatever he's trying to do, he wants it to apply to not only his actual body, but the, uh, the metal that's supporting it, you know? Or yep, maybe yep. he doesn't at this point. Well, here's... I was thinking, he's had that on for so long now, he almost subconsciously just imagines it as a part of him. I mean, Well, that, and he probably just doesn't want to etch it into his own skin. Well, Does no, he, he already put it in his own skin? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, why I is. assume it was just... That's okay, just, that's I thought the skin came out. I, I thought he did it in the skin later. He, um, I think it's just the leg for this one. He does it for his whole body next time. Uh, or at least he puts it on his torso as well. Anyway, yeah, he's he's prepping that up, and uh, I think we see Heimerdinger is in a little cloak, and he's getting on a little boat. And you're just like, oh, jeez, what are you up to, Mr. Heimerdinger? We haven't seen him since he was fired. Floats yeah. and boats. Cloats and boats. And we, uh... Gotta get me some cloaks and boats. We haven't seen a lot of these little, little flies. I haven't seen them a lot. Seen them around. Hmm. Intriguing. Hmm. I wonder what that means. Hmm. Um, and then we get the bridge. The bridge scene begins with 14 minutes of the episode still left, because a lot of stuff happens on this bridge. Oh yeah. And, uh, Jinx is on it. So, she's keeping an eye on everything, and still figuring out exactly where she stands on this whole Vi situation. Um, you might wonder, why is she here? I imagine that those flies were a form of Keeping an eye on people slash being around, uh, Jinx has probably uh, managed to find uh, Echo slash Vi slash Caitlyn's little group, and she's following them. 
And now she's on the bridge, because that's exactly where they're heading, and she's, um, figuring some stuff out. Doesn't quite know what she's doing about anything just yet. Meanwhile, Victor injects his leg with the shimmer that, uh, Singed gave him. And Jace makes a conclusion. And, uh, I think they give away what it is with showing a little page in his book from when he was a little kid. Yeah. Everyone who played the game was like, ooh! Literally, yes. <laughs> Everyone is desperate to see him hold a fucking hammer if they've played the game. They're like, please <laughs> give him a hammer. <laughs> I want hammer time! Give it to me! Rumble isn't in this show. Hammer, hammer Zyme? Hammer Zyme. I need Hammer Zyme. Um, but yeah, Heimerding is crossed. Now he's at the Undercity. Don't exactly know what he's up to just yet. Wow. Calling it the Undercity just because he's there. They call it the Undercity. <laughs> it's it's, it's their word, you know? It's always excuses. It's their Honestly, word. Yeah. That's what makes it okay, is it? Yeah, that's what makes it okay. Oh, I can use their word now? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Victor puts his hand on the core and he goes... And then... We don't know what's happening, and I can pretty much yeah. guarantee that everyone who played the game at this point thought that the next time they'd see him, he would look <laughs> entirely different. Uh, but he very, doesn't. very different, yeah. Not just yet. And you also see the the core already having like goopy stuff in between now as well. Yeah. While he's touching it, it's like ew. Why is this looking like that? It's gross. Um, yeah. Halfway ish across the bridge, Vi decides that uh she shouldn't leave the Undercity. She should. Uh, work on powder, see if she can save her. She thinks she can break through. Those two should go and sort out the gemstone going to Piltover. Um, and then uh, her and Caitlyn hug, and Jinx sees it, and it's just, it's kind of funny because she says to herself exactly what I would try to tell her to calm her down. And she says, it's just a goodbye hug. It's like, yeah, it is. It is yeah. just a goodbye hug. They're fine. It's chill. Don't worry about it. It doesn't mean anything. But um, I feel like this I'm image summarizes. Like, yeah, well, yeah, look at that. The... Phantom Shadow Milo's like, oh, I think it'll take her away. That's a great fucking image. Yeah. I don't know if we've been explicit on it yet, but I think it's very clear what Milo represents at this point. He is a manifestation of every self doubt she has ever had about yeah. anything she thinks. Yep. Because he never believed in her. He was always yep. doubting her. Once. It's always the one who's like, it's your fault. You jinx everything. You're mm -hmm. shit. Stay home. And for reference, <laughs> It's not that Jinx is worried they're lesbians. Jinx is worried that Caitlyn has replaced her. Uh, it's specific. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it My sister. No. They best not be fucking. Stink. Jinx has become She's a just stink. Just show better not get worried. You call this stinks? <laughs> stinks. Well, that's the only fucking outfit she wears. She probably Ew. smells terrible. <laughs> she just has multiple of the same oh, one. I Gosh. Like Homer. If the if the water you have to wash things in the Undercity is just that uh, that that glumpy water, then uh. <laughs> glumpy water. Uh, yeah, and she walks off, and she's like, "All right, then it's fine. It's chill. She's gone. They're, they're not even they're not even together anymore. It's totally fine." Um. So yeah, then she walks off. They're walking places, and they finally get up to the area where the the popo is at, and the big old spotlights are spread on him, and Marcus walks up, which is like, I don't know, if you've just been paying full attention, you're just like, oh fuck, what's he gonna decide to do? Mm. Yeah, it's like, uh oh. Basically, like, this is the thing, you've gotta realize at this point, the threat is on his daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you do? He's in between a rock and a hard place. I also... Undoubtedly. I like the way they have um, Caitlyn holding her ID. Mm-hmm. Kind of neat. The uh, because I I know a lot of people do it that way. Where they put that one finger behind and stuff. Just better. It's easier to project it, I think, or at least have a better hold. But yeah, sh and she's she says, which is helpful for her, but not for the situation. Uh, I have proof. Silk is behind it all. It's like uh, oh, no. the worst. <laughs> you think you think it's the best thing to say, but it's actually the worst thing to say. <laughs> oh no. no! It's one of them dramatic ironies. Yeah. And Marcus, you know, has them pull down their rifles, and you're like, okay. Because um, I actually thought that he would basically be like, 
I'm gonna have to take them in. Um, but I was wrong. Uh, and that's the thing, it could have really gone many ways, because Marcus is a character torn between many different things right now. Um, the detail I enjoy... Actually, we're almost there. Uh, Echo shows that they have the Gemstone, as proof. Which is not yep, good is for not Jinx pleased. that's watching right now, because that means they fucking stole it. Like, and that was seemingly all they were there yeah. for. That's that's her insecurities again. And Milo is getting a little bigger and closer, and yeah. she's uh, doing less to get rid of him. So you know, it's, that's building up. But um, yeah, what I like about this is Echo realizes the gun's coming, and his action is to close the gemstone container. Like, that's the one thing he gets to get done before the gunshot comes out. I just like, because Echo is fast, but he ain't that fast. Um, yeah. And yeah, it doesn't surprise me that he had protection uh, with what Echo gets up to every day. Yeah. He's a uh, busy guy. Yeah, so Marcus Fighting shoots a lot. Echo, uh, intention look to kill, and he pulls the, pushed the gun then on Caitlyn while grabbing the gemstone. And I imagine that he's just, he's stressed out, probably thinking about how he's going to have to cover this up, but also, does he want to kill Caitlyn Kino, uh, Kiraman? That's... Yeah. That's probably not a good idea. <laughs> it's not even, well, I just it's think it's, it's more so about... Now. Yeah, but that having happened makes Vi sprint back yelling for Caitlyn. And, I heard a gunshot. <laughs> and what does that do for Jinx? You have Milo fucking becoming like this hulking shadow monster that's just yeah. getting bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger. <laughs> Really creepy. It's oh my god! I've never looked at it frame by frame like you're doing. It's like it's, oh, this honestly, is, <laughs> it's fantastic. Jinx, that's it. She's she's it's too much. And then she just says yeah. liar. It's like oh no, liar. Well, she <laughs> lives it a little differently kid. than Anakin, but you know, same sort of situation. That means that means worse than Anakin. Anything different than Anakin is worse, of course. Because well, that goes without saying. Perfect. Um, and yeah, no Marcus, I think, mind. says something like, you couldn't just leave it alone. Um, yeah. Which I think his is just face. standard for he's trying to make this her fault instead of his choice. Like, he glances back across to, like, the other enforcers there, and then in a in a hushed tone, I think he's still, like, concerned about what's going on here. It says, like, just, you can just leave it alone, dude? Like, because he doesn't want to do this. It's very abundantly clear on his face. Oh, yeah, we get that. Well, yeah, so anyway, Vi's running toward them, and then a, f a flock, I guess, of these little little butterfly Cloud. things come in. And it all seems Fire pretty like chill. Swarm. Right up until they pretty. land. And yeah, uh, just before they land on, one of them lands on Marcus's gun, the fucking, look at his face, trying to just bring up the courage to shoot her. Yeah, it's like I'm uh, the cool corrupt man. I can do it. I can do it. I um, can be the corrupt cool guy. But yes, all of these are explosives. Boom, 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 boom. And I already know. I'm gonna say that. I I will say real quick. I was very distracted with the the sights on his gun. Um, I've got them up. Rags commentary go. Uh, you have the you have a front post, which is what your eyes will be focused on because of your know, depth of field. Your eyes can really only focus on one sort of layer of thing at once. So when you're shooting a gun, you have your front post at the tip of the gun, and you have the the notches essentially in the back of different configurations. But you are focusing on your front sight, and you have your rear sights are a little bit blurry, and you'll have your target kind of be a little blurry. It's it it doesn't matter. It's just one of those like, oh, uh, why did they do it that way though? Is it just, why, why did they do it that way? <laughs> back sights are in the front, front sights are in the back. I maybe don't it's know. Been, maybe it's symbolic where it's like, oh, but is he like in a way aiming at himself with his decisions? Is he bringing about his own? <laughs> oh my it's, god! It's, it's, it's oh very deep and symbolic. It's, it's really something. <laughs> it's incredible, really. Um. Yeah, we'll get to uh, aiming with the wrong eye. Uh, it depends on which dominant eye you have. You're not necessarily people aren't necessarily left eye dominant, left eye dominant. It's it's generally going to be the case, but uh, plus you don't really have to aim at that distance. Well, also so, he's um he's, definitely not a he's got a bit of a mental he's not even right really now too. He's just around. like eh, no, yeah. please, I don't, I don't. What do yeah, I do? He doesn't. He doesn't really need to do much aiming. aiming. She's about a foot away. Um, 
Yeah. yeah, you don't have to aim at that distance. You can just point. But now all he's doing that is leads thinking. us into a criticism. That explosion takes off his whole arm. Meanwhile, Caitlin has a scratch on her leg. Um, a lot of people highlighted this as yeah. uh, one of the biggest pieces of plot armor. So what we have as references, we did this before, everybody. You saw us do it in episode mm -hmm. four. Yeah, it was four, right? Where we went super, super death. So <laughs> I love that frame. Uh, what have we got to work with here? It's like, well, we know that they do explosions that are, like I said, if if the best we can do is say from the tip of his gun to his shoulder, that's the range that's uh, lethal, and then outside of that is damaging. I would assume. I'm trying to get as mm -hmm. as autistic as possible here. It's it's uh, just make sure because nice. I think some people feel I'm not dotting my dotting my T's and crossing my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So. That goes off with the gun about a foot away from her, which means her head should have been blown off, correct? It's like, well, yes, if we believe she did not move. Um, we don't see her move, but is it possible she did? I guess, but I don't know. It's like she, what, what reaction she, could she you really possibly is... have for moving away, right? I know, yeah, because like, how would... he didn't even really know what that was, and it was, the, the face wasn't really facing her, so she might not have even seen the face to know when to move away. Well, but, so, so, really... what I'm, so my first goal here is to define, are we dealing with a plot hole or contrivance? Uh, I, I would say contrivance. I think because of the fact they don't hmm. show us what she's doing when this happens, then it's on us to be uh, a particular level of faith. As we, we can say... I don't, I don't know, I don't think that she'd have any reason to move, so she didn't move, so she should be dead. Or, I guess because of the fact that she survived, it means she must have moved. Everyone scattered, and there were explosions going off everywhere, so it's hard to like make heads or tails of this, but she does end up like positioned differently relative to Marcus. Do you mean once like, we see her again? Yeah, once we see her again, in the aftermath. Um, yeah, so that's... Is that because of a force of an explosion, or...? Well, so this is the thing, it's kind of hard to say. Like, if they showed that she hadn't moved at all when the explosion goes off, I'd be like, it's a hole, it's armor. But the fact that they don't show it means that, it's like, is there anything she could have done? And it's like, well, yeah, move backwards. And it's like, okay, but would she? And it's like, I don't know, I don't know that there's much reason for her to could do so have... when she doesn't know what these things are. Would she have, and, and could she gun trained have? On her. Could she have, yes. Would she have, hmm... Mm, well, I mean, it's, to, it's to any... mm. even I... so, there was explosions everywhere, and out of all the people who died, she didn't. About and the only just... person who survived. Yeah, there's like yeah. one guy who sort of survives, but you know we'll get to that. But again, it's just showing that Caitlin had specked into blast resistance. That's really mm -hmm. all there is. Well, see, because someone <laughs> would she to avoid being killed? Yeah, she doesn't know what these things are, so don't use that excuse. Yeah, There's just nothing. like a split, split seconds. Like, oh, this is starting to glow. And maybe she could have, like, I don't know, hunched over her or just threw herself on the ground. Unless but I don't know how helpful to... that is in that little amount of time. They start Unless exploding. You know, yeah. would probably yeah. Bro, put cold out. They, just you know? they start the exploding. So she would have, the first one. one that blows off is the fucking one in her face. <laughs> Why is she gonna react? Yeah. To yeah. The yeah. Explosion yeah. would have warned her that that was danger. <laughs> Unless she, she has Jinx reaction speed time, then I I don't know. If, even yeah. then, she'd be fucking dead. Then the even fire then. will wake us. <laughs> so, I'm willing to concede 100. percent This is plot armor. I just don't know the degree to which it is. Uh, it's. A little bit I difficult. think it's a lot of plot armor. Yeah, she's already ex survived one explosion, and then she just ex survives another one. This one is, yeah, this one is probably the biggest in the show, as far as I know. Um, well, we'll see. We'll go forward. But, but um, is that yeah, is that we'll settled? Does anyone else this have one, anything? Yeah, yeah this is big one. Definitely a big one. She just survived another explosion. And I think the because solution for that is literally just one shot of her going, <gasps> and then she ducks. And then I'd be like, I guess she lucked out in that there was no flies close enough at that point. I yeah, have the have, have them make a ticking a sound that she hears. That's it. Yeah. Um, it. Something. Yeah. yeah, something. Something like a ticking well, sound them, or a visible have reaction. Associate, then have um, her associate them with Jinx in a way that other people won't be able to quickly enough. Well, uh, one of them she's... has the the colors, like the crayon shit on it. I think that would be enough for her to go. Oh shit! As long as yeah. we set up that she knows that, but. As Theo said, look at the look at these positions when we come back to him. He's been blown back and his arms off. She's like 
over there. And it's just like, okay. Not quite sure how that ended wait, up happening. Wait, that's actually... <laughs> that is, no, look at that. This actually makes it worse because she's closer to him now. <laughs> that's what I mean. I don't really get how this ended up yeah. happening. Yeah, how did you get... Mm, so yeah, this I don't know. A lot better. Face to face. I, I would have, um, I would have had her probably take a bit more damage in this scene as well. Than, yeah, because she does end up with some shrapnel in her leg. But I think we need a little bit more than that to sell that she, you know, this was a brush with death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it wasn't shrapnel that took off his arm. I don't think it would have had to have no, been it's... like just explosive force or something. And then yeah. explosive yeah. force is generally going to be directed and just out. It's it's a very mm, flumpy sort of. There's a couple of things you can tweak mm -hmm. to help fix this, but yeah, as it stands, big plot armor. Uh, mm -hmm, Caitlyn yeah. is still alive, everyone. And uh, Jinx is on the way. Uh, Vi gets to Caitlyn first. Obviously, she was ahead, but uh, bad news right now. Tommy Even... Bethune, she held on the bridge. Right, which uh, I still don't intend to go back to until we've really finished the show. Um, yeah, but, uh, that as well. the, but yeah, she's humming what she was singing when she was a kid the same place, same time, and, I mean, the events this time being, she executes an enforcer as she's doing that. And she's feeling yeah. okay about it. Oh, yeah. You just, you gotta keep in mind and remember that her parents were executed by enforcers, so it's like, mm -hmm. this is something that's going on with her alongside everything she's else. She's not the victim in this scene anymore. I mean, th to fully explain Jinx, this is like, it would take a while. She's a very layered character, <laughs> there's so much shit going on with her. Um, yeah. yeah, here comes a conversation. We hear Marcus say, uh, tell my daughter, and then he's just dead. Yep. Link man. Like both. Impotent to the end. Wow, what a boring <laughs> character, right, guys? Right, right, right. That's so the bad. perfect way to finish him off. The problem well, so you... is that he's not likable. So, is it... <laughs> They are making reference to a video you will see if I have cover in the future. Anyway, uh, the... <laughs> My God. <laughs> so, but, you know, I like to do this whenever we have a character story end, but, like, yeah, that was Marcus. Um, what can you say about this in totality? It's that he's a, he's a man that probably represents more people than any other character in this fucking show, to be honest with you. Just constantly dealing with lots of choices to have to make, lots of prejudices and sort of defensiveness that's built up from just life itself and then getting into situations you really just don't know how to deal with um yeah poor guy all throughout was... he just shows like so much weakness like he he, he really yeah. does seem like he dealt with all of his problems in just the weakest way possible and it got him to this point so yeah. he um, is not a strong i want man. to provide some representation to a particular perspective a lot of people have he was a piece of shit who ruined the life of many people <laughs> through the decisions he made. It's true. Yes. Uh, we simply penis. understand a lot of the decisions he made were really hard for him to make, and he really wanted to be a better person. He just yeah. Wasn't. He wasn't just some. He wasn't just a selfish asshole dick who was doing it. You know, it. it there was. It's more than that. He That's wasn't a cartoon I really, villain. Really like him. Uh, no, he wasn't a cartoon. I really he was an actual villain. Characters that you don't see much is characters that try and fail to be better. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. like they really want to desperately to wish they were ups. a better person, but they just they don't have it in them with the they situation. Kept choosing all the wrong answers because he wanted to stop fully. Like he put like his badge down. Probably even wanted to retire or resign his post, but then. Well, so well, he was in there with his daughter. Yeah, like, oh, kid. fuck. Yeah, he's in too deep with so many different areas. And I think he wanted to be Grayson. Um, yeah, he yeah, exactly. He wanted to be Grayson. Grayson requires a lot of spine. She was a very strong character in that regard. And it's something that he would always aspire to but couldn't achieve. Marcus mm. is, a, is a, a very real person. He wants to be good, but that's really hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's it's very hard. hard. Yeah. At several it's... stages, being good means his daughter dies. Well, <laughs> like yeah, being, being good means significant loss, uh, personally. And it was just more often than not, the choice that he went with was like compromise principles, compromise, um, yeah, com yeah, compromise yourself essentially, uh, to continue existing and. And having the life that you built, the life has been built on a uh, shaky ground. And not one yeah. single time did he feel good about it. No, he never felt good about it. He's 
very believable as a character. And yeah, yeah he it's... died, and he died before his story was over because yeah, people die before their story is over. He doesn't get to have like and... um closure. Yeah. No, it's... because he dies without getting to finish. Closure. Because his his fucking story in this show is all about all of the things that he didn't do. That's what he's constantly concerned with: is all the stuff that he didn't do, and he doesn't even get to finish his last words to his daughter. Like, yep. Um, because and uh, this is interesting when you think about that video that we watched about fridging and stuff like that of like unceremonious deaths. This is a very unceremonious death. Um, people die unceremoniously. Remember the and last Marcus episode. Is <laughs> yeah. Marcus is one of them. He also saw good people getting killed. Having a spine didn't save them. I can understand his choice. That's kind of the idea that a lot of people yeah. will die because they have a spine, but that doesn't discourage them from having a spine. Mm -hmm. This conviction. Marcus didn't have a spine and he died anyway. And look at him there when he's. Yeah, it's like it's, yeah, like it's one of them. Like it's, it's all meaningless if you just go with the flow and try to just succeed. Uh, at the cost of anybody and everyone. You could tell his big moment for regret was Grayson's death. His decisions for mm. doing what he thought was gonna work out real well for him cost him the life of his I mentor. That, I think that looms over him constantly. Yeah. Because if That's he had really... a way out in that moment, if he had a way out, he would be out. But no, mm -hmm. he's in with Silco now. He's stuck here. Well, there there is a way out. It's just gonna oh, cost yeah. him a Fuck ton. Um, I, I guess no clean way out is what I yeah, mean. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so because of that, he just keeps going along with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just a string of of uh, bad choices put him in a in a in a bad spot. I imagine it only got worse for him because there will have been a window of time where he can leave, and like what happens is he's disgraced or you know. Otherwise, yeah, like it's not gonna cost his the life of his family, or it's or, yeah. You know, then he has a family, that. and now he has yeah. a family to lose, exactly. and now he has a job to lose, and now he has even more station to lose, and Silk yeah, is more and powerful course, and can access him more. Consequences broadly on the world as well. Yeah. Hmm. Marcus was a pretty interesting character. He is, and it's good to get a Marcus character. Completely. Because yeah, you almost forget uh, you they you exist. You, a lot of you almost characters. forget they exist. Even though I think he's much more common than the rest of them are in terms of real life people. Uh, yes. In terms, yeah, he's a very, yeah. he's a very Grayson, real person. That's the reason why Grayson is like so exemplary. It's because it's like to be a person like that takes a lot of work. Um, you, well, you're not, you're not born that way. I don't think. Yeah. I think uh... You got to earn it. Um, also, Mad End, the owl, is the one that made this uh, little avatar that I'm using right now. It's supposed to be inspired by some of the stuff that Jinx is going through in Arcane in general. <laughs> uh, Mel, you've got one as well, right? It was like a Vanda variant or something? Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Cool, cool, cool. That makes sense to me. I didn't think about it that way. Look at him trying to sneak off without me. Oh, muting. no, don't say that! <laughs> <laughs> Metal, we're gonna get banned. What the fuck? Um, okay, Say well. those things on your own channel, Metal. Oh yeah, my goodness. Fuck? Yeah. So, uh, we're getting real close now. Yeah, yeah boy. I think some of them could stay alive. Vi, um, Vi gets to Caitlyn. And, oh yeah, they have this, like, I generally get, like, fucking Terminator vibes with the shot they have here. Of Vi, uh, Jinx just getting closer and closer. It's just, like, fucking... What do you it, it, like the music that plays as well? It's just like she just represents death at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, bye gets to Caitlyn and picks her up while Jinx finds the uh, the gemstone container and she sees them together, which with everything else, it's, uh, it's pretty much enough to convince her that yeah. So what you told me was all shit. Got everybody else telling her that this is the case on her team, and then she sees this. And she's got her brain doing this shit! Yeah. Oh no! Look at her. She's laughing at you. I'm taking <laughs> Vi away again. Hehehe. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey Mel. Wow, still not back. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, and so she goes to shoot them. Uh, Vi pushes Caitlyn forward and herself back. 
to uh, dodge the, the shots coming in through the center. And then, nice and slowed down, Echo comes out of the mist. Yeah. Fucking uh, that's a little one. tiny, that's a little tiny bit of his fucking theme music playing when he shows up. Uh, he knocks the Gatling gun out of your hand on the first strike, and then the second strike he gets the uh, the gemstone container off here. Yep. And passes it to them and tells them to go, because the reality of this situation is that he is going to fight Jinx, and they've got to get out of here. Because, I mean, he probably is aware there's a chance he won't win this. Yeah. Mm. Uh, before we get into the scene, uh, the, the I've seen people complain that it's out of character for Vi to leave here. No, it's not. No. So, got to consider all the variables. Caitlyn now needs medical attention. Um, Jinx is losing her fucking mind to the point where she's just fired a gun at them, and uh, Vi needs to get this gemstone to pilt over to prevent a war from breaking out. And Echo yep. is saying to go. So you've got a lot it's to consider. Um, and you can tell that Vi doesn't want to leave. But she's got a responsibility right now. Yep. She's, there are um, a lot of lives at stake of her, her leaving right now. And thus begins the best scene in the show. So, um, I don't know. I feel like I... I, I like I said, I talk a lot. So uh, I, I feel like passing it over to Theo, right? I'm going to do it. I'm going to pass it over to you, you little nerd. Oh, <laughs> shit. Do you, do you want me to frame, oh, my frame it? No, do whatever you want. Explain it however you want. We're probably going to talk about this for a good shit. 20 minutes. <laughs> no pressure. Okay, the scene... Uh, I don't know if I mentioned yet, but yeah. Uh, Echo, a favorite character of mine from the video game. Uh, I, we, we've noted that the... Uh, the stopwatch thing he has is, in fact, like... That's a reference of sorts, but we can get into that more later on. And... Uh, the stylized thing they do here as like the fight begins is a really strong way of accomplishing a lot of things in, at once by representing that you know fan service to the people who understand what's going on from the game perspective and also of implying more of the history that echo and jinx had together uh back when they were really young because yeah it just shows them you know playing a game like they would have when they were kids something like this because powder was a good shot, so she would be she'd be doing things like this. Well, he she has probably to try learned and how her. to shoot from doing games like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he has to reach her before she lands a paintball on him, and then, of course, constantly like intercutting between that and the present. Uh, it's a really effective way of showing contrast, even under the lens of the music, which is, uh, how do I describe it? Like, it's very fun. Um, I guess. Kanye West uh, power. <laughs> sure. Hmm. It, it's it's very fun. The music is having. Tell me, it doesn't fun sound like it. Kanye West power. Sorry, I just. I don't know the song, so I can't. <laughs> um, what else to say? Like, how how far forward am I good to go? Because the thing I'm most interested in talking about is the contrast. You're welcome to go nuts. Okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do this when we hit the end. I'm going to have a speech that lasts like fucking 10 minutes or some shit, because there's a sure. lot I have to say. <laughs> so I'm letting other people so, do it too. <laughs> the the most fantastic thing in the scene for me, uh, from like a writing perspective, is the contrast I mentioned, because yep. the musical section is really fun. It's having a lot of fun, and it's indulging in the fact that this is champion combat, and we haven't got champion combat anywhere in the show before. Both of these characters are in the game. They look roughly like they do in the game. One of them is missing a piece of their equipment from the game, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're making a big thing out of it while also showing you flashes of their past to you know allude to that side of things while also uh, doing it in a really, really visually interesting way with the music going and everything to make it a really cool audio visual experience. And then they bring it back when Kid Echo throws his stopwatch to the ground and it breaks, and we rewind back, which is alluding to the time travel thing he has going on later on in the game, which is, that's a really cool way of doing that, and I'm glad that they did. And the actual fight, as things proceed in the show, as opposed to in, like, flashback dreamland, is, <laughs> like, it's not pleasant. It's not, it's no, they're not having fun with it anymore. 
it is it is a somber, quick, brutal, violent experience where it's very faithfully portrayed as things should be. If he gets to her before she can land a shot on him, like just look at the difference in their builds. Fight's He's over. got a weapon. It the fight's over, and it is very brutal when he does. Well, yeah, there's there's like, a reality of if she hits him he's going to die from blood loss and if he gets to her yeah. he's going to have to beat her to death yeah exactly he's gonna have to beat her to death like that's fucked up considering especially as we've just been shown these were childhood friends and another cool interpretation i just remembered for the uh uh for the stylized section with the music going is uh well that's what's going on in echo's mind of course because he he initiates this by uh, starting to swing the stopwatch, which I think is to remind Jinx, because she seems to pick up on that, and yeah. nods along and gets into stance and everything. So, he's remembering how things went all those times in the context of trying to plan his moves now, like, how do I reach this person before I get shot? Because it's not a splatter of paint this time, it's, I'm going to die. Which is... And it's, it's worth starting nice up as well, thought. that she opens with the boy saviour, referencing his sanctuary and his efforts to try and uh, undo what Silco's done, which obviously those two have been at, like at each other's throats now for years, potentially. We don't have the context on that exactly, but she sees him as a pitiful attempt to try and improve the, like, Zorn, and he sees her as just this fucking psychopath that's killed several of his friends. And, like, <laughs> when she says that to insult him, he gets, like, annoyed but then he's just like, this reality that we're in, we're about to do the thing we used to do as kids, because he's probably thinking about them as kids all the time. Yeah. Um, and so, laughs. And I think that uh, it can be confusing for people when they first see this scene. Why the fuck are they smiling and laughing? What, is, what does this have to do with anything? And um, even she's confused for a second, and then she realizes, um, and she laughs too, because yeah... What an insane, absurd position to be in. We're about to play that kids game we used to play, but one of us this time is going to die. It's the grim absurdity of it. Look and how far like, we've come, look how different we are. Even just when they're like about to do it, like they are ready to go through with it, I don't think it really fully hit Echo, because again, by the time by the time he has won, like he's hit her over the head, he's stronger, he's able to beat her into the ground, not quite effort effortlessly, it's still like really scuffed and unpleasant on the eyes, but he is not ready to go all the way through with it when there's someone who looks like terrified and bloodied like underneath him. Yeah, and uh, lots of feels from this, child. but specifically the, uh, the, tr the transition from the clock moving back and forth, and then she turns into the younger version of herself. Um, it's like if you're not even seeing this coming at all, you're just like, oh man. Because of those mm -hmm. first three episodes, setting you right up for all this stuff to pay off that much better. It's like, yeah, remember? She's powder. The mention I always made of the show being willing to indulge in fan service, but then always bringing it back to something narratively and tonally appropriate. This is the scene, as well as a later one, uh, next episode, that's always on my mind. Because they do indulge in the fan service. They do give you a bit of fun of a, a champion battle, and they stylize it, and they really play it up as this big event. But then they bring it back to like the actual reality of the show, and they're very aware of what this actually means to everyone involved, and that it is not some big spectacular event. This sucks. It's impressive yeah. that the scene can be this fucking good, and we you don't even have to include how well it references the game. Like, there's so many people who will watch this, enjoy it, and understand exactly why it's so meaningful, but then people who've played the game are like, how did you just incorporate as Echo's fucking ultimate without even mechanically mm -hmm. have it work the same way as his actual ultimate. You simply referenced it in an incredibly meaningful storytelling way. What an excellent job. Specifically what I'm referring to is the fact that, as Theo's already brought up, he rewinds, but he doesn't actually. He's just remembering how their games had gone before, before starting it up. Yeah. But they frame it like it's a rewind. I wonder why they might be doing that. It's really fucking cool. Um, but yeah, the soundtrack is cut, and it's just the raw effects and sounds of the punching and the hitting and, and 
Um, it's pretty aggressive for a little bit, but then I think they both realize what's happening here that is pretty horrible. Mm. Brief moment there when he just, yeah, he sees clearly again because he's won. And, well, there's powder and her nose is With bloody. With her gray because... eyes like she had. Mm-hmm. That's powder. And it's just, it's just the worst. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I was thoroughly impressed by the scene when I first saw it. Never thought this yep. was coming. Yeah, it was good shit. It's good shit. And uh, again, just with expressions, you can tell we might we we like expressions over here because there's just so much <laughs> to talk about. What do these expressions mean? For instance, uh, after a little bit of staring, she like smiles at him and then releases the grenade. What do you think that means? Probably, like, appreciating the fact that he actually stopped punching her, because she knows that there's mm. still something there for both of them. Mm -hmm. But the, the reality think... is we're, we're on opposite fucking sides. Here comes the grenade. Yeah. Also, a small thing of, like, congrats, you win, dude. I yeah, guess. you really have grown. You've come so far. You've become the League of Legends. <laughs> 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 I th she pulls the pin on that grenade. Uh, just with how her mind is and has been recently, I think she was okay with the idea of dying now. Yes, and it's probably time for us to talk about that. Um, it's a big explosion when they zoom out. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone, this is usually the first example I see reference from everybody for plot armor. It's the, shouldn't both of them be dead? Um, should we get to that now or should we get to it once we find out the fate of both of them? I feel like it's uh, only one, after the one grenade. Fates. All right. Jeez. Maybe uh, come think. back to it when we yeah yeah I think that makes sense. Find out what happened to them. Yep. I want to I, well, mm -hmm. I want to point out as well that uh, Rags, you were pretty convinced that this meant they were both dead, right? Oh yeah, I w at the end of this episode, I was convinced that they were both dead. Yeah, same. I think you even Me said I, I hmm. You, yeah, you, I was convinced. I was. Yeah, you said that you were surprised because like, you had thought there's more story to end with Vi and Jinx, but that that's that's a death scene right yeah, there. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah, but so. this show is ready. This show will do that. So they're dead. I was I was convinced. I was like, I there wasn't a shadow of a doubt in my mind that they that 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 they were that they weren't dead. I was convinced of it completely, one hundred percent. I was shocked when well, I. I think, uh... Well, wait, one sec. I, Chad is rolling out all the defenses. We're not doing that yet. You gotta wait. We'll get there. I thought all right? we, we, that, yeah. we've, we've, got, <laughs> we've got the very same comments to make. We'll get there. It's not, you know, as this episode stands, we'd simply be speculating on the fact that they've died. We wouldn't have anything else on, to uh, say. On what Rag said, my thought was, Echo's definitely not dead. We just introduced him, and we're definitely... But, I, I think I was like, Jinx... Hmm. Would they really? I think there was that thought in my mind. But the fact that I was there like, hmm, would they? That's almost like a testament to the show because if it were a lot of other things, I'd be like, nah, nah, she's fine. <laughs> She'll be fine. Especially since they can make you think that way when these are like champions from the video exactly. game. Exactly, exactly. There'll felt... be another really strong example of that later on yes. in episode nine. Uh, I felt like... Uh, there's too much narrative to do between Vi and Jinx to kill her. I, I was pretty sure yeah. she wasn't going to die. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that is just, episode no, 7. No, when I say when we just introduced him, it's like we see Echo back again, full force like as a you know, active in the story well, dude, again I in this episode. I happen to follow the school of Theo on this one that, that we're not allowed to kill Echo until he at least actually uses his ultimate from the game. That's... <laughs> I feel narratively they're not going to kill him until that happens. No, I feel like because I didn't know anything about the game, so none of that even. No, of course, an aspect yeah, of my same. mind. I would be super upset if they had did because the way they use his time travel is very interesting because it's really grounded, and they're willing to indulge in the consequences of it. Yes, um... like I've, I've mentioned before, there's a, there's a short story for Echo that came out around the time of his release of him trying to save one of his friends who got shot by a pilty. Um, and he tries, I think, somewhere in the vicinity of 80 times, 80 separate rewinds, but he cannot reach the kid but to in 
an amount of time that lets him help them before they bleed out. So, and like, that's the, that's the premise of the comic, him just trying over and over and over again, but no matter how much time he has, it's just not enough. And that sounds like an arcane story already, doesn't it? Yep. So anyway, that'd be, we're on to episode, episode eight. eight. Can you believe it? Number Two episodes eight. done in three hours and 40 minutes. We're not, and it's not the worst. Nice. You know, we're doing right. Um, <laughs> so uh, we've got Mel as a kid in flashback mode. And she says uh, she learned from like a source. I can't remember what the source is, but the war is a failure of statecraft. Just an interesting quote to add to what we know about Mel. Um, and then her mum is there trying to teach her like uh, that a lot of people you you you're either a fox or a wolf in the your approach with um, I guess everything in life. And I assume the difference being shrewd and smart versus aggressive and domineering sort of thing. And she says you must learn to be both. Uh, mm. Which again, these scenes, just like with everything we know about these characters, whenever they get these scenes, you're like, oh, that does inform everything mm. that they're all about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she she's already excited to talk about how they're going to be manipulating the new monarch. She's like, we'll make her like agreeable, but still something that you know people will take orders from, whatever, and that we will be able to blah 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 with it. And then um, her mom was like, maybe you could be it, and she's like, oh shit. Just, uh, she's this young and she's already thinking about, like, political manipulation. It's just interesting to think about. Um, but there's a girl who's been captured, and her mom asks her what they should do with her. And she says, uh, strip her of all of her, like, possessions and just send her away. And then her mom says that if you do that, she'll come back one day. Or, like, eventually, and amassing a lot of people for, like, some form of a vengeance. Um, so it's better to kill her. And... For a moment there, Mel thinks that's not going to be the case until Imam pulls out what I actually thought was kind of like uh, Talon's weapons from the game. Uh, mm. I was wondering, is Talon Noxus? Do something else. Uh, yeah. Okay. He's, yeah, he's Noxus. He's associated with the Dakutu family. She chops her fucking head off and says a wolf <laughs> has no mercy. Which is interesting. Tilts as well. Yeah, it's with the head. They do that with uh, Echo's first reintroduction in episode 4 as he's falling with the uh, the boards, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, this may be, I guess, I don't want this to be controversial, but Mel's mum has a very good point here if we look from a perspective of history. Uh, when the symbol of the old regime exists, your problems are never over as a revolutionary that is or a yes. conquering force. So long as What's anyone... that? There's a, there's a surviving heir... There is a surviving, uh, you know, royal member. The bloodline still exists. There, you know, that's yeah. that's oh. that's not good for you if you've uh, you usurped them. It would seem that six different factions who are royalists have like rallied around them. Okay, cool. We beat we beat them back. Okay, they have a kid who survived, and then you know more factions later down the line have rallied around them, and it never stops so long as the old regime exists. Leave one wolf it's very alive and the Mach sheep in the rebellion in a way. That's what chat is saying. Apparently it's a quote. Yeah. Um but yeah, just they never they never take a chance not to have a pretty neat shot like this one. Mel has an opinion on violence. That is a very silly weapon. Which is one that would not be particularly well received in Noxus of all places. Yeah. Because not every Noxian is like a big punch person who, you know, war every all the time. It's great. Uh, but Noxus is about strength. And if you don't have the strength to do what will get you like the best result, then that's cringe. Yes. <laughs> that's Being the, weak that's, is that's the motto <laughs> that's written on their banners. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, we see the, the necklaces in the pool of blood and then it flashes to she's painted it. Uh, she's having a nightmare when she wakes up. So, a lot of this weighs on her mind. About a lot. Much like a lot of the scenes we end up seeing that are core to these characters, they, they define a lot about how they end up going forward in life, which is kind of just how humans work. Her <gasps> hair looks fantastic. Oh, <laughs> let me get a shot of that again. That's really, really good. Eh. good. 
trying to get this is it. probably like a big uh big key piece of information for telling us a lot about mel yeah. we, we could already glean plenty of it so far but the just getting the uh that uh that piece of information it's like whoo interesting this is an important episode for mel mel sneaks up on you yeah. uh in the show she goes yeah. from being what yeah. looks to be like a pretty thin secondary character to like oh she's like a full-on character okay i understand Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Interested to see what happens with Mel. Yes. Whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. Um. So Silco arrives at the bridge and he finds the body of Jinx and it's not looking good. She's like, there's splats of blood and loads of like, I guess dirt and stuff, and she's just unconscious. So, um, I guess we'll wait a little longer before we talk about it. Just a little longer. So there's a particular scene you all know I'm waiting Wait. for. Uh, and yeah, um, Caitlyn is getting taken to her house by Vi. Silco grabs Jinx and takes her somewhere. So, uh, Jace arrives at the bridge in the morning, sees all of the bodies, and I just, I remember seeing this and being like, oh shit, this is gonna, uh oh, he's gonna, mm, hammer time. Yeah. He's gonna hammer time. <laughs> Hemazyme. But yeah, like, you know, less jokily, what do you think his reaction's gonna be to all of these enforcer yeah. corpses? It's just like, yeah. He like, gets to the bridge, yeah. it's like blood Hi, everywhere. Corpses. Something I'm glad they actually had him do, because that's that's what a human does when they see that <laughs> sight. He does a big old vomito. Uh, Vomaroonies. <laughs> Poor guy. Nice that you stopped there while I was puking. I, f I, I <laughs> realized, like, I guess Jace. there's no real reason to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he does he does spot these I on the floor, um, which it just matches the uh, the grenades coloring. Them butterflies going on quite a journey. Those butterflies, haven't they? Also, that's um, in a sense it might be evidence to him of the um, the like perversion of Piltover tech. Because mm -hmm. it's small, but like that's what did it, and they were the little butterflies from uh, Progress Day, was where we first saw them. Yeah. Yep. Um, and yeah, Mel is not looking happy about this, and with everything we know about her at this point, it's hard to be sure of exactly what she's thinking. And uh, part of it, I think, is that yes, pro making weapons to make Piltover stronger and bigger, but also look what it's already done. This is what weapons do, yeah. A bit much to think about. Hmm. hmm. Anyway, we're over at Caitlin's house now. Vi's delivered her successfully. Um, I really like that Caitlin's mum bursts the door open and aims a gun right at her. It's great. <laughs> Stand your ground. <laughs> Stand your ground. <laughs> Intruder. Bum, 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 bum. Um. But yeah, uh, Caitlin goes to speak to her while Vi waits, because they're going to see about what happens next. Uh, but I don't know, yeah, look, for real though, just her using a gun just implies to me that's probably, it would have been a commonality for that house that the women knows how to fucking use guns, and that's why Caitlin's probably not only into it, but combine that with Grayson. Just uh, a pathway yeah. that seems perfectly reasonable for any girl growing up in a household like that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a yeah. And yeah, they um, she actually manages to convince her parents to uh, have Vi and Caitlin listened to on the council because her mum is a council member. So we shall see about that. Yay! Um, <gasps> next up, Singed is pulling something out of his face. Pretty weird, and gross, and I have no idea what it's a, what is, what is happening there. Uh, it looks like a bit of cloth or something. But, uh, I think it's. Uh, I, I think it's just he's just re, uh, is refreshing his bandages or renewing his bandages. It could be as simple as it a bandage money. on his face that's you know it, healed thing... into his wound, but uh, yeah, not sure exactly. Whatever it is, it's not pleasant. No, <laughs> no, he has a bit of a tortured existence. Um, but yeah, Silco bursts in the room and he's like, "Fucking help! Jinx is pretty much dead. Do something." And uh, I think one of the first things 
Singe says is, I must know, are you prepared to lose her? Which is a really great line, because Silco says, yeah. she won't die, Doctor, she can't. Which is another yeah. way of saying, no, I'm not prepared for her to no, die. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And so, uh, he says, Doesn't I understand. Think about the possibility. And then injects him. Like, I, I love the fact that it's not, a, none of it's explicit, it's all subtext. Like, a, different conversations are happening. So it's like, uh, so, mm -hmm. if you're not prepared to watch her fucking suffer and die, I can't do this. And you just said you're not, so I'm gonna knock you out, okay? Yes. Yep. I'll, I'll just get to work, bro, alright? Just take yeah, a like, nap, right? I'll, I'll this isn't gonna be in. fun to watch. And as he's fading yeah. into, uh, being unconscious, he hears oh. Singe say, I too once had a daughter. Mm. Yeah. Like, oh. Which is, huh. You did. Interesting. It's very interesting. I want to talk more about that at the, like, after the end. Well, we're, yeah. getting, we're, we're genuinely getting close. Up. What an adventure this has been. Yeah. <laughs> like... Do we want to talk about the plot uh, armor bridge stuff then? Um, we're the almost we to the to scene. Still missing Echo. We're almost yeah. to the scene. I, I want us to see where Echo is, and I want us to get to that, that moment yeah. with Jinx. Yeah. Right. Then we will have all of our tools. Um, but yeah, what you can see here is that uh, Savika's previous arm is on the table, and she's tinkering away at a new one. Um, and so, like, this is just a blatant confirmation that she's the one that actually builds and maintains these arms, then, I assume. Um, which is pretty neat. Makes sense. Really it's, maintains. It's, uh, yeah. At least maintains, yeah. Not, not necessarily, like, invents, but I don't know who they would argue is the inventor. It could be Jinx, I guess. Um, but I just, I think, at this point, we could assume it's her. That was my assumption, yeah. that That'd Jinx made it. I think it I assume that this is a thing that Jinx. exists in the world. Maybe that you can age. get these things in the world if if you find a skilled enough person. Man, is there mm -hmm. is there another like the, show yeah, that has like right body here. mods and that uh, no, done stop really it, well? Stop. No, that, was that wasn't. Really well. <laughs> <laughs> was, I think the thing that was popular about one like... of the council scenes was that uh, you know body modification and implants like this is something the Undercity is good at. Yes, we've seen how they've... ingenuous they are. And we've seen a couple of examples of them as well, including, but not limited to, Finn's jaw as he arrives mm. in this scene. And, uh... I could never tell if that was a body mod or if it was just, like, tech, cover. like, jewelry that he's sort of, yeah, got on, It kind of seems like, yeah, it kind of does seem like vanity piece. It could be, yeah. I think it's, I think it's I both. I want to say little I... column A, little column, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he does need a jaw, but, you know, if you've got it money, you want gold, it to look snazzy know? and nice, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Like, because you ain't hiding it, so you want to just be like, yeah, that's right, it's freaking amazing, and it's ornate, and it's golden brass, and... Imagine the conversation you need to have with the person who's given it to you. I need a replacement jaw, said with no jaw. You're right, then. <laughs> well, what he would do is... <laughs> this guy, he's done a lot of jaws, so he knows exactly. He speaks... He speaks... Well, he speaks one jaw. He speaks upper jaw. Yeah, he speaks jawless, yeah. <laughs> It's a jawless yeah, a place, this world. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, is this species, is he a Jawa? He can write it down. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> He's got, he, he doesn't write it down. He, no. He didn't write it down. He forgot to. All right. And he can't ask for a pen because, you know, can't really ask for anything. Don't worry, Rags. No, I he could be like, he could, that's not true. He could be like the arm in Cloverfield Paradox. Oh god, we watched that movie. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> I right. But you didn't that, expect so one of those that, um, references today. References that was recorded, to the right? Paradox. Or was it not? Did we watch that without not doing any fat movies, or did we just casually watch it? I can't remember anymore. So long ago, I don't want to remember. Anyway, the uh, I like this scene a whole bunch because it runs exactly as you'd expect it to in a reasonable way. She's tinkering with her arm. He walks up. And she detects almost immediately through just a couple of lines he has. He's like, "You're trying to convince me to fucking betray Silco. I'm not stupid. This is your this is your play." And then he's just like, "Well, yeah, Silco is treating you like shit. You 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 do basically everything in this operation. Like, what like what is the reason for you to remain loyal to Silco? Why?" And then I think he just kind of walks off, and she's just like. Eh. Cause Tell me why she the accepts thing. the offered light of her cigar thing, which uh, yeah, you know, I'm listening. Indicate. Definitely yeah. that vibe, yeah. Because it's it's the thing for Savika. She's Silco is kind of a twat to her. 
Um, yeah, she's not been having a great that. time lately. Uh, and the fact is, like, she felt the fun. same way about Vanda, that Vanda was making the wrong decisions. That's why she fucking betrayed him. And at this point, she's like, why don't you just lead? Or gun for someone who's a better leader. And at this point, mm -hmm. Finn is basically suggesting himself. And they do show off Savika's new sword thing. They do. That will be relevant soon enough. Very um, much a Deus Ex Human Revolution kind of thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But she the difference is, she, well, she did ask for this. Comes out of it. Yeah, <laughs> she did ask for this. She did this. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, no, actually, ahead. it's total tangent. <laughs> Let's press on. So, uh, Mel's mum arrives, and this is like the first bigger sort of. <laughs> Noxus is a thing, and this is someone that's arrived from Noxus. It feels much more uh, like the world is expanding a little bit more than simply named references. This is a person from there, and she's got things to talk about. Uh, yeah. as I think when I was watching this with Fringy, I was just like, Noxus is just bad news, so <laughs> I'm not mm -hmm. sure what's going to be happening, <laughs> but it ain't going to be good. And um, Yeah, I imagine they're going to be they're going to be a way bigger role as this show goes on. Uh I would assume so. I yeah. can imagine that's going to be the case. Uh, and she, yeah, she tells Mel, "Your brother's gone. He crossed the wrong man, and I was distracted. A mistake I can't take back." Which is like just for. I was just going to say that's that's like the implications of what. There's probably a whole incredibly complicated, meaningful story that's happened in Noxus already that they're probably considering showing us at this point in mm -hmm. later episodes of Arcane. I'd imagine. Well, it might like be, I mean, it. that could be. It might be relevant. Uh, what if that was the first three episodes of could series be. two? Was actually Noxus backstory. It might be relevant to a character we might see, oh. but who fucking knows? It's all fan speculation based on the presence of birds. So you know. Hey, once they understand who Swain <laughs> is, they would think that's significant too. Just for a quick clarification, I think that is the symbol of House Madada rather than Noxus as a whole. Noxus is. Faction oh, that's probably true. I I just associate like it as thing. a Noxus oh, yeah, symbol, yeah. Just because Noxus has a fairly prolific landed aristocracy, uh, mm -hmm. so they have all sorts of noble houses like this. Um. Yeah, and she uh, it, it, she has pleasantries for like five seconds, and then she starts saying like, "Your Jace has turned his eye to weaponry, and your undercity has festered." And I don't even think there's a matter of like discussing that. She's just like, "You fucker, you want my, you want weapons, don't you? Like, you mm -hmm. just want it for for Noxus." And uh, she says, "It's a fact. Weapons cannot be unmade. They will be used. And I'm going to guide you to the right decision." That's what she says, which is pretty blatant. Another, another nice detail of the expressions. I, unfortunately, I don't have a timestamp note it down but when she when she hears about her brother being dead she, you can see like her an uh, uh, un lower lip quiver it's like oh that's a nice little detail yeah like a little, bit, like a little bit of quivering yeah metal quiver no shut up yeah, Mel's yeah i don't, I don't have a timestamp. i wouldn't need to look such up, but i remember that being a thing mel mel's mom is f a, a fetish <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, then we see Caitlin and Vi having a little chat, and uh, Vi explains that there was a game her and Powder used to play when they were younger, where they would just keep trying to create monsters to counter the monsters that they were coming up with. But sometimes Vi would get carried away and create something a bit too scary, and so to avoid her crying, she would pretend to chase it away. And then she says, uh, a real monster turned up and I ran away. I left her. Um, and of course, it fucking frustrates the hell out of me that some people actually point out, it's like, well, no, you were taken by Marcus, idiot. Remember the events, probably. It's like, that moment <laughs> of leaving Powder, that's what cost all of it. Mm -hmm. Even if it lasted five seconds, that's the major mistake that's had the biggest ramifications you could possibly imagine. And uh, Vi will feel guilty for it for the rest of her fucking life, I'd imagine. But uh, the, why it's such great drama is I don't think anybody watches that scene and says, Wow, Vi's evil for doing that. It's like, nah, she's under a bit of pressure. Just a little bit. Um, yeah, just, 
just staring into Caitlyn's eyes on the bed while discussing all the things that make them who they are. Just, um... It's a little, little moment of peace. It's like, oh, can have a little, a little moment relax. of gay. That, that is gay. Gay. Shut up, Jay. This is the first, like, quiet moment they've had a chance to have where one of them hasn't just been stabbed. So, you know. And even holding hands. There's lots of stuff happening. Anyway... We get a different scene following that very peaceful yeah. and calm one, and they do it very fucking deliberately. <laughs> Vi is kind of calm, contrast, doing okay, and then boom. Um, yeah. So this scene is probably the most disturbing in the entire show. Uh, oh, yeah. Basically, Jinx is tied down and screaming constantly as different things are injected into her, and all she gets told from... Her mind's perception of the fucking torturous Caitlyn slash Singe telling her it's not gonna get better. I'm afraid it will only I'm get afraid worse. It'll only get worse. Yeah, it's like, oh, great. Thank you, Singed. And uh, <laughs> all she's seeing while this is happening is her understanding that she is getting wiped out in favor of Caitlyn and that her chances to get to be with Vi again are gone. Um, this is really bad for her psyche, to put it lightly. Can you imagine this might yeah, be a bit yeah. traumatic? Uh, a little bit. As if she's had enough of that already. Mm. Just a wee bit. Uh, and it's just all pretty, pretty terrifying for her, too, because I don't even think she knows, I don't know if she knows who, like, what's happening, really. Uh, she's probably only just regained consciousness. Mm-hmm. This is the, it's, yeah, uh, and I would play it. But uh, I don't think I need to. Uh, his screams are quite, um, yeah. are quite a thing. Uh, the actress is doing great, but look at some of these stills. Uh. <laughs> so this is going to be what a lot of people want to bring up when we finally get to the topic. We're almost there because we still haven't seen Echo yet. Um, this was not peaceful. No, no. So, um, yeah, that get, it gets the point across pretty well. Anyway, moving right along. Yeah. Heimerdinger, I think, is next. Ye well, uh, Silco wakes back think? up. Oh, right, yeah, okay. And um, I think he goes to... He puts a knife to Singed. I don't remember if they say anything significant, though. Nobody else does. I think it's just a matter of Silco is like, what did you do? And Singed is like, I did it, the thing. Well done. I saved her life. Um, but yes, Heimerdinger is making his way through the Undercity. Uh, basically, just he's shocked at every turn. Like uh, this is he never knew about all this. He never yeah. really went and checked. He is it's like learning all of this and really knowing it for the first time. Yeah, and, which uh, isn't unique to him. But and it's like simultaneously it's so sad in that he's just realizing how much there's so many people to help. Um, and that things were never as good as he thought they were. And he even sees a little kid yeah. doing some scavenging and he's like, woohoo, what are you up to? And uh, I don't know if he, I think he like has a spinning top or something. And he's like trying to do like a little magic trick of, I don't know, whatever. Either way, he gives it to her. It's all really chill. And then your mum is like, a, get the fuck away from him. Yeah, the little freak. And I love how the kid, like, after she's being pulled away by her mom, she's like, okay, bye. Yeah. Important <laughs> little moment just before I wanted that to be when, friends, you know, but oh well. The homeless person sort of lunges out towards him, begging for something, and you can see the look in his eyes he realizes, I don't have anything to offer this person. Yeah. Shit. Which I think makes him think about his time as, uh, you know, head of the council as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So this, this, this anything. And what I really adore about this is that that means what Jace said wasn't just a show to get him fired at this point in terms of the meaning to the story. It actually sat with him, and so he went to inspect, and now he's realizing it was all true, and that maybe there is some validity to the fact that he's just not a good enough leader at this point. If if this is the fate for Zorn. Um. But yeah, very fucking depressed. Ends up, uh... Poor little guy. Yeah, he's having a lot... Of, this is a big day. And he gets his boat ready to go back over uh, to Piltover. On his head. Um... 
But he spots Echo, who's below the bridge, and he picks up his little, little board. I think he says, like, the way these blades are cut isn't as efficient as they could be, and he says they're designed for the air and the, uh, the fissures. But actually, they are, you dick. Criticizing <laughs> when you don't even know. You didn't say that. You did. You might no, have a broken vision or uh, yeah, you definitely. You, you probably got the censored cut. Yeah. Oh, got, in I my got, cut, he called Heimerdinger the N-word. I <laughs> yeah. I think that yeah, that, that's in my it, cut yeah. too. We have the adult cut. I think Freeman have the children's one. Uh, Heimer. <laughs> 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 oh no. Uh, yeah. So uh, I I really like the line where um. Uh, Heimerding is like, I was trying to offer my assistance, but apparently I'm not welcome. And then Echo says, oh, we're having the same day. Because they <laughs> both did it in reverse for the uh, it's just other the side. inverse, yeah. Both, like, tried to extend a hand across that bridge, allegorically speaking, and had it slapped and, away. Yeah. But they both, hmm, but if they're both offering that hand up to help each, to help out the mm. other side, and these two want to do that, hmm... They have a great interaction. I really like this interaction. I do, I'm very yeah. happy. I never would have thought. It's a yeah, really I never cool would have combo. It. What what can uh because of course the obvious thing. What can Heimerdinger teach Echo with all of his experience? But also, what are the things that Echo has learned in his life uh, in the Undercity, uh, scrapping and just trying to get by? What can he teach Heimerdinger? They both have something to offer each other uh, in terms of learning more about uh, the other society, the technology. It's uh, it's it's a really it's like amidst a sea of pretty uh depressing and grim things happening. This is a very nice, wholesome little exchange. Yeah, and Echo even knows him. Uh, he refers yeah. to him I think, as Councilor he Heimerdinger, and he's like, "Not anymore." And he's kind to him straight away. Yeah, it's just Heimerdinger now. mm Hmm. It's um, kind of nice to see Echo, like, not so standoffish all the time. He's like, oh, you're kind of nice. He likes him. Yep. Uh, so that's probably enough for us to now talk about whether or not it was plot honor at the end of uh, episode seven. So, so here. I think it is safe to say that Echo probably did something in the intervening time between the cut, the wide cut and the explosion for as short as it was. That saved his life. We'll just do the same system as last time. Could and would. Could he move that grenade away from him and uh, Jinx within the yes. time we saw? I think the answer is yes. And yep. would he? Absolutely. Like, absolutely he would. Yes. Yeah. So now we have to believe to he pushed it far away enough that he hurt his leg, or at least he, he jumped off the bridge and he hurt, hurt his leg when he fell, um, and that she took a bit of the blast in a significant sort of sense. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think he jumped off the bridge because we would have seen that in the in the white cut. Then I suppose you you could argue that, yeah. So I guess we'll rule that out. His leg must have been hurt by the explosion, and same for her. And mm -hmm. so all we have to imagine is he uh, hit the sound. Uh, he hit the thing away with his stick or his arm while moving himself away, and that she was flat mm. on the ground, so she would have been closer. Yeah, that's and she is more hurt. Works. Obviously, we can see that she is in a much well, worse so that's the other state thing. than he is. Uh, not only do I think that then, as a writer, you get to decide whether or not Jinx dies when you have that level of, like, the grenade is pushed away, but they don't make it pleasant for her. She's basically well, on I, death's I think, door, uh, and she goes through one of the think, most nightmare procedures ever to use something that has been established to heal. I think we are meant to believe that if not for this treatment, she would have died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, is that plot? Like, right. I guess the only plot arm would sense. be should she have died qu quicker. I was like, I don't, I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? Like, I don't uh, know. It's tough to um, say. Yeah, a couple of people have been citing that you we hear the see. sound of him knocking it away. I don't know that you can confirm that. I think you can just say it's a sound. It could have come from the grenade. It could have come from him hitting mm -hmm. it. But the fact that I feel like it's just more of an inference. Yeah, I think it's follows. reasonable it, to say is... that that is the sound of him hitting it away. Sure. Well, yeah, because because essentially what we're trying to do is so Echo is alive. So what would have happened that could explain that? That's essentially the question that we're ask we have to ask. And we're trying to like interpret in good faith. I, I like alive. as well, we still got yeah. half and half in chat being like, that's it, and then other people being like, no, they both died, this is ridiculous. It's like, look at the size of the mm. the, uh, the grenade. It's like, we've given you the best we can, uh, I suppose we just have to leave it to the to the chat at that point. Um, mm -hmm. I am more, I'm, I'm yeah. More... The threshold of the mm. suspension of your disbelief is not exactly yeah, I... a thing that is the same for everyone. 
Yeah. yeah, and I'm I'm more convinced of them surviving this blast than I am of Caitlyn surviving. Yeah, I, I agree. I, <laughs> I like think after yeah, you know, kind of running down mm. through it and explaining it, yeah, I can see. We're yeah. not given as clear of a display of the power of these grenades as compared to, say, the firelight explosion thing, because for those we saw the after effects, Marcus's I arm think, got um, ripped off, there was blood and gore everywhere. Everyone, Practically I think everyone else died. Says- yeah, uh, the the big part for the that one is there were a lot of explosions. This was one. Um, I I think I can believe more so that somebody might be able to survive one big explosion than they would to survive like a dozen smaller explosions because all you need to do is try to minimize one variable rather than avoid death from like a hundred different angles. You know. Mm-hmm. It helps yeah, that Echo is portrayed she... as being extremely fast. He's very yeah, fast. Extremely extremely fast. fast. Um, yeah, that on top of the fact that Jinx looked to be pretty much dead, except he brings it back with a, a serum that I think we're going to find out in Season 2 can do even more than heal. Uh, uh, yet, yeah, but... well, I mean, we already found out in this, uh, in, in this season does more than heal. What are we referring You've to? You've gone silent. Do you remember what Oh, in, in, in the finale, there's a thing that happens. In the what? Where, in, in the finale. finale. Oh, okay. The finale, yeah. Uh, there's a thing that happens where seemingly leveraging what happened, she's able to do some some crazy stuff. Oh, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about resurrections. Oh, oh, okay, right. Okay, we already Matrix know, dude, we, we've seen the ship. That's the primary ability yeah, of Shimmer yeah, is to give yeah, you yeah. abilities. I said, like, so healing is another one. And then oh, it, right, gonna be, I, okay. I guess... Okay. It was poor wording on my part. I almost framed it as though healing's yes, upgrade I, is resurrection, but it's like not I necessarily. Agree that the misunderstanding <laughs> is your fault. Mm. Yes, yeah, I you agree. misunderstood. That's fine. But uh, no, anyway. I I agree that the misunderstanding what? stems from your. Uh, Are we falling apart? I'm, I'm just. It's, it's all right. It's all right. You know, we'll get over. Fighting it. again. At least it's not about like goo. When we fight. Yeah, yeah, there is no fight that. here. I mean, it's just. We, I think I thought we we're all in agreement. <laughs> um. But anyway, let's continue. Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm agree. Are you okay with me continuing? Just to make sure. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I yeah. said let's continue. Yeah, I just want okay. to make right. sure it's better to get like you know you don't want to be safe and sorry as they say. Well, I guess it's one better. thing that I guess yeah. I wanted to bring up really briefly is I um, there you go. See, I, I noticed that um, it was only one grenade. Powder is always seen throwing at least three like all the time, and I don't know um, if she's just doing that out of necessity or it's because she's just a fucking she's nuts. So. I mean, she's not always seen throwing three. She, she attaches one to several people in the show. She she threw like several at the start. Yeah. She had she had attached several to the board passing by. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't know. I, like I just figure like Wait, one she grenade. Attaches one to the board passing by. In episode I was about six. to say that's just one. That's not three. Okay. <laughs> okay. uh, it was just, well i mean it was just a, it was just a passing thought really i mean it mm-hmm. just kind of seemed to me like she kept on using multiple grenades in on multiple occasions to the point where i'm thinking like the lethality is probably just a little questionable or if she just does it because it's fun i mean <laughs> to throw several um hmm. yeah the only time i remember there being three was the first time we see her in episode four but from there it seems to be ones Mm-hmm. Now, where are we? Uh, oh yes, Mel's mum's having a big old bath. Um, I remember finding out apparently, by the way, that they removed the guy who's massaging her in certain versions of this. Um, I can't <laughs> okay, remember really? why. why. I can't remember why. It's particular regions they they got rid of him. Um, so she's just chilling That's in odd. general. I can't, I, yeah, like I said, I've got, not got enough info. Maybe someone in chat has more info on that, but uh, I remember being like, what the fuck? And I saw the vision, it's like, yeah, he's just gone. It's like, okay. <laughs> I don't know if he's offensive or something. Um, he's offensive. <laughs> <laughs> she's, got, she's got the naked girl and the clothes guy's like, nah, get rid of him. He's good. <laughs> well, she's, she's plot significant. You can't remember her. I'm sure they would have. Yeah, it was, yeah I, a whole lot of plot. She's got a whole lot of plot. <laughs> They just oh, they yeah. just remove her, but they still have her dialogue there. Well, there's just like there's just like a PNG of a shirt that's hovering over her. <laughs> <laughs> the way to do the it. The Chinese censors. Or not. What what was that one uh, region that like censored SpongeBob by putting like a really bad JPEG dress of San- uh, over Sandy cheeks? 
Was that like turkey or something? <laughs> I don't know. Well, because there was a censored version of SpongeBob. And they, well, they <laughs> they put this really shitty looking purple dress over Sandy all the time because she's like wearing a bikini. So I figured it's like if it's going to be any region, it's probably whoever did that. Mm hmm. So she tells Jace he's basically impotent and the council is going to be a problem and uh, that they're in a crisis and nobody's acting. And she says, I want you to succeed. If you don't heed advice, I fear you'll end up slaughtered with your eyes closed. Like, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So with everything else Jace has got going on, that's a fun addition. Hey, you have problems and you're not dealing with them, so, you know, you're going to deal with them before they kill you? Um, and yeah, I think next scene is uh, Jace really thinking about this. He's holding one of the uh, little butterfly wings, and I think he says, uh, mm. We need to act before anyone else is killed. And uh, we know where his priorities are, that's for sure. Something that's super neat about this is when he says that, it seems almost a, a leap from Mel, and she looks at him. Frustrated uh, at first and then again because she realizes uh, her mum's gotten to him. Mm -hmm. The best way to explain it. Um, yeah, so they just they have a big discussion because Vi and Kate are here as well, and they're going to talk about what the plan is. And they basically say like we should go in by force. It's like that could trigger war. Uh, Mel tells Jace that could trigger war. You don't know it, but I do. It must be our last resort. And uh, Vi says Silco's never going to back down. At least I think she says that. And uh, this, they end up concluding they shouldn't uh, go to war, right? I think in this scene. They, they are against it, and Vi's frustrated because that means that Silco's not going to be yeah. stopped. Which takes us to uh, Vi being all sad. And Caitlin being all sad. Because this plan didn't work, and so Vi's got to go back to the lanes. And Caitlin's like, well, but, 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 but what about, what about everything? And she's like, it fucking didn't work out. Oil and water. And then she says, but what about us? <gasps> and, um, so this is the thing. I mean, there's not much to say here other than I know a lot of people have actually complained about this being like, well, that came out of nowhere. Um, I don't think so. Like, it doesn't have to, this reminds me of uh, the conversation about Spider-Man where it's like, where did the relationship come from? It's like, there isn't really one yet. It's just the beginnings of something. Something's going on, that's all. They, um, there's clearly a connection here. There's a bit of, a bit of tension. Bit of... Bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of touching. Bit of, bit of back and forth. Lots of chemistry. Touching. And Good clearly... Caitlyn's just realized that, like, if Vi leaves and she stays, that's it for that. There's nothing, nothing more happens. And so she says... Yeah. You know, what about us? And then she's just like, oil and water, it's not happening. It was never going to happen. So that... Oh boy, are we about to get We to are about to, but I just want to clarify, like, stage. the people who complain <laughs> that this came out of nowhere, I was like, I'm sorry, how much, how much is there before a character can just be like, hey, we, uh, we got, we got something, I think. Are we a thing? Mm -hmm. Are we something? What, what do we got? What's going on here? It's not like they're marrying What's each other. Happening? It's just, yeah, they're just... <laughs> Caleb's yeah, it's the slippery slope, Mahler. <laughs> we literally get married. First they meet. <laughs> and oh. then... Ugh. Yeah, uh, seems fine to me. But anyway, we got a scene. I mean, Fringy, you sounded excited. Do you want to take it? Yeah, uh, before we do it, though, I just saw a super chat going. <laughs> I want to read. Fringy, I've noticed slightly these past few EFAPs that you seem to be taking things a bit seriously when jokes are made. And you take it in a serious <laughs> manner. Relax, Friggy. You're among friends, right? Are you okay, Friggy? I'm a bit concerned. And don't take this as condescension. Just concerned is all. Now, I'm not sure if this is a meme, but like if you're referring to the conversation that we just had about, oh, Mola, no, see, the, the onus is on you for poorly communicating. You know that was a meme, right? Or. Um. Well, I, I really say, that's playing into <laughs> like, the meme. I'm not sure what's being like, referenced. If that's say, playing, in this one, if that's playing into the meme, that's really funny. If not... That is really funny. <laughs> I I really hope that, that's a really funny <laughs> meme. Tell me, tell me that was a meme. Uh, I was just going to say, it's it's Google meme, Google the emote Kappa and just picture that that is the face me and Fringy had when saying everything that we said. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just proved him right. <laughs> it's okay, Fabe. It's okay, Fabe. 
You missed that Vi gave Jace Jinx's name. Um, uh, remind me. What's what happens as a result of that? They now know that Jinx is the one doing Behind things. It. Very well. Um. So anyway, uh, Fringy, go right ahead. Uh so we got we got our our boy Victor. Oh yeah, this is the scene where the... Victor gets more training than Ray. <laughs> uh, training. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this hurts, yeah. Standing out there in the rain, lets go of his crutch and just wants to start going for a, a bit of a walk. At first it's, it's, it's a little bit tricky. He's not used to it. I the emphasis on that first footstep as well. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Um it's a little bit hard for him to do that. At first, he's walking. We see that little boat there in the background. We pan out. He's uh, he's he's starting to move a little bit faster. Oh, he's he's moving a bit faster. He's running. He trips, but he's he's running. He's going. He's going. Look at him. He's going, and he's he's outrunning the boat. He's outrunning the boat. Unlike before, when he was a little youngster, and the boat just escaped him. Boat. He couldn't keep up with the boat. Mm. Now that is what we like to call Boats symbolism. Yeah. Uh, Boats not there by accident. <laughs> This is this is what is uh, known as symbolism. You know, we we've been talking about throughout the whole show how one of uh, I guess the core parts of um Victor's journey is the idea that we're progressing forward with technology and science, and his body is failing him, and he'll die. He won't be able to. He won't be able to keep up. He's he's being left behind. But now leveraging this technology. Um, he's finally able to keep up. Not only keep up, but he's starting to outrun the boat. He's moving faster than the boat. He's ahead of it. Um, that's pretty awesome when you talk about symbolism and uh, you know, uh, setup and payoff in terms of the initial setup with the boat in here. Now, of course, it's all deliberate because yeah, it was all deliberate. And then we see him go back to his lab. He's motivated to continue experimenting with it. Now he's gotten in. Well, your life just got a lot better. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. There is there is hope now, but hmm, like what? Hope for what? What are you what are you hopeful for specifically? Like, oh, this tech that we're going to be able to use this technology to improve lives and save people, or specifically, I can use it for myself and well, not um, only he's ran live, out of but, like, shimmer as well. Um, he has yep. run out of shimmer, yeah. And the implication, I think, rush, is that Shimmer to... made the process uh, less Bearable. rocky. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, <clears throat> he is too determined to keep going with it. It's too much uh, to, to turn away from now. Yes, part of his um, body's been fully converted into something else now, and uh, this seems yeah. to be a goal of let's keep it going. Yeah. Uh, obviously, let's the problem for Victor is, I assume, body-wide. It's not like a particular organ or a limb it's that's going to be the method in which he's going to possibly save himself unfortunately as he's planning to do this it's intercut with scenes of a girl coming to visit him someone who's given him some attention in these other episodes mm. but we you know we just don't know anything about it really um called sky and uh she happens to catch him during his experiment and uh, I guess you know he look it, it, to a to a casual observer, it looks like he's almost getting sucked into the hex core. So she decides to try and pull him out. Are you winning, son? Yeah. And uh, it costs her big time. It, yeah. It's unclear exactly what's happened. We have to wait until season two to really know what all of this means. But uh, she gets disintegrated, and it seems the hex core changes as a result. Like. It's yeah. consumed a person or something. Uh, yeah, it's pretty rough. Um, and of course, it's a hell of a lot for Victor to deal with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She literally got do you think? Do, do you think he, uh, Victor would have died if she wouldn't have come around? Like the core would have absorbed um, uh, Victor it's un instead? Un unclear, I guess, is all we can say, right? Yeah, I was it speculating. Me... I was thinking about this. Yeah, it would seem to me the hex core has fused with Victor and nothing else. It's rejecting everything else. 
So, yeah, well, because his yeah. blood got dropped in it at first. That's yeah. what, uh, that, was, that was the first sample that it got, and now it's fused to Victor and nothing else. That's why the plants like die pretty much instantly when it's fused. Why she got disintegrated when they were anywhere close. So it seems it's made a bond with him and nothing else from the looks of things. And if we compare mm -hmm. to when he did it with Shimmer, it seemed, I don't know, I'm going to call it a pleasant experience, but the leg got converted. This, he put his hand on it and it converted his hand, but not for a lack of incredible pain. Uh, and so it's because he's screaming throughout the whole thing. So I assume that's the cost without Shimmer. Uh, that it's, yeah, like Shimmer is, Shimmer is almost like an anesthetic of sorts. Yeah. I got that image right there. It's just like, oh, he's all dusty now. Um, and I think people would probably want us to to recognize, like, is it not incredibly inconvenient for her, and in a way for him, just that she popped up at this exact moment? And it's like, well, kind of, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, and I've seen the funny enough. There's a second complaint that she was fridged, and I'm like, okay, can anybody <laughs> die? Is that even possible anymore? <laughs> Like, no. what, is it, what does it mean for a character to die, Not but also mean nothing to anyone else? Because, uh, like, people, I've seen the no, threads where they're like, she didn't even complaint. get a character, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah, she's not a character. She's a person who was interested in Victor. That's, that's his POV of her, so I don't think it's bad that we have that POV of her as well. She's just a person people, in this people world. Don't, people just accept this kind of thing happening with characters that they like, and then they just um, ignore it when, when it's something that they... When it's something new to them, they'll ignore it, I think. Because, like, people, no one makes this complaint about fucking Uncle Ben when it's literally his, <laughs> the purpose of his character is to He's die the to be the main character. character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marcus Uncle Fridge. Was bridged. Like, Uncle Fridge. It was like, oh, Batman's parents, they never even got to have a character, man. Disgusting. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, we did have a whole Eve have about fridging, but I still don't even feel like I fully understand exactly what people mean when they're complaining about it, because I don't know how it doesn't apply to literally every character ever that ever died that anyone reacted to. <laughs> mm -hmm. God, remember when that, that girl said, you can't have characters die off screen, that's disrespectful. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I do remember that, I'm afraid. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't. Those were hard times. Um, yeah. Yeah, we we catch up with old JC boy. He's making something, Yo, and uh, Vi gives him a visit, being all like, "Hey, pussy, do fights." And then he's like, "We voted not to." And then she's like, <laughs> "Hey, that doesn't matter. Do fights." It's kind of interesting, by the way. The the forging of um the hammer. It's it seems his forge is actually powered by hex crystals as well. Like, um, obviously they want to imply that there's a lot of special shit that goes into making hex weapons. Uh, that we... I use the hex crystals to create the hex crystals. Yes. Oh. But you know, that's kind of in the shape of a hammer, wouldn't you say? It looks a little like it. Mm. A bit weird. Mm. Mm. Give him a hammer. <laughs> I'm outside. I'm outside. Hammer time. Um, yeah, well, hang on, were Milo and Clagger fridged? Surely they were as well. Oh uh, yeah, that gets mentioned in the threads uh, as well, but they had more characters, but still. This is the thing. Is it worse or better to have more character or less character when you are fridged? I don't know. Because yeah, if you have right. more character... Isn't, the, uh, parents fridged? isn't the core of the trope that, like, if they have no character at all, that's fridged? In which case, yeah, the parents would be fridged by, like, any standard that people use. I, I, think, it's like like this, I think it's like this mid-zone where it's like they get introduced and you meet them, but it's just so that they can die later. Yeah, uh, like well, they, get, well, they get an inordinate well, amount of screen time. Standard, right? Well, remember that fridging is reference to Green Lantern had a girlfriend who then got put in a fridge, <laughs> and the 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 gist of it is that they're not really a character; they're a prop who dies to prop up someone else. It's like John Wick, a isn't prop it? who dies who props up someone else. But like, I well, don't know like that it's a, a problem. Things, right? where, like, I don't. Well, do I need I to have that? Do I need to have that? history to understand that a character would be upset that well, like, someone imagine, who was important in their life died, you know? Imagine I said to you guys, like, the big problem with Marcus is that we never get to know the daughter. Apparently, we're just supposed to believe he cares about her, but I don't know what their relationship is. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, what are you, yeah. why are you saying that? We don't need to know. You, do you understand what a yeah. father-daughter relationship is? It's like, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, they just expect <laughs> me to believe that a father loves his daughter? I, I like, think it's well, ridiculous. That's and, and this is what I mean, like, 
she's a motivation for him and what is her character it's like not much of all she's like she exists to be part of a motivation for him and it's like okay but there's no reason why he wouldn't fucking have a daughter and then of course silka would threaten people he loves like why are we why are we here when you enter into any story, you're always going to have some level of expectations or inferences that you pull from the fact that you're a human being who is alive and exists in this planet. Yep. In, on this planet. Oh, and look in the planet. planet. <laughs> Going you're meta. You're in the planet, you exist in the, uh, in the crust, and it's, it's real, no, wait, the crust is, what, what's the, wait, uh, we're on the, the crust. crust, we're not in it. You can be in the crust, though, like, if you dig a hole. Well, I'm, I, you it. can be, but we're not generally. No, but I, uh, so... I mean, you can be what in the was, fucking mantle if you. Well, that's, you that's what I was about enough. to ask. Uh, you know, what's the one below the cross? There's the out. There's mantle, the cross, then there's the mantle, Wait. then the outer core, then the inner core, right? I believe so. There is, is that, the. Have I got the right? soft, chewy center. Yeah, it'd probably be real toasty and up in 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 that little mantle there. Oh, isn't it like suppose? Isn't it like hotter in the like in the mantle than it is in the core or no, something? I, I don't think know. You are, because I think of the you pressure are deeply or... mistaken on that one, but maybe no, I'm I will, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that this is a fact. This is something that I feel like I might vaguely have heard at some point. I think uh, I'm not stating this. Is... Like, the core is like ten thousand degrees, right? Um, and and the mantle like is not that hot. Mm. So is it yeah, we have like... crust, upper mantle, mantle, outer core, inner core? Okay. Yeah. Or, yeah. That like, sounds about right. I don't remember learning about upper and lower mantle though. I think it was often uh often um you know, just just one big mantle. There's no need to distinguish between the upper and lower. That's what caused the problems in Piltover in the first place, the undercity and the overcity. We don't need any of yeah. that in Earth either. It's all the core. I'm no, convinced. no, it's all the mantle. Fuck. I'm convinced. Alright, anyway. Moving on. So, uh, Vi points out that Jace never even looks into the prison cells, and that he wants to act, but he doesn't want to go, like, vigilante mode. And so she suggests they work together and take out the suppliers of Shimmer, um, even though it wouldn't be sanctioned. And uh, what's, what I like about this scene is when she first arrives, he's, like, very hesitant with her. Um, I think he says, I can call security. And then when she starts to look at and pick up the gauntlet, he, like, tightens his grip on his hammer. It's just, uh, because, uh -huh. of course, he doesn't trust her. He doesn't know what's, doesn't Chekhov's exactly know what's, gauntlet. Doesn't know what's going <laughs> on here. They have so much imagery of him with a hammer before his actual hammer comes along, like, in different ways. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, I guess we got Chekhov's hammer, too. I just <laughs> keep defaulting to the gauntlets. Um, and yeah, so they basically agree. Uh, Jace has reached a boiling point, and he's going to... Uh, take a lot of enforcers and Vi down to one of the sub Shimmer suppliers' areas and knock it out, basically. Feels like he's gotta do something. Yeah. yeah. And, so uh, do people just know where this forge is? Because I was just a little bit confused how she got here. When I, I first can't imagine her. it's a well-kept secret. that It's gonna be the yeah. forge of the science department, so she could probably get it, get away there. Um... And yeah, uh, so we cut to all these sh shimmer people, and all the enforcers break in. It's a standard raid. They're like, ah, blah, 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 blah. Go, 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 go. A kid manages to uh, down. press a press a button of, of like the raid redemption. He's a penic button, and Ooh. it seems that nice. Silco has already prepared some elements in case they had to go for a fight. And it's basically chem tank people. They're all in like these little tanks, and it gets infused with, I guess, a variant of shimmer. And it makes them real fast, and yeah, uh, very quick before they have to fight Jace. Hey, we're gonna get there. We're almost there, right? So oh, oh, oh. they fucking obliterate every enforcer pretty much. Um, the first four people t tend to bring up is wait, why didn't they kill him straight away? Why was he like the last person they kill? And it's like I don't know. I don't know. I ain't got anything for that. <laughs> well, he, he was in the center of all that, wasn't he? I mean, they're all kind I of had everywhere. To go to the guards first. You know, like it could. The thing is that these these creatures are jumping around all over the place. Like, there's no reason to think that they might have even started with him. You know, it could could have happened. Um, I would say that this is kind of an example of a thing that you just see in a lot of shows and movies and stuff, where like the nameless goons, uh, the nameless, faceless like minions get killed, but all of the important speaking named characters live, even though in universe. In fact, in universe, it's like Jace is incredibly significant, right? So that should 
That was the only thing I was going to try and speed. think about using. Is like maybe maybe they have special orders for Jace. I don't know. But, but then it, they it, try to kill him anyway. So like, which, I don't, which I don't, counters that theory. Yeah. So it's out. Yeah. Exactly. Like there's there's really I, not much you can say as to how this happened. He just got lucky, quote unquote, that he wasn't killed straight yeah. away. Um, I mean, I'm just under the impression that, like, you know, they took him, they they took out the guards that were around the area, and then they were focused on taking out the people shooting at them because, you know, bang, bang, annoying, stop the bang, bang, you know? I think that's so, a yeah, better that, argument guess, than uh, anything else, yeah. but still, um, they, they're, like, leaping still, at people. Look at how fast they're going. If they had jumped on, like, on Jace, no chance. <laughs> like, he's, he's gone. Which is, also, they're the ones attacking first. Jays isn't doing anything yet, but they're well, they're going to kill him. It's just yeah, take sure. care of the bang bang. We're I fucking think, ra rabid and angry. Yeah, all right. I will give you that. You can argue that if you're one of these cam tank people and you see this l lot of people, one of them's holding a hammer, the rest have guns. I think it's safe to conclude you probably should go for the gun people first. Yeah, I think that. I, I think that's then again, fair. Giant, giant glowing hammer. You know, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Cool I, look, if, if me and you, Fringy, were <laughs> yeah, gonna no, go no. kill them all, and then you were like, we should take out the hammer guy, he looks, I don't know, that hammer's glowing. <laughs> I'd be like, I, I, mean, I, I don't know. I, I, but, I, but I yeah. know what a gun does. Uh, yeah, the guns definitely yeah. hurt at a rage. Um, sure. Sure. So maybe that's good enough, and uh, we can leave it there. But they do sort of slow down when sure. Jace is the only one yeah. left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the part that you can't really. Yeah. Uh... Um, but then Vi gets a fucking. Badass start to this fight. I quite yeah. like her throughout all of this. Jace is the one that I take a couple issues with. Um, yes. yes. Uh, she slides <laughs> I down. I Jace was, like, able to do this. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we can go through bit by bit. <laughs> we'll get like, to that, yeah. First of all is yeah. her intro, and the fucking... It looks glorious, her fist it smack into good. a chem tank guy. Yeah. She can take it fucking frame by frame. The impact frames are spectacular. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Like every frame of this <laughs> Look at that is one. amazing. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that would have hurt. If you want to convey force, <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, this might be a way to do it. Of... Yep. Dead. And the camera <laughs> shake afterwards, like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, it's it hasn't even crunching. Yet. And that little slow mo of of her connecting to him and then letting it go again, where he just blasts yeah. off like. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> of per, uh, it takes, pink smoke isn't it? It's a detail I noticed when I first like watched that little bit frame by frame. The camera takes a second to catch up with it as it flies off. Yeah. <laughs> it just vanishes and the camera's like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, this little look she gives him of like, eh? Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. Huh? Right? That's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> and then winks at him and then puts <laughs> her game face on. It's just like this yeah. little nod in the background. Like Vi a whole bunch, and uh, we've talked about it before, but the fact that she has so much, she has to fight so hard to win her fights makes it much more entertaining to watch. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, and this is definitely a uh, League of Legends coup moment, because you're like, Jace yeah, with yeah. his hammer, Vi with the gauntlets, <laughs> and they're gonna fight a bunch of goons together, it's like, alright, I'm ready. Yeah. Um, I'm on board. I got my tissues ready. <laughs> oh no. And uh, Vi does that thing again with her arm. I was trying to point it out before. I don't know if I've picked up all the examples, but when she's about to start up a fight, I think she does it a couple of times in the middle of a fight as well, but it's always the same arm that she's readying up. I don't know if there's something maybe wrong with it or if it's a tick, but it's just cool that it's consistent, that's all. Yep. Uh, yeah, the song's pretty awesome as well. I don't know if there's anything I like to say didn't, on didn't, it. Wait, wait, which, which arm is she doing that on? The, uh, the right, right arm. arm. Right. Didn't she break that arm? It could be that it, it you could relate it to when the door fell mm. on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It could be that, yeah. That, that arm's a bit It might stiff. have healed funny, but it still works. Mm. Man, look at this frame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, there, there are a few of those. I, the impact frames with Jace's fucking yeah. hammer, dude. <laughs> and yeah, this is like, I don't want to... So, I fucking love his opening attack being that swing, swing, get yeah. that momentum up yeah. and smashes into that fucking guy. The only problem is, like, is that guy just fast see enough the to bones stab him already? Well, it's just like, Jace, I didn't know that Jace was such a proficient fighter. Well, wait, yeah. like, that's, that's not my issue with this moment. My issue was on the, the, the chem tanker. I can <clears> believe <throat> that he can swing around a hammer. My issue with his proficiency with the hammer comes a little bit later. Um, it's just right. that mm -hmm. the chem guy just doesn't do anything. He just stands there and gets hit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. 
They're not perfect, but still pretty satisfying to watch. Then every time we get Vi, she is kicking absolute ass, loads of like, mm -hmm. just block, 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 counter, block, counter sort of stuff, and just screaming okay. while she's doing it. Add yeah. real quickly, uh, the sounds of her readying out. her gauntlets just before, like just as she starts to run off, and then the sound she makes as she's running straight from the game. That's her ultimate sound and the sound she makes when charging up her Q. So you're cooling oh, is what you're saying? Yes. yes. Whoa, well, <laughs> yes. it's from the they thing. Use, um, it's from the thing. A hammer A hammer is like a slow impact weapon, so it it, it, it seems like just plausibly it doesn't yeah, that's really that's work yeah. as well in an actual combat environment as it might, you know, I, I feel like it's something they had to include because it's like that in the game and Agreed. practically disagree speaking, entirely. it's probably uh, not that great for fast I combat. I disagree. I would, I would normally well, agree with you up until you, we get the, the scene in the uh, next episode. But wait, what's, what's the you're, counter? You're Go ahead, Rex. So I, I guess, I guess I'm, you're, you're sort of, I was at first and then he kept going and I feel like you're mixing things up. A, a hammer, so your issue is, what exactly? So with the size of the hammer, it's very large, it's a very slow weapon, and I feel yes, like the he's hammer, just gonna be dead hammer by the time he's made a hit with it. Yeah, the, the hammer should weigh a million pounds. Yeah, let's- It is okay. huge, it is absurd. Let's make it clear very quickly, I'm, I'm assuming Jay's aware of this, maybe not, but yes, hammer, war hammers and hammers are a thing in fights. However, we're not dealing with that environment. He had a choice to make whatever weapon he wanted, and he went with a hammer that can turn into what is essentially kind of a rifle. Um, meanwhile, Vi's makes way more sense. She's making use of tools meant for something else because they suit her. Uh, yes, he could have made anything, one. and he went with something that, to be honest with you, is not fantastic uh, compared to what he could have made. Because, you know, what is think, literally, yeah, what I mean, is stopping him from making for... a Hextech rifle? I mean, the thing they're going for, right, is the fact that he, well, he grew up surrounded by hammers. He has the experience <laughs> there, but I don't think that justifies him using I, it as a weapon. Well, so this I is think, well, this here, this this sequence where he, uh, he like he goes block and then hits down, block again, and then like uses the the handle of the hammer or the pommel. Um, he's he's like he's having a full on battle with the the guy who's moving really fast with the blade, and it's like wait. How are you doing this? Like, building yeah. hammers doesn't mean you're like... Is this something people, An someone trained you to do? With hammers. Yeah, like, mm. when did yeah. you ever need to use these kinds of moves with a giant Jace's hammer? Ability to fight is a bit of a question mark. I don't, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, some, that's some sick moves you're doing there, buddy. Like, it's great, but how, why, where did you learn this? What is well, happening? Yeah, he's yeah, a little I, bit of a Gary Stu in that regard. However, I will <laughs> counter that the hex crystals are making the weapons light. As True. seen in the I, next episode, after yeah. she's while well, she's fighting Savika, that's yeah. why this hammer is not as heavy as it could I, be. Okay. That's why, right, fair enough. I would concede I think that. I think that's fair. Well, yeah, because like, um, yeah. these things would be heavy as fuck if they can do what they can do. Yeah. Um, you could not lift them. And so I'm willing yeah. to believe the hex tech gems, especially with the anti gravity features. Uh, they've been manipulated in some way, shape, or form so that they can make it so the weapons aren't as heavy. Um, oh, we know that yeah, for yeah. a fact. Sounds about right. Sure. And see, this is the thing about this... taking fights really slowly. This thing he does here, I'm totally fine with. That's fine. I think mm -hmm. it's, it totally yep. makes sense. And yeah, yeah the shield off. thing. That's cool. Shield boy. Totally fine. But the, that one yeah. little sequence there where he does like a full on battle with one of them is really cool. I just don't know that he should be able to do <laughs> that. <laughs> no, yeah, he is acting a bit yeah. too proficiently, a bit too quickly. Yeah, I he's a little like, he's a little yeah, bit of a I mean, Gary Stu. I gotta say, Jace is a bit of a Gary Stu. He's super duper smart, but he's also super duper handsome and he's super duper strong and he knows how to fight with a super duper hammer. It's like, okay, hold on a minute. Just a little he, too well rounded, like, don't you think? I'm gonna push back on this. I, I, I wanna push back a little bit too. It is just this part that I find to be like, hmm. Yeah. Otherwise and To be fair, it's I a mean, part of a part. I mean, it's not even the whole thing. Jace yeah, exactly. is a very flawed individual. <laughs> yeah, like he, yeah, yeah. And I, Mentally, I don't he to, is. Well, I feel like that's that's the end of it, right? You're already disqualified from you yeah. Mary Sue. Well, I mean, well, I only I didn't Mary say Sue he's a flaw. You, right? you did say a bit of one. Being, like, um, I pulled back a little bit and called him a bit of one, but he's not he's not terrible or anything like that. It's just that he's just a little that. more well rounded than I think any nerd is expected well, to be. So I think what I, a total what, nerd. what I would say is it is specifically his proficiency at fighting in this scene that I'm not a fan of. Otherwise, mm. I think he's just a character, like a well-rounded character. Um, I, don't, I don't think... Uh, 
Like, I feel, I, yeah, like I, I don't, I don't really lean towards any sort of like Gary Stu or anything like that. I just, so I think that it's fine otherwise. Mary, Mary Sue stuff. The reason that that applies is because it's like the universe folding around to make this character look good, rather than them earning their skills themselves. Right? Mm -hmm. A yeah. character like that you can just have characters who are really good at any everything. Like if they've if that if they have a reason to be that way, like that's that can happen. You have characters who are like really good at shit tons of stuff in loads of different ways. Um, but the that's why this is a this is the only issue because this is the only time where it breaks into a skill that he probably shouldn't have. And this thing, if someone yeah. said, "But he's familiar with hammers," I'd be like, "Yeah." <laughs> I, I, that makes I, him I fight incredibly <laughs> technically. Yeah. I definitely would have like, preferred it because I guess he's got a hammer thing for the game, but. I, I feel like Jace should be fighting awkwardly, but with a really interesting and good weapon that he's created specifically for himself, which kind of makes it okay. And the sense yeah. that he's using it in sort of a clumsy fashion and he's kind of frazzled and worried, but it's like a shield and uh, something. It's it's uh, maybe a gun or a rifle or some kind of something, not just I'm going to make a huge hammer. I feel like but, they tried oh, to show I feel something as well. like that, but they like they went, you know, they got they got ahead of themselves with the choreography because they do make a point of showing that he gets clipped by a blade, which like as compared to Vi at least is I think them trying to suggest his unfamiliarity with fighting as well as his expressions throughout. But again, they just I think, think I would have preferred more of Sorry. him failing in yeah, the fight. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the, yeah, the I, hammer. I, 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 we're missing, we're later. missing his like unexperienced fights. We, I think we, the we never got those. Movie. We never got his like. Ooh, I'm 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 losing ground here. Fights, you know. I think the difficulty his in terms of fights. I think what you find difficult though with like conveying him stumbling is in this fight. It's like man, that that could seriously hurt or kill you if like we consider a stumble, considering who he's up against. Mm -hmm. But well, they have to have the well, like I feel like that's guys. why we don't get that fight because there's not time for it against like um. An, it, an opponent where these it's are high highly stakes. lethal enemies. Um, yeah, maybe they should have depowered yeah. them a little bit and made them more yeah, less real fast, <laughs> yeah, strong enough to easily history, do away with enforcers. Yeah. All of the enforcers <laughs> who are trained, right, trained to be able to be, you know, to some extent, be able to defend themselves. I, I just want to voice a pet peeve as well, which is that I fucking despise the giant warhammers. Like <laughs> Warham <laughs> real warhammers, real warhammers are like these. They're like the size of normal hammers because that's the kind of thing that you could wield, right? Well, it's, it's when the you size say of a normal hammer, are you actually... talking about like the size of a little hammer that you put nails into the wall, or like a... yeah, that's literally how big they are. They're for, um, are they're they're, yeah, they're like a real they're for dealing damage through armor. Yeah, I'll get you, yeah, like I'll get you a picture. A real one. Uh, I thought that there was well, some like sledgehammer, right? Like a sledgehammer sized, like you know, like um, it's not some giant. If you have those in combat. I think those are only made out of wood. Okay, all right, because. The reason you don't design hammers what like a war hammer is, is, is because the fucking surface yeah. area is so widely spread that it's hard for it to cause that yeah, much damage right. unless you're crushing them against something. Right. Because yeah, essentially, you know, a blade isn't going to do much against plate armor, right? So what oh, you want okay. is you want something that's going to do a you okay. want you want something that's going to do a hard impact against plate is the point of a war hammer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I work. did watch Shad's video on this. I must just be completely misremembering. <laughs> like I thought that uh that the war hammers were like maces or or. You know, like the, this is a like this a, is a mace and a warhammer. Actually, I was pulling up the picture. Okay, right, I see. Yeah, I think here's the thing, right? I used to think those little warhammers look really lame, and that they I, I understand. <laughs> oh, I see why in, why in in fiction, you know, they make them much bigger because you know they look cool. I don't. But then I think about like, man, being hit with one of those would fucking hurt. Oh yeah, like yeah, yeah I, absolutely. I, I can't no imagine someone wearing. being able to hit me with one some, with some like massive unwieldy fucking thing. Like Jace has, so like, I would just move out of the way as they're, as they're getting ready to swing. So it's like now, aesthetically, I I way prefer the small hammers, and I, I would like to see them represented you in like media because I think it's the the one arcade. form of historical weapon that we never actually see adapted faithfully, like to history, is the warhammer. We see Jace fl using that little warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it would look cool. I think a hammer I... of that size would look cool. I, I, if he could, well, he could use it. it in tandem with a shield, which I imagine Jace would really want because he's never fought before. So, and he's not an idiot. So he's like, I should have something to protect myself because I know I'm not a fighter. So I should make something that's defensive. Like, 
Fr Fringy, imagine him like uh, like hitting someone like real hard with that. You know they're fucking done. Like that, I... something of that size. Man, the, because <laughs> no, because you know the small the small like point of impact focused on you know that little area is gonna is gonna focus the energy way harder onto one spot, um, right? Which is sure, but I mean, if is... we're if we're in like an animated world where we have like we can do really crazy cool shit with this hammer, you know what I mean? And he does have a fantasy shield, yeah. or I guess a sci-fi yeah. shield. And do you remember the the blue shit the hammer does as well? It is not a real yeah. hammer. It is like it appears to be discharging some kind of shock that is hitting yeah. beneath the armor. That's and true. Like, yeah, it 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 gets a huge, huge pass guess, because it is a magic hammer. I would say it's you know an aesthetic preference that I have for for historically accurate war hammers. Like on it is an aesthetic preference of mine. Though I just have to give it a pass because it's magic. on those impact. Frames, well, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying this is. A, I'm not saying this is a whole because it is a magic hammer, right? Like. Uh, just yeah, quickly I... on the impact frames of the hits in like that very first one, you can see it shatters the entire the man's entire fucking skeleton. Yeah, like, it's, it's just it's it just obliterates it. Dust, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, uh, as the scene progresses, it's just like I love the combat from Vi. It's really satisfying to watch. It looks like it would have taken ages to get right. Just all these hits that mm. come in, and uh, yeah, she has to dodge each one, and some of them are really close calls, and then just slip in the counters where she can. Um, using the gauntlets as shields a lot of the time. I think I just I find her combat so much more satisfying than Jace's, and I think it's literally just because I fully believe that Vi is more than ready for this. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And the gauntlets give her the variable she needs to be able to take on these guys. Um, but yeah, just look at this sequence. Yeah, this one's really cool. Fucking I'll glorious. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, Trey doesn't want to see it. Mm, Jay, Fuck that, yeah. that's fine. Jay, Jay, it's Jay's pin, yeah. And yeah, just the it's like uh, Mortal Kombat X rays. You see the skeleton like, charging up. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Boom. Um, and yeah, then you get a proper Goomer, a Goomer moment, a game Kuma moment. Goomer. Yeah. Uh, Jace <laughs> activates his uh, uh, ranged weapon. Let's, I guess you could call it a gun. Uh, Primary attack. Uh, and I think, Rags, this was the time where you were like, is this from the game? <laughs> this yeah, that was when I was like, yeah, this is what he does yes, in the game. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And they fucking undercut it. Those bastards. You're enjoying watching your Jace boy yeah. use his yeah. big old coom weapon. Bow, bow, bow. And he's even like, <laughs> he's just, yeah, he's super into he's it. He's reading at him as he's <laughs> just cooming all over them. And then suddenly, as he's firing and firing, he ends up shooting a kid. Now, Blows the hole clean through. It's the kid that pressed stupid. the button, by the way. I figured it was. Um, yeah. Trying to think of... You stupid kid. <laughs> from what I remember, because I know people are critical of this, I think they said... Um, uh, what an idiot kid for being there. Um, what? What? <laughs> but I mean, like... What? <laughs> yeah, fuck that kid. Yeah, this I don't have much to say about that. Probably this when is, the kids, uh, it's it's it, he's it probably wasn't the kids' full decision to be there. He's probably <laughs> sitting there. Probably, I can picture him running around Donald's trying to avoid. Situation. Yeah, like <laughs> there's a lot of reason he could end up there. What? what? The child was evil. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I'm trying to remember criticism of this. <laughs> like, I'm doing what I can. I know another one, but we won't get to it until the beginning of the next episode. But um, I guess we'll just we'll just carry on unless anyone else has got anything. Uh. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that puts a big dampener on this whole scene, which for a moment there was kind of like Jace was getting, not only, you know, getting rid of the shimmer, stopping these horrible monsters, but vengeance and justice for all those enforcers that were killed. But killing a kid, Oof. that's, that's, that doesn't... That kind doesn't, of a mm. downer. Yeah. And then, that's uh... Going to bring us back down one thing... Us. Go ahead. Either of you? Go ahead, Jay. One thing I always appreciated about this scene right from the beginning is that it's presented um, with the perspective of the people who are being raided in mind just as much as the perspective of the enforcers. It's not, it's, it's, you get the sense of, oh, these guys are coming in here to kill those other guys, right? And, and all the, um, all the fucking, or, all the, the impact that comes with that from the perspective of both people there. It's not just, yeah, fuck them up, let's go, until... You sort of get lost in the action with Jace and uh, Vi, 
And then again, yeah, as soon as you get lost in the action, you get a rude reminder. Hey, maybe let's not get lost in the action because killing people isn't actually that cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oops, Very, look again, what you did. You got carried away, dipshit. Comes across again as mature storytelling. You don't want to just yeah. ignore the parts that are not working for you with, with your vibe. You're like, go away, other parts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Vi doesn't take this that badly. Jace is having loads of trouble, and I think the point is just that yeah. this is kind of normal for Vi. Like, well, yeah, that's a, that's another victim of all of this bullshit. And I think she says, well, that conversation I think happens. I can't remember if it's the end of this episode or the beginning of the next one, but um, next episode. It's the end of this episode now. It's uh, that's pretty much it. Well, yeah, because wow, the other thing is that uh, after seeing yeah. that he's killed the kid, and that that is a direct result of all of the stuff that he's decided to do. I think looks up and sees loads of kids. They've all surrendered. And they're all, but like, there's so many, and the, the, this is going to keep happening if he continues. That's just the price. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a lot to bear. Again, yeah. uh, Jace is quite a, a One day, lot you know, of character Jace, to him. Jace was just a scientist. Yeah, yeah. Like just wanted to do his little science stuff. So like, yeah. yeah. And I was I like, no, now you're the head of everything. Do stuff. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, and then just, Caleb just naked. Blew a hole in the kid. Woo! Yes! yes! Go! Finally! Yes! Let's go! <laughs> Quality content, jeez. Uh, Only took us this fucking long. <laughs> yeah, she's probably having a big old think about all of the everything. And they do it very artistically. The whole thing. Um... Then we get, and I remember when I first saw it, I was like, that was so fucking cool and well done. Uh, just the, she uh, comes out of the shower and she sees that the, the monkey image from Jinx has been drawn into the mirror. And uh, as she's realizing that, we have a, a, a shot with a, I guess the, the, the mist in the background's clearing up. And there she is. Yeah. Yep. How awesome does that look? It looks yeah. so amazing. <clears throat> like you can barely see her as it is, and you're she's only just now becoming visible. Like the viewer can only see her just as Caitlin does. So it's like, oh shit, out of nowhere. And it's a bit worrying because the last time we saw her was almost dying, going fucking nuts, getting resurrected, and only thinking about how much Caitlin has destroyed her chances of yep. being back with yep, Vi. She's got him. Yeah. Big ol' hate boner for Caitlyn now. And that... It's not the only boner that was in this scene. It's episode <laughs> 8. Yay! That is on the last fucking episode, can you believe it? God Yay! damn! Hey, so we're doing we're it! We're here? Oh my goodness gracious. Right, we're, we're doing it! Wow. It's incredible. Doing it, doing it. And I don't see why I wouldn't just continue straight away, so let's do it. <laughs> uh, do it! Woo! So yeah, I think we open with uh, the Jace and the Vi having a little chat about this, and Vi posts a little bit of cringe. She says, you didn't have a choice, and he knew what he was signing up for. <laughs> and I, I, th I think even Jace is like, oof, right. Uh, Damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did he... It's both statements. It's like, of course, the whole point of him feeling like this is that he had the choice, and he made the choice. This is the result of the choice, and then he signed he's up for it. He's not happy with this result, yeah. The fucking child, they don't know what they're he doing. He signed up to get shot yeah. by that, well... Yeah, if, if it was an adult, that'd be one thing, but... But I like it because, mm. yeah, Vi's only goal here is to get him back on track. We need to keep, you know, beating the fuck out of Silco. Um, I, uh, he has like a great line where he says, um, the next parents to get a message, like, I, I don't even, I don't even know where to send it. Like, cause that's something he would have dealt with topside potentially. Mm -hmm. What does he even do when, when kids are killed and, and stuff here? Like, what, what does he even, and he just says, do we leave him here? And, uh, she says. Yeah, he doesn't even know what to do. What yeah. happens next? Uh, she says, you've always been a part of this. You just never looked it in the eye. And it's like, yeah, her frustration comes from the fact that this is common. It's, once again, a lot of the counselors have no idea that any of this even happens. Um, yeah, you are always a part of this. Like you're you part of the, the system, and this is a systemic problem. Yeah, yeah. You can choose not to acknowledge it if you want, but mm -hmm. and I think it's part of why uh, she's so frustrated. Is like this is your reaction. It's like you don't even know. And of course, when they first talked, he had no idea what happens in the prison either. And how fucking annoying is that? Yep. 
Especially when he's part of the group that's making all the important decisions. Every important decision, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she makes it clear she ain't stopping here. And there's just a great, like, take those off. Like, and, and it's just for a second, you're like, oh shit. Because, uh, yeah, he doesn't want it. He wants to wind this down, but she isn't stopping. Um, but this is the thing. When I was watching this scene, I was like, as much as I wouldn't be against having an action scene of Vi vs. Jace and everything, like, just for the cool factor, I don't think it matches Jace right now to fight her. No um, way. Yeah. No way. He's very pleased that all of Plus, the, you know, energy just deflated out of him and he just walks off. She's a full-on brawler. Jace... She's full-on ready to yeah. fight every last person there is, but he has just experienced how much he does not want to do violence. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure he's aware that he wouldn't really stand a chance against Vi anyway. Nah. I don't know. She's got a lot of enforcers uh, uh, I mean, there. you know, there's, there's, yeah. there's a chance. Might not be thinking that, Jake. Uh, faster than bullets. And I imagine he knows his hammer better <laughs> than she knows those gauntlets, uh, in terms of their powers. She can think... roll better than him, but, you know, if he activates the shield and it catches her off guard, then one good hit to her. I imagine the hammer would maybe be able to smash those gauntlets. I think the hammer kills her on impact, if it's, like, a proper Yeah, impact. even if it hits her gauntlets, it doesn't matter. It I crushes don't... right through like, the arms hammer. underneath. I don't think he stops the fight because he thinks he'll lose. I think he just doesn't want to kill her. Uh, he just yeah. Doesn't... yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, there just, is a criticism. putting that among the list of why he wouldn't do that. There's a criticism yeah. people highlight here of, is he seriously just leaving two gemstones to her? Um, the fact is, this is what this scene's about. He's gonna have to kill her if he wants them back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to, so... He's that's not it. ready is, to do that. There's a rough realization. He's dealt with the fact that he's killed someone, a kid, rather. Uh, there's just a lot going on in his head. He knows that he, he's giving those up. That's, that's the big reason why he wants her to drop them. They are very powerful, but the thing is, he's just not willing to kill her. Uh, I'm not sure people would be citing as a problem. That's the decision he's made. I thought that. So, what they would say is. That was the uh, he's Zorn having the gemstone is a, a big reason why all this drama is happening in the first place, and he's giving up two right there. And it's just like the only response to that that works that is, is just the fact that he's not willing to kill her. There's nothing else he can do. Yeah. If it was Silco there with the gauntlets on, that would be yeah. pro that would be <laughs> different. But uh, he probably can recognize that. Yeah, but. She's not, like, evil. So that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we yeah. also see in the, in the, in the wide shot, the Shemar is apparently made with some weird goopy stuff that's hanging from the ceiling. Looks, looks kind of gross. Oh. I don't know if you've, he's, saw, he's if you've seen that. Oh, yeah, I, you're, you're right. There is an, remember, he said, yeah. he said goopy. All right, there's a difference between yeah, and no, there's like a almost like a heart thingy. I, I do, it's, yeah, it's like pumping. It's like purple. Yeah, it's like gross, and that's I guess that's where they produce the shimmer with, which is gross. <laughs> it's like a little sack of something. I don't know what that is yeah. exactly, but it's it is it is pumping whatever it is. Um, but yeah, Via smashes it, much to the chagrin of Silco. Who is about to discover this? And honestly, if you only watch this show from Silco's scenes, he is just constantly having to deal with new problems. <laughs> He's just like, Are you fucking kidding me right now? This is happening too. It's like, okay. Breaking up my shit. I was like, when will this villain get a break? Exactly. Man. What a good guy. I wish he would get his break. Uh, I'm sure he'll get his break in the next episode. Yes. <laughs> um, he says, uh, it's been a while since Topside got this bold. And yeah. um, they're like, yeah, we need, like, Marcus was fucking useful. And then he's like, we can always buy another. Just uh, kind of proactive thinking. Though in the background, the lady from the, the evil council is like, nah, do something about the fact that my son died. And that's where the second criticism I've seen comes in with, oh, how convenient or inconvenient, I don't even know, that the kid happened to be her kid. Um... I I don't know. Like, I, what what I, difference does I don't it know, make? I don't know why. why it, so they've taken a huge it's loss. It's not consequential. Regardless. Yeah, like, I don't really okay. see that. I mean, one could argue that that happening fuels her to make a decision in a, the coming scene. I um, but I don't know that it's unfair that they would be critical of Silco, regardless of it being her son that died. Yeah. Just I suppose could we make the argument, could we make the argument that, um, 
Because a lot of named characters just bump into each other, like, you know, Echo and uh, Heimerdinger, right? There's no reason that they would have met each other specifically rather than anyone else, that the world is made to feel quite small because of all these interpersonal links that are ultimately I, um, just coincidences. Those That's the problem with trying to categorize them. I brought this up before, but just they seem to me to be events rather than conveniences or inconveniences. There's no, nobody really strictly benefits or doesn't benefit from these things happening. They are things that happen. I don't yeah. Wanna, um, yeah. You know, it, it, Yeah, but I, I mean, it just, it, for me, um, Echo, Echo meeting Heimerdinger was like, man, it just makes the world feel smaller. Well, um, they're both traveling and they're both aiming to be on the main bridge. And that's where they both were when they met. Like it's, it, there's, there's some pieces there that connect them. I suppose that's true. You're right. Because uh, Echo says yeah. he's waiting there because he can't figure out how to get back without being like very vulnerable while doing it. And then if he's, you know, I just assume he's, he's waiting maybe on the leg or contacts, something like that. But I mean, we um, could have made more reason for them to have bumped into each other. I don't disagree with that. People are pointing out something that I was thinking about. Why would the mob boss's kid be working in the factory? I, I was about to point that out, yeah. So I that's was actually where I think kid the, is. there's a more interesting conversation to be had as compared to whether or not he was killed. Um... I don't know. I don't know. The... I guess it depends what he was doing there. Yeah, maybe he has like an overseer like if... of, of some sort. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I no, mean, no. there's other kids. Maybe, yeah. I wouldn't say other overseer, kids. just that he was there to just keep an eye on stuff. Just just, just yeah. have a look, gain experience, maybe, maybe talk to literally... people. Maybe she literally wants him to gain work experience or some that's shit, right? Maybe she's fucking saying. trying to tough love him. Well, lit so literally, he could be there under her orders, talk to him, learn the business, just get around, have a look around, whatever, fine, just hang out with, that's what we're doing, we're shimmer people, we're doing shimmer. And you know what, if you see mm -hmm. people slacking off, fucking tell them to not slack off. That could have been- Press the button. He doesn't have to just be like some kind of mining <clears throat> personnel or some sh like imagining the worst job ever. It didn't have to be the worst job ever. It could have just as someone just said maybe he's just mm -hmm. the alarm boy. It's like maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Oh my god, they're coming. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Even the, maybe maybe he was doing some like mining and this parent like thinks that yeah, that's that'll teach him like to be a man or whatever, right? Yeah. I don't see why that isn't an impossibility. It's like it's purely reasonable that could happen. Uh and so and besides, we we get a fucking banger line from Silka once again as a result of all this. Uh, she's complaining. She's like, "You gonna fucking do anything about them killing my son, you little bastard?" And Silko says, uh, "We all mourn the loss of your son. At least we have the solace of him dying for the cause rather than some petty personal dispute, as so often occurs." Mm. Is this Great fantastic line because it's not like you could if you fucking dumbass you can interpret that as him being like nice it's like isn't it great that your son died for a reason but it's like it's a threat he's basically just said shut the yeah. fuck up you yeah. if you try and like do anything like if you do anything over this as a result of your like petty insecurities about the fact that this is all my fault it's like you're gonna be the one that fucking dies and yeah. the uh, just we all mourn the loss of your son. The way he delivers it, like, <laughs> I don't actually give a fuck. <laughs> like, so why are you even bringing it up? Also very important, someone just said in chat, I am a Trungos. So I thought that was important to point out. Was it Trungos? Was it Trungos having the EFAP at Trungos. Nachos. That's heaven right there. I know, right? That sounds Send pics in good. Discord. Send pics in send Discord EFAP chat. Send dick pics in Discord. No, I mean... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm going to go to, to uh, Discord EFAP chat uh, EFAP chat yeah, right now. Yeah, you can you can do that. Bye. You better not be lying to me. G goodbye. Get the chickpea grumbo. <laughs> chickpea grumbo. Uh, hello. Yeah, so... <laughs> EFAP chat is currently full of hi Jay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh. So the the scene closes with him basically being like, Savika, help with the body, and then walks off, and all of them there are just like, hmm, that, that Silco, hmm. What a gloom. But we'll see about that. <clears throat> Again, uh, Victor's having a day. Um, he's, he's, <laughs> he's having a day. <laughs> he's, he's holding the fucking glasses of Sky, and, mm -hmm. and a damn face flashes at it. Uh, oh, the intellect, I don't even know what that is. Uh... 
Where are you, creepy flash? Oh, uh, yeah, that. Just, like, that's helpful for him. Uh, oh, shit, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, oh, boy. <laughs> really, really doing bad. And this, I think, would be something we'll end up citing as the seasons go on, of really the first time that Victor's endeavor has cost him significantly. Uh, yeah, would you say that this magic, this hex crystal, would you say that it objectifies women? Yes. It turned if yeah, I mean, yeah. she's she's turned into like a mist in a way, but I like still think that's fair. Yeah. Glad they like the <clears throat> um, and he starts reading all of her notes, and there's several notes in there about Victor specifically, and it's very sad. Because he fucking killed her, kind of. I don't know if there's anything else anybody wants to say. I can move on to the next scene. No, it's it's no, sad no. and it's tragic. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was rough to see. It um, is a tragedy. Like... He does eventually pick up his stool and go to just, yeah. like, I, I hesitate to say destroy the hex because I don't know if that would destroy it, but he goes to hit it. Uh, but then he stops. And then the hex call like zaps him and he goes unconscious. I don't know if we're supposed to gather yeah. from that that the hex call will not allow him to destroy it anymore because they they're connected. Yeah, I think the uh I think the hex core is kind of created a bit of sentience at this point. Because like, yeah, he walks away, but then the hex core is all like, yeah, bitch. That's what I thought. Just zaps him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is one of them threads that uh we don't have enough answers of by the end of the season so all we can say really is we will find out whatever that's supposed to mean ultimately hmm. um moving on now Mel... he has actual like real context for the things heimerdinger was talking about is what i just mentioned oh like... yeah that's and it's i'm imagining only the beginning uh yeah so mel's pissed at her mum because she's pretty sure that she convinced jace to do the fluming and uh, then her mom gives her a bit more info. The man who killed your brother does not believe the score is settled. And she says, uh, uh, Mel says, I only wanted to p protect the city from people like you. I can't believe you'd use this city to cover your own ass. She says ass, not even ass. It's great. He's more British. <laughs> um, and then her mom oh. advises her, let the war unfold. We need that weapon. Then you can come home. So, uh, we've already got one of our several... But England is my city. Nice. We've got several big yeah. choices for certain characters to make this episode, as is tradition for climaxes in stories. Mel has got welcoming back to her home on the table now, if she can get the weapons created. Um, and then we go back to Victor... in such a sad, sad scene. He's got... Yeah. He's got mm -hmm. her ashes... And he just says, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know where you would have preferred. I'm sorry. And just drops him in. Yep. Love that line. Yeah. Just trying to pay a little bit of respect to, as best as he can, I guess. A little pause, like, yeah, trying to think, what the fuck else am I supposed to say? Yeah. <clears throat> Not a situation then... he wanted to find himself in. Uh, but yeah, we got a parallel. He looks over the edge, yep. much like a certain Jace did. And mm -hmm. he yeah. comes very Best close. Take a certain step, like a certain Jace did. Damn. Am I interrupting? Yeah. Yep. Back to back. <laughs> um, it's like poetry, it rhymes. And this is where we get... This is honestly like a, a really hopeful scene. Uh, Jace is like, the weapon's too much. Uh, I'm going to destroy the hammer. And then he's like, no, 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 destroy the hex core. Like, we need to stop. Mm -hmm. This has gone way too far. And he says, well, in the pursuit well, of the great... Line... Oh. <laughs> Did you want to say something? No, 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 go ahead. He's, Victor says, in the pursuit of great, we failed to do good. We have to make it right. Mm-hmm. Good shit. Pretty uh, emblematic Good of the line. entire science like subplot of this whole show. It's great. Um, and but, yeah, that's uh, the thing. It's I've... not just he's not just angry at Jace anymore for things Jace has done. He is now just as faulty with Sky has been fucking executed. Which uh, we don't mm. see the repercussions of in terms of other people recognizing it, and I think we just have to assume mm -hmm. that it hasn't become public knowledge just yet. Because uh, she would have just disappeared, quote unquote. So I don't know. Yeah, if deal I with imagine that, that comes. Yeah, yeah. I imagine that comes up next season. 
But yes, uh, what were you saying, Das? Oh, well, I was just saying that, like, the, uh, the line in which, you know, you need to destroy the Hex Core was basically done, like, subtle, in, in a more subtle means. Because Victor says, you've got to destroy it. And Jace looks over at the hammer, and he thinks that yeah. uh, Victor is referring to the hammer. And then uh, Victor corrects him and says, no, 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 the Hex Core. You have to destroy that thing, because I can't. And I just, I just like how he's just assuming that he means destroy the hammer. They're both, he agrees, but I think both of them are back on the same wavelength after having been divided for a while. Yeah, they've both little, gone on. Just that, just that little gesture kind of just kind of shows it, you know. Both gone on separate journeys and they're back to where they kind of were uh, after both of them mm -hmm. have had some big dramas that neither are aware of, really. Yeah. Um, they both flew close to the sun and both got burned in oh, like, yeah. different ways. So, um, I love this scene too. It's a Silco one. Yeah. Uh, his fucking, so he's dealing with a lot. We've been over this. <laughs> he's always dealing with a lot. <laughs> he sees this is the, like one of my favorite scenes. I just, this one is like, oh man, I was, I was, my eyes were glued to the screen for this. Savika pulls up a chair for Finn. She even brushes it off for him. And he just brazenly comes in without an appointment, obviously. And Silco doesn't like react with shock, just curiosity, like, what in the like, world okay, is happening now? here? Yeah, like, mm. really? <laughs> okay. Mm. And he has an eye on Savika, too. Um, and I think he asks a question to weird looking lady, where he says, You're with him, are you? Uh, and I think the way I watched the scene, he's looking at her, but I always wondered if that question's meant for Savika, not her. Um, yeah, I, I think that's what I got that he's that he's asking Savika more than anyone. Because, of course, those two are betraying him. He doesn't give a fuck about those two. Savika betraying yeah. him is important, though. Um, and he says, "What bore us through those old times was loyalty, and I now share seats with parasites." Like, oh. <laughs> damn. <laughs> oh, he's having his Andrew Ryan moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, he does that, and I think Finn is like, um, this is the day you die. And Savika raises up her blade. Some pretty cool visuals for that as well. I'll try and fetch him. But, uh, swipes. Big old flash. And it's not quite clear who's dead, but like yeah. again, narrative wise, I was like, I don't think they would kill Silco here. Um But you know, it's not like it's impossible for this show to do something like that. And uh the great detail is just that he's panting. Silco yeah, he, he does yeah. he does not know cool. if he was going to live through that swipe or not. Yeah. He was talking a really big game about loyalty, but at the end of the day he uh, couldn't be sure. I mean, Savika betrayed Vanda, so... Yeah, yeah. he's she. she's a pretty uh, two-faced bitch, you know? And even if, like, high confidence in Savika, that's still a blade swiping really close to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, look at how the blade just sleeks, uh, uh, slips out here as well. Just looks awesome. <laughs> um... I like how he doesn't actually want to die. That's you know, that's neat. How <laughs> the idea of dying while he while he puts on he like he puts on a big face, right? Puts on a big face. That doesn't feel like the correct idiot. <laughs> puts, <laughs> puts on a big face. He puts on a face. just big inflates. Face. Oh, I'm scared. It's time to put on my. Just a second. Let me put on my big face for this. <laughs> this is an important occasion. But, um, you know, he doesn't. Act, he, um, he's, he actually does still get affected by the prospect of dying because that's something that he doesn't want. I like that. That seems, you know, that seems like a character. Dude's this, got shit to live for. This fucking image is so great. Like as he's talking, he's raising the blade. It's like, ah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um. But yeah, even from that shot, it's like, oh, unclear. Yeah. But I guess she could have. I'm pretty. Oh. Yeah, and like, and I like as well that they reveal that Silco is alive by having his cup, uh, slice, falling down, yeah. showing that he's mm -hmm. okay. And Panton. Yeah, it's fucking great. Because he was not sure He's that like, Savika <laughs> wouldn't yeah, kill him, and the yeah. the most interesting part, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think she was sure. Yeah, yeah. she looked really she unsure. She had the moment to act, and she wasn't really sure about it. 
You could just tell in her face. But, um, yeah. Loyalty came through. And, uh, I think he says something like, uh... I can't remember the line. To... No, I, I was actually talking about something. the girl's son. You know, he's like, that would have been the oh, price. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to have, your, have son your son killed, killed for this. this. But, but I guess we're ahead on that. We're already ahead, ahead of this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're ahead on that Get account. Out. It's just like, oh my god. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> Can you say anything that's not cool? <laughs> I don't think so. Talking about killing children is cool, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and he says, He's pretty good at it. Uh, were you tempted? And she said, not for that worm or something like that. Implying that, worm, yeah, like, I mean, yeah. if the right guy comes along. <laughs> the right guy. <laughs> like, it, it's a good line because it tells you everything she's about. Like, I'm going to follow number one. If I don't think you're the best person for Zorn, then I'm not going to keep following you. That's why I didn't follow Vanda. Yeah. Um, it's basically get your shit oh. in gear. <laughs> oh, then we get, I think, Metal's the, favorite scene. And so now I'm going to make you describe scene. it. Fine, I'll do it. <laughs> so, uh, as you've seen before, we get to this, I, I guess it's like a w wall at the at the water or something. It's not a bridge. It's a wall thingy. Uh, see, it gets like a little little, little letter with the hammer symbol. It's like, oh shit, that's like Jay's thing. Like, that's that's the, his house symbol, I think it was, if I'm remembering correctly. I think correctly. so, yeah. Yeah, the symbol of house um, Talus. Yeah, Talus, exactly. So, they, they, they meet up up there. And they basically, they want to talk about how they could come to terms. Uh, and I think Silco, I, I'm not sure about the the order anymore, but you can correct me on that if you want to. Um, I think Silco says like, oh, you, you attack my my facility and then you want to wanna trade? That's kind of weak. Uh, so why would you do that? Uh, and he basically says, okay, I want free cool. trade, free access. Huh? Just one thing quickly, I was going to point out, just right at the beginning, it's just like, look at their posture difference. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, hanging over a bit. And I think the first thing, uh, I can't remember, whose line is this? Is it Silco's or Jace's? One of them says, um, I was reminded of what brought us together, the threats beyond our walls. And it's just, a, obviously, the place they're at, all these cannons aimed out to the uh, rest of the world. Yeah. I I, th I think that was Jace. I think that was Jace. Yeah, Jace is that. Yeah, the, uh, the, the implication being they're meeting here <clears throat> because this place represents the border between Piltover and Zorn versus the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. But go ahead. Uh, so yeah, the Silco basically says, okay, I want free trade and free access to the Hextech gates, and I want my free nation of Zorn. So they want to be independent from uh, uh, Piltover. Uh, and then Jace basically says, okay, uh, but you have to stop with Shimmer. And he's like halfway there already because they destroyed the one facility, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and Jinx and Silico doesn't like that part because he immediately tr uh, goes to protect her. It's like, oh, she was working for me, so you can have me instead. And then Jace just says the line, we can't make a deal with the snake and then cut off its head. We need someone to be responsible. Which is another great line. Yeah, and he also says we all have we all have our shitty parts to play. Get me Jinx, and you get your nation of Zon, and then he just leaves. Yeah, Jace chats oh, up in this scene pretty hardcore. Actually. Jace is yeah. such a mega Chad, and it's yeah, so he's great even because got Silco not... slightly upset. Sorry, because yeah. like I notice how he's all he's he's kept his eyes locked on Jace this whole time, like he's in control. But the moment that Jace asks for Jinx, his eyes start to divert to the side a few times, like get shifty, yeah. like. Oh, uh, well, yep, hang absolutely on. right. She was acting under my orders. Yeah, because yeah, he's not in control of the scene now. Because it's like it showed a weakness. Yeah. It's like whoa, 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 whoa. Because like, hey, uh, he arrived here all confidence, like, oh, look, he did one attack, and now he's he's cucking out and wants to do some little trade. What a what a dingus. And as but then he goes, <laughs> many like, would want <laughs> us to point out, the choice he's just been <laughs> yeah, given he, oh. is Vanda's choice. Yep. Yes. Yes. And it's just super interesting because uh, normally. The protagonist gets the choice at the end. Here we have the antagonist giving the choice. Because does he does uh, does Jace explicitly say it's like, oh, I just want to save you because you wouldn't win this war. We would massacre you. Well, yeah, and there's a really cool interaction where he was like, you play, you tipped your hand. You you show like the fact that we're meeting after you do your attack shows that 
like you don't have the balls to go through with it. And then Jace is like, uh, no, I'm worried that I'm going to absolutely obliterate you. Yeah. And like, I even, even Silco was kind of surprised by that response. Just like, absolutely. Uh, okay. That's so great because he, he's right. He only used two Hextech weapons. Well, look what happened last time. They they are. Over. Yeah, exactly. In the last time, well, they did, they now get... they've got even super duper tech. Yeah. Um, yeah, really they like... might have Shimmer, but that won't be enough to uh, destroy a... or take over, build over. There's a small interaction here as well. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, that's actually fair. Jace knows the name Jinx, thanks to Vi. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it, he goes to pull out his demands, I think, and Jace doesn't flinch. And, uh, yeah. you know, because like, it could be a gun or whatever. And I, I think uh, Silco's actually impressed. Like he does, he does a little, like huh. plants the paper against his coat. He doesn't really wait for uh, him to get his hand out. He just goes blonk. Yeah, I just uh, these two. I'm just he's like, like I think him. Silco noticing he's not quite useless. This Jace guy, he's yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a really, really good scene. It's really cool because yeah, uh, it's thing. Silco's always had all the power in all the conversations, and he gets exactly what he wants almost immediately at the cost of something he loves. And it's like, mm -hmm. wow. Mm. Um. Yeah, and 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 just it's it's actually a pretty straightforward deal, and it's reasonable. Yeah, it's heavily reasonable. It's just it's the one Absolutely. thing that he really doesn't want to give up. Get me the terrorist who attacked my city, and I'll give you all the stuff you want. Give you everything, <laughs> especially when such a good about deal how... for Zon. It's amazing deal. Like they could get off with basically yeah. everything for one person. But fortunately, the person is Jinx, and Silco is not gonna gonna give well, her away. We don't know. We don't know quite yet what decision he's gonna make. He's just really upset about this, though. Yeah, which lines up with everything we've seen so far, and um, it's especially yeah. awkward because she yeah. did all of that to impress him back in episode four. Yeah, and now look, it's his un. Well, <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, Consequences. I just love that. I just love that line with us. We we can't make a deal with the snake and then cut off its head and then immediately following uh, up with we all have our shitty parts to play. It's like, damn, yeah. you're right. <laughs> I think I think this scene is like a testament to how far Jace has come, like as a character. Yeah. After yeah. all of his fumbling around trying to figure out what the hell he wants to do, like with all of this energy and potential, no idea how and where to throw it. And competing uh, voices as well. Now, yeah, it's like, his voice is a lot louder in his own mm -hmm. head. It's like He's oh, figured right, out what right. he thinks is right. Yeah. Exactly. Which I think is a larger theme in the show, maybe, in terms of, you know, personal mm -hmm. identification. Um, someone said <laughs> Silco is not Thanos tier. That's true. He's much better than Thanos. He's better yeah, than Thanos. Thanos. Ooh! Like that. Yep. Well, yeah. is that really an ooh statement? Like, Thanos is pretty good in, like, by well, my one movie. Standards, but, uh, in yeah, one yeah. movie, yeah, and then he had a second movie where he's a fucking cloud. A Just a giant clown. <laughs> clown. Yeah, like, a, very much a clown in that film. I think people say shots fired. That shouldn't be controversial. What do you mean, shots fired? Was that ever <laughs> in doubt? <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised people don't agree with that. I, I, Oh, he, and he oh, said, right. I meant not as good as sacrificing his daughter. True. Oh, Thanos right. is much better at doing that. Oh. Um, I see. Okay, I get that's it. It's true, yeah. Yeah, he did. And then we get a scene of Heimerdinger seeing the sanctuary and being thoroughly impressed. Specifically, the, it's so amazing what you can all do in such little time. And then he's like, yeah, well, when your I'm life depends on it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you get done, which is kind of interesting to think about with everything that's happened with Heimerdinger. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, he's... He's got such wonder on his face, and it just makes me happy that Heimerdinger is now in a position where he can help some people who really need it, while also making up for maybe a lot of mistakes he's made in terms of not taking care of the Undercity as part of Piltover. Yeah. I, I hope to see more of that in a certain <laughs> next <laughs> season. Yeah. Uh, okay, I mean, it's cancelled. No! The, uh, <laughs> no, stop the line. No, Echo don't even talk about German. that! in response to talking about the form is quite important as well. It says something like, you can't just give people what they need to survive, you have to let them live as well. Like, yeah, give them what they need to live. To mm. Good shit. Which is part of the more, you know, expressive um, side of what you can do with science and uh, ingenuity. 
Mm. And then we get a lot of people's pick for best scene in the show. Ah, uh, yeah, this is a strong one. <laughs> this is also this is a strong one. One of my one, favorites. Yeah. Silco has everything he wants now. Everything he's tried to get since as early as he could probably remember. It's all on the table. He just has to exchange. And what do I, what do I lose but problems? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he says a thousand times I've imagined this moment. The boy didn't even haggle. And what do I lose yeah. but problems? It all <laughs> makes same sense thing now. Echo said it all makes sense kid. now, brother. Echo so... said the same thing as a kid. Remember that. Um, well, about I Jace. Yeah, actually. Jace didn't haggle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and you gradually realize he's at a statue dedicated to Vanda. Mm -hmm. Jace's character development is that he does not learn to haggle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Just say it. It all makes sense now, brother. Is there anything so undoing as a daughter? Mm -hmm. Which is a line... Into the fountain for him. Literally fucking, that is referenced like everywhere related to Arcane, that line. Yeah. It's just so um, important to the entire season. Yep. He should have just now, said, bitches be trifling. What's pretty great about this scene as well is that at this point in time, you're not quite sure what decision he's going to make. Yeah. Um, but it's just really, there's nobody around. You know, this is like the, mo the clearest expression of how he feels about, um, about something that's pretty core to his character. Mm -hmm. Well, pretty core, pretty much at his core. Um, yeah, it's it's really great. And uh, then, but this shot, so, by the way, before they reveal it, you see this shot. You jinxed. can just yeah. make her out. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. Oh yeah. She's a little bit she's of hair. There. Could also be Fringy. Also a fucking great it's, shot. <laughs> it's, it's a really cool. great shot. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah. Because. Fucking Silco's had his thing like throughout the entire season of you have to stop at nothing. Like that's what power is, and that's how you mm -hmm. get what you want. There is a base amount of like you need to be willing to do whatever it takes to achieve your goals. And of course, he has been willing to sacrifice things with his Up relationship until now. into the Undercity, but nothing quite so personal to him. What well, so, like, echo on the, on the he, thing? <laughs> he's never had to like, give yeah. up something that he personally cares about, or at least it doesn't seem that way. He Not on this level, at least. Pours one out for Vanda, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As a gesture mm -hmm. of, yeah, like, I get it now. Well, someone said yep. it's interesting that he allowed that statue to even exist. Respect for a fallen brother. It's like, I think he's got a lot of mixed feelings about Vanda. Yeah. Thanks. Plus, it would make him look really, really bad. <laughs> Deny it the would statue. Make him, it, it would make him look bad to a, to a certain extent, yeah, because there'd still be people who like Vanda. Vanda was still like a lot of people like, Vanda and tears down his statue. I would still say like Vanda, whether or not he became the lie that Silco was gonna tell, it's like he would still have represented the the beginnings of you know saving exactly. the Undercity. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jinx is in a bad way, um, and so yeah. seeing her here and look at these eyes, she's already thinking like Jesus Christ, Silco's gonna give me up. Um, for reference, everyone's abandoning me. She's. Basically, at critical, she doesn't know what to trust at all in any way, shape, or form anymore. Plus, she's got she's shimmer boosted, and she's just mm -hmm. gone through like the worst torment she's probably ever had in her life. She wants answers now, um, and so that's why she's gotten Caitlyn already, and this is why she's with Silco. Um, she, she, she's in a bad way, but we'll come back to that. But now we've got a big old fight scene. Pick fight scene. They have like uh. There's two little, little little guards outside, little Tem -tank, tank bros, and I think Savika spots something through the door that implies they've been beaten up, and so she's already getting ready for, like, something bad's about to happen. Yeah, there's, like, a blood splatter, I think. Um, <laughs> she notices it first, and then she basically tells everybody to get the fuck out so she and Vi can have their final fight. It's funny to me, by the way, like, there's memes about how they constantly have fights throughout the season. It's like, it's twice. Two but, fights. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it can feel like more. I don't know. Uh, so I guess this will be one of their moments of just showing some of the cool bits in the fight. The, the track is pretty Yay. awesome. Yeah. It's, um, and they, they're pretty rough. They rip the fuck into each other. It's a really yeah, it's a... violent fight. <laughs> a violent fight. 
Yeah. Yeah. Nice I like the first grab she gets in her and throws her across the room, and Savika during the throw is like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> what magic bullshit is this? Oh, wait. Uh, in the middle as well, when Vi takes off one of her fucking gloves to go and get a drink while Savika catches her breath. Oh, I love that yeah. part. I also love the, she just um... flings the glass at Savika. Yeah, yeah. And S- and Savika's just like, fucking, fuck off. <laughs> Annoying. Um, yeah, they don't show us a lot of the fight. It's a lot, a lot of it's from the outside, and then, uh... Yeah, Vi, Vi just looking to have a break, which is really fun to put in yeah. fights. Yeah, because it's, fights are exhausting, if you didn't know. Like, this is, you, yeah, you move dude. a lot. <laughs> get hit, it kind of hurts. It hurts. Yeah. And look, she does <clears> the <throat> thing with her arm again. Same arm. Yeah. Uh, like a tick, like that, I don't know. But yeah, uh, I'll try and get the shot. Here it is, I think. It's, copyright makes this awkward, but yeah. <laughs> it just... It really does come across as like, D- don't do that. You don't need to do that. Let's throw the <laughs> glass at me. <laughs> this is a fist fight. Come on. Um, and I love the also, I have <clears throat> the yell uh, Vi does before flipping the pool table because it's probably pretty she's heavy. Scared. She's mm-hmm. like screaming, then punching it right at her. It's like, again, look at these <laughs> fucking frames. Awesome as hell. Wow. Um. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, the first the... the blade. Oh yeah, I guess I could show that as well. Because <laughs> we saw Savika's blade, but there it is. Swish. God, that's a surprise and a half, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, look on yeah. Vi's face throughout the <laughs> oh, entire shit. little bit. Um. Yeah. Uh. Savika kind of beats her ass at this point. Because she keeps going to try and block these like big old blasts, uh, yeah, and it just starts. Does to she just... also power up more with the like, with the juicy juice? Well, this this spends Savika's power when she does each of these moves, and then she has to. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, she even lands one of the, the the sword thing on one of the gauntlets, and it's like burning her, and she screams again. It's just like, yeah, be hurt. <laughs> it's a fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rod sequences. Woo. Um, yeah, and Savika really stabs like it, the cause... blade right through the gauntlet, and it fucks with the uh, power core, I guess, of it. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, it's really heavy. Yep. And uh, yeah, Vi, I don't know that this sword even like necessarily makes it a completely uneven fight. Vi just loses because she, she she doesn't know what the fuck's happening, so she's caught completely off guard. She doesn't know how to block this thing or when she should counter. Yeah, it's not the usual fight. Um, and then we get. Old chat from an old friend. Because Vi is about to be fucking wasted. And while, yeah, Savika's repowering the arm, she's putting in uh, more shimmer. That's an interesting design change, by the way, because she does that with her new arm after the shimmer tank thingy on the, on the first one gets shot off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this one has, like, the guard on it and stuff, so you wonder if she did that because it can't be shot off as easily this time around. And I guess it lets her regulate the income of Shimmer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it goes in when she puts the because, thingies in it, rather than just pumping yeah, when whenever she was, it feels like it. When she was charging the arm, it seemed to, like, affect her body in a bit. And I don't think she wanted that to happen anymore, so she mm-hmm. came up with a better method. <laughs> something a little less contact-heavy to her actual body. Someone said, why doesn't she see a glimpse of Vanda playing the guitar on his porch? It's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> fucking game. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Yeah, Vanda says, your god needs work. I wish I could say it gets easier, but I'd be lying. He still mm-hmm. needs you. They all do. Get back so, up. Yeah, more than enough to get it back up. Just get back up. And just a reminder of how much Vanda's awesome. <laughs> Only three episodes you got him cool. for, you know? Yeah. And really, it's, it's like tough. two and a half. Left a good impact. What can you say? Um, but yeah, she gets back into the fight and she fucking wrecks Savika with, um, like an energy fieldy move that bounces her up for a second and it gives her a chance to grab the arm and pull it so hard that it just rips at the seam, which would be at her body. No, she had that energy field move. 
She had I no she idea. Did. I don't think look she had any her, idea like, she had you, it. You look at the yeah. look on her face like, what the fuck? But then she just oh. capitalizes on it. It's like, nope, roll with it. She's in the air. Yeah. She's defenseless. Passive in Destroy! the game. Well, and uh, it's not just that, but I think that it's, it's more than reasonable for this. It looks to be like if you were mining and there was some kind of uh, yeah. collapse, that this is what designed to prevent yeah. the collapse from killing you, yeah. Reactive Jace when had, you bring Jace's your arms weapon. up to like, cover yourself from something above. Yes. Huh. Yeah, yeah, something that, like that. That links Jace together had, well. Uh, well. Yeah, and that's yeah, the thing, we've seen it with Jace's hammer, there was a similar power, so I, it's not hard for me to believe that that was hmm. something that was in the gauntlets. It is a part of Jace's design. He doesn't want to make weapons. He really does want to help They weren't meant to be weapons. Yeah. Allowing, the, allowing the shield to come out of something as like an emergency thing. It's like, yeah, dude, that's what Jace would do. That's the thing with humans, man. We took the nuke, just a standard tool, and we turned that into a weapon. <laughs> Good job. <yeah. laughs> You're like, wait, what was it? What was it for before? before You're like, pure, oh, you know. Purely decorative. Purely <laughs> decorative. <laughs> um, yeah, I just like as well that something's got to give is the uh is the phrase but if you pull really hard where is it going to rip on this line and it's like probably where savika's arm connects to savika's shoulder that's going to be the weakest mm -hmm. point look at that fucking face from vi too damn yeah she yanks it off gives her a good gut punch and throws her into a uh, into the wall and it's it's an interesting moment because savika's not dead she's definitely not killed her but this is i've yeah. won like the fight is over, I won, and um, she screams. So why does she do that? Uh, uh, the, 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 oh, sorry, I just need. Uh, uh, I like I I figure it's just I don't know. She's just overwhelmed as shit that. Yeah. Stuff's actually going right for her, I guess. It doesn't look like a particularly happy scream, so it's really tough to tell what's going on through her head. I mean, you got better insight than me. Go for it. My take would be that combined with all of the normal pressures, this was actually something of a goal she's had since Savika and Manny betrayed Vanda. This is, like, representative of some form of yeah. justice for Vanda. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact so that he showed up as well. For which he has received none so far. Yeah. Justice. This this is a big bit of closure right here. That's been gunning for what seven years. Yeah. So um yeah the you know I don't know if we've talked enough about Vi, but I like her quite a bit. He does uh, a good yeah. ass yeah. character. Man, does she have to work to get those things to happen that she wants to happen? And it's not even seconds later she's like Silco. <laughs> he's yeah. the he's the last one. She's got to fucking he's obliterate. Ultimately, yeah. And she goes to pick up the uh, the second gauntlet, and look at oh, what they no. do with this framing. Oh, oh, no. uh oh. And yeah, it's it's just safe to assume that Jinx <laughs> would have wanted to collect Vi as well. She probably watched the fight. Um, and she says, "Bravo, sis!" Knocks her the fuck out. And I've seen two criticisms. One. Okay. How did Jinx get in that place without Vi realizing? Um. I mean, well, she, she was a little bit distracted. She's kind of trying this... to beat the hell out of someone, you know. It's such a fucking frustrating question. <laughs> like, I just... It's like, man, if only... Was there anything else going on, and is Jinx capable of sneaking up on people anyway, and does she have any variables right now that make her fast? No? Mm. Yes, Well, yes, that's like, uh, yes. yes to all of them. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. None of... It's like bad writing to me. Yeah, just battering. Um, and then the second criticism, wow, Vi doesn't even react to the sound of uh, powder talking or James talking. She's tired! <laughs> she, she, I just said that, like, we're talking literally, like, a second. It's just... Yeah. The woman is fucking barely awake. Like, can you chill? Someone in chat just, <laughs> chat just wrote Vi didn't place wards. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't place wards. <laughs> Well, well y'all are going to have to finish it up because I need to go. Damn, we got oh, so okay. close. Uh, so we got so close. close. But you're going to have to round out the end because I have to be on my way right. for the night. Who's your okay. favorite character? That's probably Jace. Right. Um, but that there's is, a lot of... uncommon pick, by the way. <laughs> it should not be. He should be a top tier um, pick. I, I, I like Jace a lot, but... Um, I think there is a reason why he's a less common pick. 
Um, not not for lack of being a great character, but more given the competition. I'm I was I'm torn between Jason Silco. Um, <laughs> okay, it's tough to say. So, um, uh, wow. So uh, on the basis of who's po- the most popular and least popular, where does Jinx sit for you? Um. Mm, not too interested. Uh, she's very well written. Just not something I I have much of an interest in in terms of like a character. I guess it just doesn't quite do it for well, me. But she's do, very well written. In 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 I guess short terms, do you think that in the mold of characters like I Hol- just to say the Harley Quinn archetype feels like it's a little bit <laughs> too reductive, but in that mold, how do you think that she compares to like other characters in that mold? Typically. I can't think of any that are better. I mean, she would be at the top, I assume. I, I can't, no one that I can think of comes close to that, unless I'm just forgetting one for some reason. I'm I assume sure she's the best. Robbie's Harley Quinn. Oh, no. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Well, she, she, the fact that she got three movies and it still feels like she hasn't moved <laughs> anywhere yeah, at all. Basically, yeah, in three movies, we know practically nothing about movies. her. It's so hard to... It's it's so hard to see... Like, they they always try to characterize Harley Quinn as like, oh, this, this, this really poor soul and everything. But she's like, oh, look how she deals so quirky. But it's like, it's when, when we try to... I don't know what it is about Harley Quinn. I mean, she's funny and all in like the Batman animated series and stuff, but I don't know, man, when they try to really characterize her, I have, a, I have trouble believing that she's gone from a doctor to a crazy person just by talking to Joker. I just, I don't know. Dude. Yeah, no, that, that, That's would, a difficult that would be, one. yeah. That, if you were to write the scenes that drive her to, you know, fall in love with him and simultaneously kind of lose her mind and stuff. It's like, yeah, that'd be tough to write. Someone should do it. Well, yeah, you know, like you think- I, I really liked, I really liked the way they did it in Suicide Squad. No, <laughs> where it's just like, where it's just like, yeah, she fell in love with him. Like, yeah, you know, you know the way, yeah, that happens. Just you know, that's what happened. Shut up. What do you mean that doesn't make any sense? You're a bad, <laughs> bad person. Uh, so I. I guess if that's done, I'll go ahead and I'll leave. Yeah. Well, I'll probably... Uh, yeah, yeah, I... When we see oh. you again, I might ask you just some basic end of show questions just so that people get answers. You know, like, favorite scene, favorite episode, if you have any of those, like, you know, just standard normal questions. But until then, we shall... Sure, see yeah. Goodbye. Absolutely. I will see all of you later. Bye-bye. 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 Later on, dear. Bye-bye. 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 And it's funny as well, he... It's, it's, it's like this is it now. The, I think the, all we get is like scenes is the of scene, the Piltover right? council talking and the final scene. Uh, it's like that's yeah, the main we... thing we get. So you have good old Jay says my recent unsanctioned activities have taught me that we are not fit to rule those in our undercity. They are right not to trust us. Mel was right. Victor and I have one final proposal. Peace. And they're already like. <laughs> Whoa, how dare thee? Um, we do cut back and forth to these two big scenes, so I'm not sure how we should go about this. Maybe, Maybe we should take it with that scene first in its entirety up until like right at the end, and then uh, and then just go from the uh, yeah. Lion King so, thing um, until the, the end. council scene makes sense first, right? Up yeah, until a certain point, yes. To me, yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Um. I'm trying to remember. They they propose sovereignty and peace, and they're all like, ah, ah, ah. and then <clears throat> we get a. I think is the next time we return to this the shot of uh, Mel putting down a family ring, and then saying, "I agree with Councillor Talis's proposal." And I think what we're supposed mm-hmm. to gather from that is that if she starts the train, we can get the rest of them then, on board. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this yeah. is huge for Mel. Because this is the decision between her house and what if she's wanted her whole life, or the violence that the war will bring. Mm-hmm. Um, and she ends up choosing to go with peace with Jace's side. And I think we're probably in the clear for saying nothing more until... Yes. Yeah, that's probably yep. it. I think Jace specifically says he made a deal with... Uh, Belka, is it? 
Sitoko, right? Yep. I think yeah, he says that. Mad about that about yes. They're mad about it. So. Yeah, they're very yeah, okay. yeah, they're pretty pissed about it. That's yeah, they're sure. heads. Well, look mm -hmm. at the fucking techno union leader. Look at him. He's just. They ain't happening. Paper! <laughs> paper! Paper! Paper says no. Paper no says no. <laughs> Fuck you, Jace. <laughs> Eat shit. <laughs> uh. Which would bring us to the beginning of the big old lost scene. So, what's really cool, and I, I, I planted a flag for this in the beginning of the first episode, when good old uh, Vi wakes up, the first thing she sees is the, uh, I think you knew the name of it as well, right, Theo? This device? The Valbiani. That's what she calls it, yeah. She's J Jinx's own version. She's, she's made one. And it's just like, it's so quick, and you don't have to think anything of that at all. But if you remember it, then... Yeah, she really liked it. She made her own. Mm. Just a neat detail. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, we don't really know what's going on. Vi is tied up, and Jinx is doing evil villain speech in the background while walking around. Um, and she says that they're in uh, the same area that Vanda was killed. That's like, just where they are right now. Um, and she says, Silco thinks he made Jinx with all of his ranting... Um, excise your doubts, become what they fear, like everything was the same. That's when Vanda left him, but he didn't make Jinx. You did. Which, um, is, is true. If you look at the events, yep. unfortunately, as they unfolded, that one arguably small and arguably wise decision Vi made has had such drastic repercussions that have brought us all the way here. That's why episode three is super like hyper impactful. Yeah, uh, that one scene. Um, and she says, "I never meant to leave you." And uh, as she's like panickingly looking around, trying to find where Jinx is, because she keeps like the voice keeps coming from different areas. She says, um, "I always heard you, shadows in the street, prickles on my neck, your voice pushing me, picking me up." When uh, she says, "When all the colors were black." You're the reason I'm still alive. There's, uh, there's a lot to think about. Mm, good stuff. And then you get the, uh, I think this was a part of, like, this is the climax of the trailer for the show, but she says, are we still sisters? Mm -hmm. and, um, Vi says, nothing's gonna change that. Mm. It's easy to say. Easier said than, uh... Mm -hmm. Just how fucking creepy Jinx is in this scene compared to before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The glowing purple eyes, like, oh boy. Um, yeah, she reveals that uh, Silco's tied up here and she says he took everything from us. He stabbed Vanda here in the back like he would do to me. Um, mm. And uh, he says you'd abandon me when you knew the truth. Uh, so, yeah, this is just everything that she's been dealing with throughout the season, Jinx. She has no fucking answers that she can believe. And, uh, I think then she basically says, like, it's gonna be up to you. Will I be sitting in which chair? And, uh, you got a chair that has Jinx written on it, and it's, like, made of metal, and it's all spindly. And then the powder chair is just wooden, and, dare I say, very noble-looking. I just yeah, like she's I got feel all like, her little sparkly powder bombs over there next to, on the table. Just felt very deliberate that they did the chairs that way, because you know powder's a little more chill than Jinx. You know, a little bit, a little bit. Um, but yeah, and she's also got like places set for Vanda, Milo, and Clagger, and uh, and she says, "Oh, there's one more person." <laughs> and uh, said, "I um, I gave your girlfriend a little <laughs> visit." And uh, this is the thing. This is you know, it's gonna be different for everybody. But she turns up with a fucking platter. And uh, like, yeah, it, for it, for a moment there, it's because like it's Caitlyn. You can't kill. You wouldn't kill Caitlyn. She's barely. She fired a gun like <laughs> once. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Then she lifts it up, and uh, she said the exact it's same. So Reaction is Vi. I was just like, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's in the box? Jinx is just loving it. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, she says, I'm not that crazy. It's just like, not I don't know, good. Jinx. I don't know. <laughs> I think you are. I think you are yeah. crazy. All she does is lift it up, and it's a cupcake with the uh, the gem on top of it. It's yeah. like, oh, mm-hmm. jeez, I'm not that crazy. Yeah, for you? me, it was like... For me, it was like, a, would, would they? They would. But they would. They would, right? But wouldn't they? I, don't, <laughs> I, I, I had pretty much the same reaction, like, oh, no, no, no. And Jinx is genuinely fascinated by how much Vi is terrified as well. She's like, hey, yeah. it really is getting to you. Right. <laughs> they even flash a picture of uh, Yeah, they flash Caitlin. the picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I love how Silka yeah. wouldn't have given a shit either way. He'd just been like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who even was that? He was just witnessing this, like, ugh, cringe. <laughs> cringe. <laughs> I'm the important one. What, who's Caitlyn? Nobody cares. <laughs> I would have totally got the head on. I would have totally got I'm the head on there. I'm just imagining Silka going, ugh, cringe. Cringe. <laughs> 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 Like what? <laughs> um, pops the thing off. You are cringe. Now, Jinx has very simple math here. Does Vi care more about me or Caitlyn? I think an easy way to prove that is that I'll offer to be powder if she just kills Caitlyn. Oh, that's simple. So she hands her the gun. And she's easy. like, kill her, just to prove that we're chill. But Vi's yeah. just like, no. No. <laughs> and she's like, mmm, that's pretty fucking annoying, and proof that I'm not valued as much as Caitlyn, huh? And then she puts the gun on Caitlyn herself. It's just like a matter of, like, God, it, it's so much more complicated than that. Why do you think that, like, just, oh yeah, yeah. just kill her and everything will be great? It's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, I think uh, Silco starts uh, wibble wobbling. And so Jinx is like, alright, what do you have to say about all of this? And like the first thing he says is she's lying. She's absolutely lying. She's not gonna be fucking Her friends name with you. is Jinx. Oh yeah, because yeah. he believes in Jinx. He fucking is mm. done with powder, mm. powder's powder shit. <laughs> and he says, uh, the top side has offered me everything in exchange for you, but they can all burn. Everyone betrays us. They'll never understand. It's only us. You are my daughter. I'll never forsake you. So now there's a lot yeah, to think like, about. Yeah. All that, uh, all that talking about how he betrayed her, and all of a sudden she's like, "Oh man, that's really sweet." <laughs> yeah. He also makes the very good point of like, "Vi will be with you a day before <laughs> she realizes that things have changed." Yeah, that you're not that girl anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Milo starts talking, so she shoots him. A uh, little yeah. teddy bear vision, I guess, or whatever it is, uh, and it makes a glass fall over and smash in such a way that it can be used as a cutting item right next to Caitlyn. Pretty convenient. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, well, we're about to get to how much that leads to. So, as she's talking to Silco, and definitely getting some feels, look at her, she's already breaking apart when he's explaining yeah. how much he should be given a chance and stuff. Um, I think then the she- fact that she shoots Milo just quickly, like, that's that says a lot. She's she's had enough. Yes, yeah. she's... I'm making the decisions now, shut the fuck up. Um, She hears her gun being prepped, Mm -hmm. I think, or at least the release. Look at her expression, like, (laughs) ugh. I'm trying to figure stuff out, Caitlin. Like, seriously. Can you give Um, me a minute? Yeah, and then Silco just looks very like, oh shit. Because something's going to happen here. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's very unclear because anything really could happen. What is um, kind of interesting is he doesn't seem at all caring about his own welfare right now. All he's, all that matters to him right now is whether or not uh, Powder is, or Jinx is convinced whether or not she's Powder. And that seems to be the only thing that matters to him right now. It's the closest to desperate I think we've seen him. His expression yeah. immediately when uh, Kate pulls the gun on uh, Jinx. He's like, um, oh, fuck. But yeah, Jinx tries to draw it to shoot uh, Caitlyn, but Caitlyn shoots around her before she can even pull the trigger, and I think the idea is supposed to be that Caitlyn's saying, I will be faster than you. Mm-hmm. So don't. Yeah. Um, which is interesting, considering you do typically have to uh, spool before you can fire, and she's got a pistol, which is just instant, and she's a very good shot with it. Mm. But 
Uh, Jinx does take that as proof I won't be able to shoot you before you shoot me. Fine. Um, and she's like a little, little goofily does like a eh, button down. And then I think Vi realizes what's about to happen because she then like frowns. And uh, she does a fast shimmer move and uh, grabs the, the gun and knocks it into Caitlyn. So really, Caitlyn temporarily breaking out really doesn't have any kind of effect on anything. Um, mm -hmm. She goes back to being in that position straight away. So down she goes. Because I, I was a little annoyed with the glass. I was like, really? I was like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Glass can do that, huh? Right. I, I can believe that, I guess, but certainly not that quickly. And just, gosh, that's a lucky, lucky... Wombo. Um, but she goes to kill Caitlyn, <laughs> and then Vi starts pleading with her, and does something that's probably not wise. She says, No. Yeah. Uh, damn it, Powder. Remember oh. who you are. And then, yeah, she starts... Yeah. But you have Silco in the background being like, No, shut the fuck up! No! <laughs> 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 <He's trying> to... <laughs> no! Pitch and Milo, it's like, uh-oh. No. The way no. everyone appears to her. Well, yeah, yeah let's let's like, get a look at these uh -oh. visuals, shall we? Already, yeah. it's just like, uh No, it's not helping to picture these people, alright? Yeah. Vi just oh, fundamentally no. doesn't understand just... that the past is not a place of refuge for Jinx. Yeah. Which I think is a really good way of doing this, because how could she know that? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and, um, we talked like... about it on a different call, but it was just recently that we had Vi picturing Vanda and compare that to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> well, so you might notice that Vanda's pictured as kind of a wolf a little bit, so I don't know. Yeah, we did talk about um, that in the first stream, right? The uh, the connection to Warwick. Yeah. But um, that feels like another Just overt, like, it. they knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. They knew. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just it's perfectly in line with Vi to think that appealing to these people would help, but it's a fucking disaster on Jinx's end. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, Silco manages to get at the gun that she put down just earlier when uh, obviously it was all the, the, the big dramas were happening, and uh, he get, gets his chance while she's just getting absolutely fucking torn to shreds in her own brain. But the part that I absolutely love is. He grabs the gun, and we've seen her do this before as well with how this gun works. Because like, I fucking don't know how it works, but I know that before firing it, you do a little, a little twink thing, tink, tink sound, a little thing pops out, and that sound is obviously something that she's going to be pretty familiar with. It shows him, yeah. it does the thing, and then we cut right into her, and she looks up, because that's the sound she knows. She knows her gun's about to be fired. Mm -hmm. And so, just reacts, grabs the Gatling gun, and shoots Silco. Which is a decision. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, There's you know, decision. fundamentally, in that moment, you have to decide, let Silco kill Vile, kill Silco. You gotta choose between well, the doesn't two. Well, doesn't she just, just second decision instinct. to make? Doesn't she just swing around on their, like, shots and... Yeah, oh, no, wait, like that's probably from Silco. Yeah, Silco fires one shot off at Vi, yeah. and it misses. Yeah, he misses. He hits her in the shoulder, I think. Grazes Silco shot first. Yeah, grazes the shoulder. Silco shot first. Um, yeah, I mean... This... Silco, like, Silco was probably very discheesed that uh, Vi was causing Jinx to hurt in that way, and she didn't even realize. This, this expression of just, that's it? I'm yeah. out. That's, that's, that's I'm out of here. Um, and yeah, a lot of people get upset by this in terms of just, no, Silco. <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy. Um, yeah, uh, she, she immediately regrets the decision, quote-unquote, but I don't know that she regrets that Vi's life was saved. You know, it's, it's a very complicated uh, thing, a majiggle happening yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, I've, I've saved one, but I just lost the other of my family. I I don't think she I'm not meant in, to do that. Yeah, she just kind of did it on reflex, because that's what she is. She is just as impulsive as Vi at this point, but to a much more crazy degree. Um, yeah, and then we get another line that's constantly referenced. Uh, Silco says, 
I never would have given them to you, uh, you to them, yeah. not for anything. Don't cry. You're perfect. Doesn't and even care so that he's good. dying. It's just like, oh, let's go make sure his she's last okay. His concern is to I, make sure that she's okay. Yeah. There's yeah. so much to say about his choice to say this last. Uh, mm -hmm. If we go with he wants his plan to be enacted, I don't know, because a lot of people argue that that might be his primary motivation. I don't think it is, because he doesn't even mention it. No, I think his primary motivation is letting her know he loved her. Yeah. 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 And clarifying in no uncertain terms when there's kind of no reason to lie at this point. It's just like, nope, uh, yeah, you're my daughter. Um, and I love you just the way that you are, which is pretty significant for Jinx because, like, a whole issue that she's been grappling with for the series um, is the idea that she is, like, deeply, deeply flawed. Um, like, she either is. way, you know, well, I mean, she is, but, like, you know, everybody keeps telling her that. <laughs> like, Silco, even for better or for worse, I think it's important to specify, Silco completely validated her as, as, as exactly who she was. Yeah, which is something that she has received from nobody else. Uh, it's just yeah. like, not even Vi, because Vi wants yeah. powder, not Jinx. Yeah, Vi um, keeps calling her powder. Jinx. Yeah, but she's not powder. And for what? Wow, actually, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. Yeah, we're almost like there. Uh, later. Just want to comment <laughs> again, the fucking expression in this moment, too. Mm -hmm. Look at those eyes. There's so much feeling in those eyes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then a moment later. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it for Silco. I don't know if, is it now the time to talk about Silco as a whole, since that is the end of his story? Sounds good to me. What a fucking sure, fantastic okay character. Yeah. yeah, absolutely awesome. excellent villain. villain. Um, I think he is my favorite character. Um, yeah, I would, I would second same. that. <laughs> Vi, com Vi comes in as a close second. I like Vi um, a lot. Wow, well, Silco my, is just still fucking good. My second is probably Victor. Um, hey, we're but, close uh, to being able to talk about that. All right, uh, our listings. Give it a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. specifically <laughs> about Silco. It's just a wonderfully complete story. It's absolutely phenomenal. His dialogue is top-notch. This guy comes across as completely in control of all of the horrible elements of his own empire that have all seemed to be in aid of one particular goal that isn't at all evil, the goal itself. It's just that he's so ruthless and he's decided early on in life that the only way to achieve said goal is to not have any limits about it. Which, um, hey. Uh, only to them. Is, is reflects older. lines from a certain... Uh, I want to get a message to Theo and Fringy specifically without saying anything else to anyone else, so... A certain blue person? That should be enough. Mr. Manhattan! Uh, <laughs> she, ah. the blue person... I found that was pretty funny. Fine. ...says, um, okay. if you want to win a war, you must serve no master but your ambition, I think is something that she says. She's got a lot of really good lines, but... Silka would have liked her quite a bit. Um, he's... Yeah, he just spends the whole fucking season be in the Mega Chad, and then right at the end, he gets the exact same situation that he killed Vanda for. There's n it's nothing but meaningful, it's amazing. His big criticism of Vanda was giving it up to the Enforcers and choosing his family over the Zorn. Like, o over Zorn's independence, over Zorn's... Just making a deal with him at all is fucking disgusting. How could you? And then it's like, he gets everything he could ever want on a platter in exchange for the daughter. And Vanda gives himself up wasn't for Vi, well and Silco gives himself up for Jinx, or at least gives up Zorn for yes. Jinx. Silco had no frame of reference for that criticism he was leveling before, but he gets it now. He gets it now. He, that's the really important thing. Like, well, it's a different it's experience can inform yeah. like how well you're able to interpret a, a message or some sort of lesson. Yeah. You know? It's easier, I don't want to say easy, but it's easier to say from the outside you should have given up your family or whatever else. You should have made some great personal sacrifice for the cause. But when it's when it's you, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's a little bit more difficult. Like, people have guessed yep. Nebula and Yondu as my mystery blue person. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's, not, it's not Marvel. Don't worry about it. You don't need to know who it is. Uh, oh, don't worry about it. Yes, Dr. Manhattan, there you go. Um, 
But yeah. I said that like five minutes ago. No, you didn't. You said like <laughs> Dr. Wombat and you said some weird version no. of the account. I even said, even said oh, Manhattan. nobody laughed. That's sad. Yeah, and you said Mr. Manhattan. That's me. different. No, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. Doctor and Mr. are two no. different titles. I don't care. Fucking Wom. I'm Doctor Assist. Um, but yeah, he's gone. His light has mm -hmm. faded. His watch has ended. And, um,. She's fucking completely broken, and then soon after that, she uh, she's in a different she state. Makes a, yeah. Yep. And then she makes a decision. Just look at that expression. This is, I fucking can't get over how That's good this shit is. That's not a The <laughs> information <laughs> I get from looking at these faces, I'm like, I understand exactly what yeah. she's feeling right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say nothing. We got you. Yep. You've got the the spooky uh, mental damage whispers going in the background just quietly. Mm -hmm. So much on her plate. She was probably fucking wrong about Silco. That's what that is. I made a mistake yeah. there. Jesus Christ, he was probably the best person for me in terms of accepting me for who I am. And then Vi is like, yeah, hello? Are you? And then they just have this <laughs> shot where she's just thinking and breathing. And it's like, um... Mm. You, uh, what's going on? I remember at this point in the seat, I was just like, good god, anything could happen right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um. Uh. Makes a decision. Oh yeah, I guess. Very important one. She makes a very important decision. Regarding Silco, yeah. I think it's worth mentioning as well that, um, <laughs> the connection of Vander sees himself in Vi and gives her the advice he believes is needed uh, that he would have wanted when he was younger, and Silco does that exact same shit with Jinx. To the point where his calling her perfect, I'm pretty sure, is simply commenting on what he would have liked to have heard when he was trying so hard when he was so young. Uh, so much of growing and nurturing their respective children relates to them as people as well. It's like, maybe they can turn out better. Um, but yes, uh, her kill count right now is staggering. Um, for people that... <laughs> she's killed, in a sense, both of her fathers uh, as a result of her right. actions. The two of her childhood best friends, and she, she is... There is no powder anymore. Like, this is, this is the big, big moment that's obviously made clear by her choosing to sit in the Jinx chair. Um, it's just a matter of uh, coming to terms with a lot of that. Is uh, she says, "I thought maybe you could love me like you used to, even though I'm different, but you changed too." Here's to the new us. A little Here's pause the before she says, "Even like different in the even though I'm different." The look on her face, like it's she's not all too commonly, like, enormously lucid about what she's become. There's a couple of times, the first time when she says, like, she says to Vi in episode six, uh, things changed when you left, I changed. And then yeah. this time, like, it, it's a really subtle kind of thing to just tell you she is not pleased with how she's ended up. The the thing that's making her so lucid is the idea of wanting to go back to how things were before, right? And realizing how that just wouldn't work anymore and she wouldn't fit into so, that situation. It's today. not even her. That's the problem. This is, yeah. Yeah, this is... Uh, I'm really glad that this is what happened because it just feels more honest to me. You know how like a lot of things do that? Uh, I know you're in there deep down. This is more recognition of... Um, you're right. Unfortunately when you go on a certain track in life and then you have all of these experiences and you do these things, you end up in a place where it's like, ah, oh, no, actually, no. She's Jinx. She could form, she's not she could form a new, better person, but she's never going to be exactly who she was before. Yeah, I mean, well, improve, yeah. I, but she can't, but I mean, she this, can't, she can't, show, start, she can't undo. The show has several episodes beginning with what I would refer to as possibly like core memories, core experiences for people that's defined them going forward. And like, I think the show is arguing, it's like, you can't just undo them. Like, that's. No, that you can't happen. just undo them with an appeal to like, hey, come on, we can be a family again. It's like, what does that mean? Like, the, the person you're talking to is not the person that you knew. 
um it's it's over there there is no like appeal that you can make that can just reverse years of your life in terms of how that forges you as an an individual no People fancy don't change change speech is gonna undo that, that shit. Way. Yeah. There is no speech that you can give that's gonna, yeah, yeah. undo that. And this, especially from Vi's POV, Vi, she doesn't have anything to work with. She hasn't seen this person in so long, and Jinx has gone through a lot of very formative experiences without her. Everything she appeals to is years old and tied to an extremely traumatic memory. I mean, that's mm. the thing for Vi, this is her struggle throughout this whole show, she's just unaware, there's so much she's missed out on. It, it even reflects hardcore with Echo, because Echo's just like, are you crazy? Like, with a lot of the things you're saying, it's like you have no idea what's happened. Um, I love mm -hmm. this shot as well, by the way. Yeah. Oh, that shot's my favorite, with the line over the top of it. Um, and yeah, for she, game fans again, it's like, is she about to fucking ulti? She is, she's about to ulti the council! God um, damn. So, yeah, super stylized, looks fucking amazing. And it seems that Vi knows what she's about to do, and she feels bad about it. Caitlyn is distraught, to say the least. Because uh -huh. her mom's up there. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, also, Jinx screams like hell when she's firing that thing. I would imagine that it may be related that it's painful to fire because of all the energy, but I imagine it's because she's not exactly happy about doing this. I think that's a lot of rage in she there. Just, she just kind of lost yet another father, and now she's just like, fuck the world! Well, and this was Silgo's design. This is the thing. We're almost to the end of the events of the show, and so we can just talk about things in general, but... Um, yeah, we got a flash of uh, Heimerdinger and Echo uh, happily working away and discussing stuff while the camera shows us a clock in the foreground. Mm -hmm. That's just satisfying to see. Mm -hmm. um, and as they show this, each council member is voting yes to the piece. Uh, we mm -hmm. see Silco, sorry, Singed is holding a uh, locket with what we presume to be his now lost daughter and uh it could end yeah. up being that that's oriana as as has been yeah. mentioned before that's the precise same hairstyle it and is. we get a very quick shot of what has to be warwick yeah yeah look at him up there look at him up Which there is, that's what i had missed earlier that's gonna be big it hype comes, it's just so quick yeah people will be excited to see warwick i'd be excited uh yeah, and um, we see that uh, Mel's mum checks out the painting that Theo was mentioning earlier, but it's like scribbled apart, sort of like paint has been splashed over it. Very She's much just faced it with yellow gold. I wonder what that could mean. He is uh, gold is evil. No, it's a color that one would associate with Piltov. No, gold is evil. And she's yeah, saying well, that Noxus is, is evil. evil. No, Piltov was like green. I don't know where you've been. Like fully green. Oh, green. my bad. Um, but yeah, you know, these these are all, as far as I'm concerned, just uh, a flash of a couple of images of don't leave once you hit the credits. All right, we'll be back. There's lots of stuff to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, the next one is, well, there's this, there's this shot and... Um, a friend of mine unironically got confused that Jinx was trying to blow up the moon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and was, that would have been oh, confusing. Wonderful. That would have been very confusing, yes. Uh, like, oh no, she's shooting at the council. Oh no, it's also said, moon. Okay, we're good. He said that when he first finished the show, he was, he was absolutely lost at this point. And so the scene wasn't really <laughs> working for him because he was pretty sure that it's stupid to try and blow up the moon. <laughs> 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 it's such a like absurd cartoony <laughs> thing like Jinx's final plan for the moon. The I mean, moon if I'm looking I'm at this dead. shot right now, it kind of looks like it's flying to the moon. <laughs> yeah, I know it's super stylistic at that point, but um yeah, this probably best no, represents not the, moon. the way these two feel about this event. Not great. And yeah, just to fade into Caitlyn's like, no, mom as well. Mom! 
Well, yeah, who also like votes for peace, which, me? as this is progressing, is getting gradually more and more sad that basically yeah. the entire council have voted yes. Um, like, all happy, it's like, yay, we did uh, it. The we did rocket's it. almost prepared. And, uh, yeah, we just, you know, it's got to be mentioned that uh, they show Mel's back light up. Yeah. Right here. And it looks like she's noticed something. Right before the rocket hits. So I don't know what they're trying to tell us with that, but we'll find out next time because this is the last thing you see before it's over. Yeah. <laughs> Such a cool ass shot. It's so good. Yeah. And that's Arcane. We finished the season with an LT. How cool is that? <laughs> it really <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> Mel's a, for no reason. Mel's gonna be a support character, and she'll her ulti will be to <laughs> make everybody in the room be unable to drop below one HP. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Aoe, Trindamir ult, please no. Yeah, just wait for it. Wait for it to happen. Wait, hold on. No, hold on. That ult already exists. I was about to say. I think that does exist, right? The uh... that's that's Kindred's ult. Yeah. Gosh, Theo, what are you, a shitty lol expert? Jeez. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so uh, roll credits, good shit. Now, what are we going to talk about? What are we hoping for from that cliffhanger? Is my first question, right? Well, right. I'm gonna make a guess and say Jace cannot die, he might even have a shielding thingy on something because he's been putting shielding thingies on all his, all his tech. Maybe he might add have one on him. Who knows? My guess, reality is that everyone dies except Jace, Victor, and Mel. Mel. I'm guessing that's what they'll do. And then Victor mm, might yeah. get very badly hurt. <clears throat> that's probably what they'll do, yeah. What we would like them to do, because this has been discussed in different calls, but uh, yeah. came up with this scenario, which I would like to describe the, uh, the scenario with fucking teeth, okay? <laughs> Season 2 opens with a brutally injured Victor crawling out of that room covered in blood. Yeah. Everyone in there's dead. They've been torn to shreds. Jace, goodbye. And Mel, goodbye. There's no way they'd do this, but that would be the, yeah. the, the balls on them for doing that, you know? And he crawls be, his way... To, I want that to do... I want that. I want that. Crawls his way to the <laughs> Hex Core because that's the level of desperation he needs to get him to mm -hmm. use the Hex Core again to save him. Oh, I mean, we could we could actually see him use the hex core on um, Jace and then Mel, and then like the power is out or anything, and he can't revive the rest. That could be how they live. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't want to say that there's no way for them to do it. That would like not like the idea that they keep the three of those alive, and I can't be happy with that. Is like it'll depend. It'll really depend on how they execute it because they have yeah. dropped a seed in there. Something's going on with Mel. I don't know what it is. If it's as simple as yeah. no, she just has a reflective back and the, the rocket reflected <laughs> on like, Okay. <laughs> but just if, imagining through the window, boing, back out. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing, right? If it's like, uh, how can they execute that? It's like, there's a lot of different things they could do. We'll have to see what they do when they do it. I just don't know. Um, I, yeah, I don't know what we're in for, but, um,. Hopefully yeah. we don't get this uh, this show's normal track record with explosions and plot armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you know what would be the Caitlin worst? Caitlin rolls in there. Is if uh, it opens up and, the, you know, the rooms is rubble everywhere. There's clearly all of the bodies are just on the ground with bits of um, mud on their faces. And then Mel is like, oh, Jace is just ow. standing there. Yeah, and, well, and Jace is carrying <laughs> her and Victor out of the room. And then she's like, what about the others? And he goes, they're all dead. And it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. That's, that's what I expected. God, I really hope you don't have to roll that clip at the start of the next of Arcane Season 2 discussion. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, you know, the funny thing is, if they like... did that, it's not like Season 2 can't still be amazing. It's just, oh, it would, it would just be like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, well, it's like, it's just like, well, I guess we never take explosions in the show seriously then, because like, you know, yeah. three is a pattern. Um, and that's the only reason why I would happily have Victor survive is that his augments already, there's an implication there maybe that he's got something that's gonna make him persist, but I would I would go as far as probably tearing some, some shit off of him uh, in a very violent way because of 
just you gotta you gotta make it feel like it actually has weight to toss a hex tech rocket inside that room, you know. Um. So anyway, it's time for us to open up into all kinds of discussions. Um. May I start with what I believe to be the theme of this terrible show? Yep. Go for it. Uh. Funnily enough, so. Uh, it's been mentioned, and then we're finally here. Uh, it's it's the same thing as The Last of Us 2. A lot of people have already noticed this, and that's not a problem at all. Lots of stories do the same theme, um, to, because there's so many ways to explore it. But the funny thing, I guess, as a connection is that there's lots of pieces in this that really do remind you of The Last of Us 2. Um, a lot of people compare the deaths of Vanda and Joel, and what it means to the other characters and stuff, and it's just like, man, one of them has a lot of a lot of respect and, and, and reverence, the other one doesn't. I wonder what the difference is. I wonder why people hate one and love the other. I wonder why <laughs> the, the idea of The Last of Us 3 is a fucking nightmare, but the idea of Arcane Season 2 is a desperate thing everyone wants. Hmm. Now, mm. I would also want to go as far as saying that uh, there's more than there's always loads of themes you can pull out of a thing. I just mean the broadest one that I think the show is aiming for, uh, which is covered in The Last of Us 2 as well. The simplest way to put it, um, and I've talked about this with a couple of you guys, but, uh, I think, Theo, you made it the shortest of possible, which would be violence begets violence. The point the show would be making isn't necessarily to say that violence is good or bad, or even specific elements of all the different things that can happen as a result. Just that, this shit's a cycle. And I would go as far as saying Caitlin says it explicitly in episode se seven, I think. Um, essentially... The inequality of Zorn and Piltover, that's how it starts, and then that causes more and more tension until somebody makes some kind of mistake. Um, it doesn't even have to be necessarily a mistake, but whatever it is requires retribution from the other party, and then that just creates more and more responses from different people who get caught in crossfires and get more involved until it gets higher and higher, and then start losing lives, and then more lives, and there's just fury from basically everybody involved. You see that from basically the opening scene. The prologue is like the best representation of what this show is entirely about. The, um, get the like a guilt-ridden Vanda looking at, well, looking to adopt uh, Powder and Vi because their parents were killed in a war that he led. Now it may have been that they were, they volunteered to help and stuff, but it's still it's still he feels like he actually talks about this what in episode one or two that whatever happens to and as a result of your. Um, the people you lead, it's on you. Um, which is, I think, just a direct reference to all the shit that he's done in his life. And so, yeah, like, he feels responsible for their deaths and sees the, the, the fight against Piltover, all it did was destroy Powder and Vi's lives, at least to some degree. He's adopting them, his attempt at making their lives better. Um... And you could yeah, just see that on his face, we're going over, like, he drops his weapons in, and instead looks after people. It's like, as a result of how bad the war's gotten. I feel like that covers the whole show at that point in microcosm. But um, the show's story broadly, I would argue, is that uh, we go from that early all the way up to that final scene is just the violence getting more and more and more out of control as the show goes on. Um, we go all the way back, and then like the first thing Vi's doing when we meet her in, the, in episode one after the first scene is that she wants to jump at the opportunity basically to steal from Piltover and the justification is they're better off than us. Done. Like It's a pretty simple math. Um, and all she's got is resentment for, for Piltover. Um, and that event leads to an explosion and hurts a whole bunch of people's lives in significant ways to the point where the enforcers need to have retribution. They have to have someone to pay for that crime. It can't just be left undone in any way, and it, it starts to lead to the inspections and the abuse, and people are getting hurt as a result of Vi's choice to do that. And she only understands, thanks to Vanda, that, that it's it's really on her. She's the one that made that decision, and she makes a very adult decision, considering her age in terms of giving herself up. Unfortunately, that prompts a different character, Silco, been over this, how fucking good he is, to, like, he's got his own perspective on how this is all working, and it's all started with, again, the inequalities between Zorn and Piltover. Um, and it's prompted by Vanda's decision 
to try and make her life better, which is basically all he's intending to do as a result of what happened to their parents by giving himself up. And that just leads to even more people getting killed. There's like all these different lines getting crossed with all these different interests from different people. And uh, getting that deal with the Enforcers makes Silco decide it's time to fucking kill him and take over as the leader of Zorn and produce Shimmer to like a, a wide level with the specific intention of Shimmer being something they can eventually manipulate into something that can be weaponized against Piltover. It's almost like Zorn has Shimmer while Piltover has Hextech. It's just that obviously Shimmer is so much less controlled and chaotic while Hextech, even though it is chaotic to some degree as well, is the goal of trying to make it as um, straightforward. It feels much more like a, I don't know, just, just the representatives of each area as well. <clears throat> um, and that, uh, you know, that's only happening, all that shit with Silco, because Vanda tried to kill him. Why did he try to kill him? Because Silco believed that you should do absolutely anything you can to win the war, which is the opposite of what Vanda wants to believe in. But it it leads to that climax in episode 3. It's what fucking fucks everything up. It's the violence. It's everywhere, and it's bleeding into everybody. But you have Vanda and Grayson in the first three episodes that are perfectly like rep re representative of each side of this fight, only looking to calm everything down because they know how bad everything can get. The, the, the older characters, the more wiser ones. Both of them get fucking killed in episode 3, which I think is very deliberate. Uh, the reasonable sides of both Zorn and Piltover are now dead, so everything's just gonna get worse. It's worth adding to that real quick. Uh, the episode is called The Base Violence Necessary for Change, which is also kind of, I want to say, a message coming out of either the show or that episode. Um, in that, like, some these problems, like this, I guess Vander and Grayson, they aren't changing anything. The status quo is remaining as it is, and a lot of people are not pleased with that. Zorn is still a place of like destitution and uh, poverty, and you know it's a mess. While Piltover continues to prosper. So... Very true. Um... So then, as a result of all of these different things happening, we have that one crystallized event of generating Jinx from Powder. It's all the violence, I think, just that scene gets created by it from all these different people getting all involved. All of them, base motivation is retribution for wrongs done to them by someone else. And um, Jinx then goes on to kill so many people and just blundering her way through how her mind is just out of control. Um, trying to figure out who she even is. Meanwhile, Jace, having been fueled by uh, everything that's happening as well, he's taking the life of a kid, working tirelessly to engage peace. And Mel, having been solely interested in raising like her own station as well as that of Piltover as like a global power, um, ends up denying essentially a Noxian heritage by uh, deciding that peace is the better choice. Because, remember, war is a failure of statecraft, as she believes. Um, and it's at that moment that Jinx destroys the entire council. An event that, I think, previously... And almost certainly, well, not almost certainly, will certainly bring about war. War is happening now. Yeah. It, yeah. Like, there's no way to avoid it There's no it stopping it now, really, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, like, where that was an and incredible... Where that was like a really good huh? chess move for, for Zorn, like that would be great progress, like nice, in terms of just a strategic thing, in terms of actually a war happening, like right now it's just tragedy, it's explicitly, not, not even just because it's destroying the attempt to bring peace, but now that we've gotten to know so many people in that room, and their intentions, and how much they've worked to get everything better, it's just like, and like, where does it all run back to? Like, obviously the, 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 the cycles being from... All the way back to that prologue, it, it it all leads to Jinx and that final decision. And like, what's that going to lead to? And it's just like way more violence. Piltover is going to war. Absolutely, it's going to be uh, loads of people going to die as a result of this. Like, it's absolute fucking carnage. And it's precisely what so many characters were trying to stop, and so many characters end up stopping. In like, how many examples do we have of people committing to violence and then realizing they shouldn't have very soon after? Well 
it's uh <laughs> it's interesting to think about as a as a phenomenon right it's like well we don't want war like we don't want people to die it's like yes we all agree on that yet the council getting blown up it's like well war's happening it's like but wait people don't want war it's like yeah it's not it's, don't work like that you know like it, yeah. it doesn't work like that when we're talking about societies it's 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 people who feel that they've been wrong because they have been wrong but then there's also like well wrongdoing preceded that what were people's intentions it's like well ultimately violence begets violence um yeah it, it, it's it's when someone like Wait, mentioned uh, it's very small scale. Oh, go for it, actually. this starts yeah. with her stealing the hex crystal and it's like yeah but why does she do that to impress silco why does she do that because she's seen she as that? weak yeah. potentially why does she feel like she might be it's like she's got a massive insecurities created by that event at the end of it that event at the end of episode three is the is where everything comes from basically for Ultimately, a lot of people yeah um and that is but this that is why i love it so much that very other... small decision from vi to leave temporarily like how could she possibly have known that that is what leads directly to all those people getting obliterated in the council it's just like you can't yeah no how could you possibly foresee something like that happening and maybe there's an irony there in that she's leaving the situation because she's becoming violent with powder and she's like it's yeah. better that i not be here but like that's what leads to it all um yeah, it was it was a pretty reasonable decision it's like oh let me just totally is that's why i love it so much just just let me have a breather i'll go get her in like a minute or two maybe five but then yeah all the other stuff happens it's like damn uh but yeah jinx created by all kinds of factors but as she says vi is the one that made Jinx. It's like it's that one decision in that one moment that's really the biggest contributing factor. Of course, her desire to basically just take lives without really caring about it, you can imagine that's something that would have happened because of her upbringing with uh, Silco. We've talked about how that would be something that she might find beneficial mentally because of how much the deaths have weighed on her head. And then, of course, just being nurtured by Silco is going to make her probably a lot more villainous than she may have been. But it's that one moment. Um, and of course, like it's 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 not even just that level of her upbringing. You have to consider Piltover's damage to Powder's parents. Powder being told by Vi almost every day of her life that like Piltover suck and they they get all the stuff we don't. Fuck them. We can even beat them up. Who cares? And like how excited she was when she was younger at the thought of going to war with Piltover. Like that would have just been nurtured as well. Is it like what Silco is going to tell her to calm down? It's like no, he's going to tell her that that's probably <laughs> where we're heading and that would be good. Um. Yeah, you know she's she's brought up by like drug dealers and thugs and a boss that wants her to create a weapon that can destroy the entire council. Like it's and it's all because of that one moment. Um, and and she would value Zorn over basically everything else. She's already got that hatred of enforcers that's throughout all of the the stuff that she does, and that's just seven years, which is a very long time. Uh, especially at that age. So yeah, I, I just see Jinx as the complete result of all of the violent action in basically all of the story from as early or even earlier than the prologue. Um, and it's just a matter of, like, this is what happens. And I just love that we have the characters on all over the story that have all these different views on how much you should commit to to violence, keeping people safe, alive, happy, but also defending yourself and having justified... like. You know, Vi is a fucking crazy brawler person who fights everybody at the first chance that she gets able to, but she's still someone who um, sees the value in not reacting that way several times. Um, it may be her first impulse to beat up everything, but she's learned a lot from uh, Vander, and so she really does try to commit a little bit better to not hitting everything she sees, but there's always going to be that impulse. It's going to be her first. Yeah, and uh, so why does Jinx pull that trigger uh, is a question that some people need answering, I suppose, here and there on the interwebs. And I don't even know where to begin. The list is quite enormous in terms of uh, all the reasons she might have to pull it. We could start with the easy one being that it was always the, it was, it was the plans designed by Silco, and it was the one thing he wanted. And he kept asking her to do and told her it's the most important thing ever, as well as... Um, that line that plays when she's 
about to pull it from him saying we'll show them when he first held her. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's that's a huge motivation. But then there's also <laughs> she hates the mood. Um, th there's, <laughs> there's all of the baggage she's had forever in relation to Piltover and its relationship to Zorn. Um, Piltover caused basically, I think she would see them as the root cause of all of the shit in her life that's gone wrong. Yep. Uh, which isn't yeah. hard to do uh, because of just all of the, the horrors that have happened in Zorn as being the, I don't know, the, the black sheep of, of that area. Nobody, nobody in Piltover seems to really care about them that much. Fully illustrated by Heimerdinger's journey. Uh, Not to mention, they were willing to uh, keep everybody's independence away until she was brought in from them. So they basically want her arrested and put away for God knows how long, maybe even forever, or executed, either way. So uh, she's already... They want her arrested or killed, and uh, she ain't all about that life. So... Uh, there's another reason. One, well, um, I think, to a certain degree, she wants to do it. Um, the, the, just the, the amount of pressure on her whole life, as well as her insecurities about power. This is the biggest fucking move that anyone has ever done in the history of both areas. Is the most the strongest thing, the biggest amount of damage, it's gonna have major repercussions. There may not be much in terms of insecurity about her abilities anymore. I think there's a large aspect of bridge burning to it in that she wants to make sure that there is absolutely no way back and that Vi hates her. Which I think... Interesting thought. Season 2 is going to have to do a lot of addressing for that relationship. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And based on that teaser, it would seem mm -hmm. that we are going to yeah. be going in the direction that we ought to uh, yeah. And so, uh... To go after your sister when I was coming back in a box, I think it is, right? Yeah. To bring us back a little, just quickly, to the Harley Quinn stuff. The reason I hate Harley Quinn, but adore Jinx as a character, is the, the difference is just understanding them. The with, quality of writing. Obviously. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> not only... It's literally a fucking crazy, crazy, crazy person, but I feel like I understand every decision she makes and how much she's struggling with everything that's happened to her. Harley Quinn, I have no idea what she's going to do or say in any scene she's in. I'm just like, all right, she's here now. Oh, she's got a hammer. Just yeah. Around. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what was it? We used um, say, I'm walking left and right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. We used Cheryl as an example. Cheryl from Archer as an example. Like, hey, you know when you. It's fucking the laziest shit ever is when writers just say, oh, the character is crazy, that's why they do random shit with, for no reason. It's like, that's not actually um, how crazy people work. Crazy <laughs> people still have consistent patterns of behavior. They're just not based in what we would consider to be, like, reality, right? Um, or they, you know, that there's some, some fundamental... It, so, some fundamental difference between them and a person we generally consider to be rational. It's not that they are well, a fucking I mean, dice. For well, I mean, it's it's like for reference in economics, when it talks about like rational agents, like in in the economy, like rational doesn't mean that you're making like the most optimal decisions. It means that you're operating based on 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 like the belief that you are acting in your interests, whatever they may be. Um, I feel like I just think about that when it comes to like. You know, just people in general. People act in their interests. Or people act in what they believe to be their interests. Um, including Jinx. It's just that her interests are confused and misaligned. But like, it's all thoroughly explained, and a lot of it's done subtly. Which is just... Yeah, like, I, I feel like um, there's, there's, there's no reason to look at the decision she makes and go, Oh, why would she do that? It's like, no, I, no, I, I think I know why she would do that. Never feels arbitrary to me that she has so much uh, inability to decide on who's telling the truth and what she should do next, because she's been so thoroughly betrayed and damaged. And this is the thing, you'd be like, whoa, 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 you, like, you sound like you think she's like a kind of a good person or something. It's like, no, she's a horrible person. Um, it's just a <laughs> very, that very bad person. I thoroughly understand how she got there, which uh, is what we often need for our antagonists, which is essentially what she is. Um, she's an antagonist. Yeah, yeah. If... or at least she will be now uh, in the next season for sure. That's what I really hope the next season's doing. 
I, I, they got to, they got to commit to it. Um, and I feel, I feel like there's reason to believe that they will because they committed to a lot of the unconventional, difficult storytelling decisions. Um, we saw that in episode three, we saw that in the finale. And throughout, too, mm -hmm. there were a lot of other instances where they could have done the safe, conventional choice narratively, but they decided to commit to what would happen, really. Just gives me a bit more confidence. Um, yeah, I think that they earned all of the, um, all of their moments cracking. I think that, but just for example, obviously, the end of that episode six, where he's just just like the the idea of being with vi and maybe that there was more to her life than what she had definitely committed to and then like like in, embracing that for a moment and then realizing like well but i mean i can't really do that it's not really possible and then the next thought being wait a minute is vi lying was i was this not even real because of caitlin and stuff and just having all of that going through your head considering all of her trauma and everything she believes just like i can't imagine any brain sustaining that for very long and she's um, been struggling, like, her struggle, I think, throughout the season is how the hell to define herself and who exactly she is, because she's caught between a couple of different identities, each, like, leaning on a particular individual for support, like, uh, going into the past as Powder uh, with Vi and then Jinx with Silco. But in both ways, she's really hedging her bets with a specific individual and who they're telling her she is. And I think now she's on her own. Bit, yeah. This last bit was a big statement of, no, I think I know who I am now. I'm the person who makes things go wrong. Yeah, a jinx, which is just what Milo told her over and over again. No need for Milo to be whispering it in her ear anymore now that she just no. knows it herself. And um, in relation to the what I think is the main theme, uh, just the, the lyrics of that song again from the opening, which is... I'm not even sure what the name of the song is, but um, it's, Dear friend across the river, my hands are cold and bare. Dear friend across the river, I'll take what you can spare. I ask of you a penny, my fortune it will be. I ask you without envy. We raise no mighty towers, our homes are built of stone. So come across the river and find the world below. Which, it's the it's the summary of everything that happens in this. What caused everything to happen in this was the disparity of living in in both of these areas that's what everything comes down to built over skyrockets the undercity falls apart every time but there's all people down there and then they start to uh feel certain ways about certain things mm -hmm. that's what i mean we, we 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 were far into the story to begin on the repercussions of a war that happened you know but then we're just talking about what are the results of that. It just never fucking ends. And with the end of this season, it's like, yeah, that's that ain't stopping. Oof. Yep. No, no resolution this time. I think things are only going to get worse for a little uh, while now. Yep. There's a lot of bad in the future. Like, I think Jinx still has a way to fall. There's Warwick, who's... That's not a pleasant story. Um, <laughs> mm. I guess, spoiler warning, maybe, but who knows, uh, a lot of Vi's friends or old friends may very well end up turning on her because of where she ends up. Yeah. Which is a really interesting choice now, uh, given all the history that we've got. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like to re-mention, just uh, there are a lot more themes you can pull out of this thing. I just think that's the main one they're gunning for. I would like to talk about what this show is trying to say about fathers. Um, mm -hmm. which, yeah, there's definitely plenty to draw out there. Um, I think progress is another fairly easy one that's tied in with the idea of a cycle of violence, whether or not uh, violence is the price of progress and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just all the, the themes about science and scientific pro uh, progress in general. I guess, yeah, yeah. To, to tie it back further, rather than violence being the price of progress, being the price of progress, change. Um. So, are we, are we are, is there even reason to? But I kind of want to because we always do. But what would be the number you'd give this show if you were forced to at gunpoint? 
Mm-hmm. Eight. Nine point five. Mm. Uh, I think I'm sitting at like an eight point five. I think that's, that's where I'm at. Where I was I gonna, gonna say aim. eight to eight point yeah, five. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, want yeah. to say hey, nine I was the, based on personal enjoyment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it may have I been obvious to a nine, maybe. from the get go, but um, it's easily one of my favorite shows at this point. I was very impressed. Yeah, I want more. Very. God, yeah. Whoa. Uh, Careful what you wish for. for. No, that's a fine wish. I want more of this. I don't want more of whatever they might end up giving us. Bad. Which could be. Bad, but uh, yeah, you know. I think we'll... there's cause for optimism, though. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Standard pessimism. Imagine, as well. they're, they're, getting, fucking... they're getting more than a year to work on the next. The next season won't come out until 2023. Well, I think all we've Good. been told is not 2022. So I guess yeah, 2023 at the earliest. That's fine. Um, Take your time. It seems like they already have an idea for the season two. That that was like definitely. Something they were aware of as an option when they're making this show, uh, and they may well have already started thinking about what they want to do. Um, and I think that there was enough uh, instances of like, man, you you know what you're doing when it comes to writing characters. That uh, I think there's, yeah, I, I, it would it would be baffling if it was considerably worse if we got the same people behind it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, I'm, I'm just imagine that article just fucking arcane writers replaced. No, <laughs> God. <laughs> all of them. Arcane they, bought by Disney. If like Riot like removed and replaced the entire writing team, I'd, I'd be like, I almost don't want to watch season two now. That's like, ooh, I know. That's, that's a big <laughs> naughty. You're not allowed to do that. Um, you your VLC is running better. Okay. okay. <laughs> So, uh, well, who so, is everybody's favorite character? Yeah, that's. Should we should we do the quick version first, and then we can talk about it? Just go right left to left. right. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> the O. Oh, I didn't hear what you actually agreed on. I had left to right. right something else than an O. Okay, so if it's me, Jinx. Silco. Jinx. Silco. Silco. Ah, oh, you broke. Yeah, Silco. You <laughs> broke. <laughs> and, uh, from, Sorry. and from what I've seen, here. the two most popular picks for favorite character are Silco and Jinx. Yeah, Doesn't that makes sense. I, that makes a lot of sense. I do have is sort there... of a caveat though. Like, Silco yeah. is like um, the character oh. I enjoy most on like a intellectual level. I guess I, I want kind of a less wanky word for it, but that is the the level, right? Whereas emotional investment, I'm more interested in Vi. So um, that's uh, so I. I think that they're both mm, my favorites on different who, levels. Who's 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 everybody's second favorite character? I'll go first this time. My All second right. favorite character is Victor. I think um, second favorite is Violet. All right, Jinx Jay, already said Vi, right? Said Vi, right? Yeah. Well, I was like that. They're, they're both my favorites on different levels. Um, Silco and Vi. Well, wait. Are we okay. are we discounting Silco and Vi, or or is it just? Your whatever your second. No, is. I'm just asking who's people's second yeah. favorite is. Right, yeah. Well, so my second would be Silco then. Victor. Oh, oh fine. Sorry. I guess I wasn't allowed to. Say. <laughs> I, was thinking, yeah, yeah, fine. Oh, cool. I looked up my screen and for some reason. No, it's, it's fine. It's, it's okay. Fine. It's okay. Yeah. I'm not so even here. It was Victor, right? I who 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 knows? It was Victor. Yes. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was Victor. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Silco for me. Who is everybody's third favorite character? We go hey, right, right to left, left again, I'm, I'm, or I'm actually yeah, right to left. Ah, oh, this is difficult. Ugh, uh, Victor. Jace. Yeah, mine's Victor. Caitlin, I'm sad that I've not had any appreciation for it yet. Okay. Well, we'll third favorite is Jace. My third favorite would be Jinx. I assume we don't need to go further than that. <laughs> no, that's that's about good enough. Who 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 of the main characters, like main including I guess secondary characters as well, would be the lowest on your list? I say the lowest because worst feels like a bad way to <laughs> describe it. I don't think you can say there's a bad main character. Oh, yeah, I, right, so like, really I guess that's what I, I mean is like who Does would Echo be count? 
Uh, yeah, Ooh, accurate, I but I, I totally disagree <laughs> with that. Yeah. <laughs> For what little time he I don't know. Who, I don't know well, who to pick. Oh, well, language. honestly, honestly, it's just because, like, yeah, he gets the least time. I know the least about him. I feel based on the amount of time I have to know him. So I guess he's my lowest pick. I still hate you. <laughs> if, it, if it weren't him, if it weren't him, it would be Jace. That's that's fine, I guess. Well, what what what's the acceptable answer, right? What's um, the... I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say they're the all so good. I think the uh, the most acceptable answer will be my answer, which is Marcus. I think that's probably no. Actually, I think I've changed my mind on Marcus over time. I think uh, I think me, I have a lot more appreciation for him now. For me, it is very begrudgingly Heimerdinger. What? How is that? How is that more accepting? How is that in any way more acceptable than Echo? I think. I think. I no. How I, dare I, I, you? I don't agree. Because I like I, Echo in the game, so you know. <laughs> oh, it's just my comment. Here we go. Um, God, bye. Plain and simple. Echo. I really like the character, and they did him a lot of justice in the show. I think um, I would go with Mel personally. See, I think I. Uh, I'm not sure that I, I I don't think I could go with her. I'm, right now I'm like hmm, yeah, but it's my opinion, not yours. So fuck Whoa. off. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just thinking. I'm thinking. I actually don't know now. Uh, I don't I know say. either. Because, I asked the question and I don't know. Uh, like choosing between the lot that have been mentioned, I'm just like, but I like them all. <laughs> yeah, I, I like yeah, them all too. Yeah. I didn't Someone in chat was like, what about Singed? It's like, Singed is, like, is awesome, what do you mean? I fucking think Singed yeah. is awesome. Singed yeah. is neat. <laughs> well, is is Singed even like, is he, because we said main, right? I'm like, I'm, uh, what, count, what well, qualifies there? So Singed counts because he's champion, <laughs> I think. He has so oh. little screen time. No, 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 no actually, no, 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 sorry, sorry, Jay, I'm going to have to, because Singed is one of the most important characters in the show. I was about to say, even is Emperor Palpatine not main because he's not on screen very much? Yeah, like Singed is a lot of what happens in this show is because of Singed. He invented Shimmer. He yeah. invented Shimmer. He saved Jinx and t made her, and that was like f definitely bleeding into like the ending there. Um, he taught, there's a lot of uh, Victor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he, which he then results Victor in the change of Victor, which then is going to result in decisions made by him and Jace probably. Yeah, like no Singed is incredibly important. Like he, he's uh, plot important, important, but I'm not sure. No, I I think he, not, I think I'm not I think sure how much being it. plot significant counts for. I would say that it's pretty important when we think about who our uh, important characters are. <sighs> how dare you? Because yawn. like, um, Palpatine is. I mean, he's significant to the universe, right? Well, but I feel that the reason that we qualify him as a main is because he's so thoroughly characterized in the, the few scenes that he has in uh, yeah, Return kinda of the Jedi. Like, kind of like uh, Singed. <laughs> I knew you'd hey. say that. Wow. Well, I'm not Got wrong. Him. Singed wow, is calm down, very Fringy. well characterized. <laughs> Look, I just, I really like Singed. That's all. That's, um, I kind of well, want um, to do a poll where we, uh, where we rank all the characters from right. best to worst. Um, we could do that with Straw Because Paul, of right? the uh, audience. I'm yeah, curious, yeah. Jay, because you said Caitlyn was your third favorite. Why? Yeah, because that's an like unconventional it. choice. Um, I I found her very compelling right from uh, episode four. Um, I found her like just journey to be interesting. Um, right from well, because I found her to be like the more interesting hero archetype, right? Of um, the Mauler, I talked I talked to you about this way more coherently when we actually first watched that episode. Too Do you remember bad. what I said? Too bad, so sad. Do you remember what I said? No. <laughs> I'm, I just, I'm, I'm looking for those words again. Uh, well, Jay finds her hot. That's not all of it. That's not well, all of it. <laughs> I suppose um something that factors into my choices is like layers, and I feel I think like all of the characters in the show are hot. <laughs> like, I think even singed. Even singed. Even Heimerdinger. <laughs> um, I think even uh, Heimerdinger. What's informing my choices is layers. I think I think Caitlyn is pretty straightforward. Not that that's a problem, but I don't know that I would consider it as difficult to nail that as a char uh, like her as a character, as opposed to say like Jinx. Jinx is really difficult to write well because there's so many variables that you have to account for. 
Um, it's kind of the same with Jace as well, I think. Uh oh. You're right. Uh -oh. What's wrong? You'll just listen. I thought. You. I thought everybody was silent. I'm like, wait a minute. Have I like dropped <laughs> off? Like, does nobody have anything to add? I was wondering if Jay had anything to say. Like, I, I guess. Um, all right, Aaron, can, can you repeat? <clears throat> What I so, should have been to what okay, so what what I was gonna say was that the reason why I like I I I think when I was saying like Jinx is third, it's like I think I do oscillate with her like between like first, second, and third. Like uh but but ultimately what all three of those characters have that I really like is they're incredibly layered. Um whereas I think Caitlin she's kind of in the same category as Jace. It's like you've executed on this character pretty well. Um but it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, it's not super complicated, uh, which isn't a problem. Um, I just think I, I find it really impressive to create a character like Silco more so than I think it is to create someone like Caitlyn. Well, I mean, yeah, because Caitlyn's kind of a character that we've seen many times over. Before. We've seen a lot of Caitlyn. Well, that's what, what we say, right? Um, sorry, go on. Just wait. Just clarify. Keep going. But just is that everybody? It, Have I got that list right? Is there anybody else? Oh, uh, uh, oh! Is this a list of every character in the? No, the, the that was a question the that we're calling me. <laughs> oh, right. okay. Uh, um. Uh, where is what? uh? Where's oh uh, wait? Is Vander on there? Oh yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Um. Wait, is Caitlin? I feel like someone's oh, missing. Caitlin's yeah, where's Caitlin? Missing. Caitlin, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, is that it? Um, I'm pretty sure there's someone else that I feel like is not on there. But um, I don't wait, know why. I can't see Jace. Oh, Jace hey, where's yeah. Jericho? Where's yeah? Oh, yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah, where's Jericho? Let's see that boy. Hey, can I take back my first answer? No. Wait, where right. is uh, where is Fishman? <laughs> oh Jericho. yeah, that's, is, that's Jericho. Yeah, yeah. Wait, is this? Is this um? Is this a? Is this like a, a poll where people can rank them in their own no, order, or is it just gonna like pick be, their favorite? No, vote for the least good character. Ooh. Hmm. Were you gonna do a, a best one as well? Well, we already know what our votes are in terms of best, right? True. What I feel like Jinx is actually gonna be. What's what are you saying? Well, have you noticed? Have you noticed what I've done? For how long has it been like that? For about half the stream, I've had. <laughs> Wait, what? What's happening? <laughs> I um, guess uh, Neto has just realized that Gum moves across Jay's uh, <laughs> like, To be hour. fair, most people wouldn't have seen that in chat because I would have to click into Discord to make it happen. <laughs> Jay, speak for a little uh, while. I'm not sure. Hello, um, this is what oh. happens when I talk now. <laughs> I set this up, I thought, you know what would be funny, if I just set this up halfway through oh. the stream, so I did. <laughs> it's beautiful, really. It's pretty funny. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> well, alright, I think the poll's ready then. Uh, let's get this going here, because we need to, we need a fucking answer on this. Jesus. Uh, okay, how do I do this? Share? Hmm. Uh, need more info? Oh. What the fuck? I wish to forget that I have this on and then join like a serious Discord call that I actually need to be taken seriously. <laughs> yeah, you're on like a work meeting with some kind of a multinational network and you got cum floating up. Does this does this link work? Let's find Who the out. least good Wait, character. Click the least good character. That's an interesting one. Okay. Least good is, is a different question to least favorite. Okay. <laughs> Hey, the link, hey, the link, hey. the link works, by the way. Excellent. All right, yeah, it does work. here it comes, people in chat. Here I go. Oh boy, get ready to click. Because if you don't schnitzel. click it, you won't be able to share your opinion. That's what's most important. Mm. You wouldn't want that, would you? <laughs> I feel like message. I feel like Jinx might wipe up. Because of her like Harley Quinness, I feel like that's probably pissed a few people off. Jinx is like the most popular pick for like best. Yeah, but right? I feel like I feel like she also might be one of the most popular picks for the worst. I feel like she might be polarizing. Yeah, maybe. Nah, I feel like she not might have that a, much. I feel, I feel like she might have a popular... I feel like she might have a more popular hate club than any of the other characters do. I don't think so. Oh my god, I'm so sorry Jim's about the current well. results, Theo. <laughs> Uh-oh. What are we Refresh looking at? This. Oh no! <laughs> hey. Oh man! Fuck it up. There are two votes Caitlin for Silco. There, though. 
Caitlin's. What the hell is Caitlin well. doing there? She's uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how many people are voting for Jericho, though. It's okay, yeah, what, hey, did morons, people... this was for the least favorite character. I was about to okay, ask, did people right. read the thing? <laughs> <clears throat> Jericho's like the your best vote back and try I'm again. Offended. I, I, no, I missed everyone, everyone on this sorry, last stream, right? Everyone <laughs> thinks he's best character, and they didn't read the title. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I actually do wonder that, how much what... no title reading has got on here. Jericho, stop it! Yeah, Victor is the other way. Maybe that everyone thought it was vote for fucking. I don't know. I don't character. know how to make sense of this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I no. can't interpret this data. I don't. No. Chat, you Why is Jericho though. in second place? I already told you what this poll maybe was. You taking had a chance Jericho to change. seriously as an answer. Like, maybe, yeah. Jericho how did Jericho really win? He's that, not really there. What? Do, do we just have to, like, remove him and just look at the results as a I think we that? have to remove him. I think, yeah. <laughs> no, I just, well, I don't mean, like, actually make a new straw, but we just have to assume, ignore all of his vote. Well, that's, that's not really how you do data, is it? I no, I know the people who, would, who would vote for who would they vote yeah. for if not Jericho? It's, yeah, all the people who voted for Jericho, you screwed this do... up. It was a joke. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that they're yeah. like, I was just following the rules. What? <laughs> never trust, never trust stream chat to do. I know Jericho. Yeah, you know what? This was a bad idea. Yeah. A, I'm just sure because like, surely they're going with. Surely if they're playing along with the joke, it would. Yeah, it would be to. Not it would be Jericho. zero votes. I yeah, think they're just very simple people. You see Jericho, you click Jericho. <laughs> Disgusting. That's what I have to say about that. Vander it's is the disgusting. least unpopular, <clears throat> least hated character. I feel like it's really hard to hate Vander. Yes, he's really cool. He's a pretty wonderful lad. I am actually rewriting this thing, by the way. Oh, Are <laughs> you serious? <laughs> yes, because we have to. We, th these are not clean results, Theo. They have been. They have been jinxed. We can't have this. <laughs> oh, like jinx from Arcane. Who's that? No. Um. Uh. Just the character. You sound like a nerd, man. Just gonna say it. Wow. It's a bit rude. Is it? Think about it. Uh, oh. And that one. I'm gonna have to unpin my previous one now. Look at what you've made me do, chat. Look at it. Yeah, good good oh, job. Got it. Dinguses. I have not included the legend this time around. Oh. So yeah, Jesus. thanks for that. Clearly Jeez. you couldn't be trusted. Yep. <clears throat> so you gotta do it again. All Reality right. is often disappointing. <laughs> Wait, remove the <laughs> pin. There we go. All right, everybody. Look, we got a new, new, new guy. Worst in town. character. Worst. No, not least worst. Favorite. Least good. Look at this graph. Echo is, is wiping up. <laughs> well, now that we've removed the <laughs> cringe, <laughs> it would seem we oh, know who God. all the votes to Jericho would have gotten. We have got that answer. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I guess so. Gee. Oh man, yeah. There's oh, Caitlyn. Caitlyn coming in there, hot. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> wow. Looks like we have some bigots on our hands. Wait a but, minute. Uh, is yeah. This, why is, is this Vander and Victor just black person up? and lesbian? Hmm. Exactly. I, I, think it's, I think it's hard to hate Victor or Vander. I thought it was hard to hate, yeah. you know, Heimerdinger, but I thought it was hard are. to hate Stilgo, too. Where's the one like, person? Wait, wait. <laughs> well, because, like... Because, like, I do, I genuinely wonder... Oh, if you, you forgot Marcus... Oh, no, you didn't forget Marcus this time. There he is. Um, no, I, I wonder I, how many people who are voting are, like, legit... Yeah, fuck this character. And how many of them, like, I'm, oh, if I have to choose one... I I'm think still it's upset more at, the, the, at the Jericho results, okay? I, I, I refuse to be that charitable. Yeah, I believe uh, I believe Echo has been booted. Wow, bad opinions. But yeah, 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 <laughs> even that. though he has the coolest scene in the show. Oh, that's that's yeah. a good thing. What was everybody's favorite scene from? Uh, uh, I was gonna say left to right, right to left. I don't even know anymore. What should we do from the center? Oh. From it the is center, such a there is no center. There's six of us. <laughs> yes, and that's why I found that funny to say.
Big oh, food. I get the joke now. Um, the the Echo versus Powder scene. That is Echo that versus is. Jinx. Yeah. Oh, it's both. Well, you know, because wow. yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and my my and the bit of it really the the really hits home for me is the Echo versus Powder part. Like that's you know, that's 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 what it comes to mind as. Mm -hmm. It's primarily that for me. <laughs> uh, well, so, it, wait, so we'll do it. J, me, Das, Metal, Frangy, Theo. That's the best way to do it, I guess. I don't even know. Um, what? It's definitely okay. not the best way, but it's the way we're going to do it. Yes. Uh, oh. I think my favorite scene is the finale, literally the last scene in, in whole, oh. just because I think all about what all of it means and why it's happening, and then everyone involved, and the song. The song is fucking fantabulous. Though uh, the Echo Jinx fight, is, it scores incredibly high. Uh, absolutely no doubt. Das's turn. Oh, I would I would have to give it to um when Vi confronts Powder and uh calls her a jinx and everything. It's basically the end of episode three. Yeah. I've gotta give it to that. I love that that isn't even an explanation. It's just like yep, yep. Like, hmm. Yeah, to the end of episode three, that's that's all you need to know. Uh metal. Oh, that's me. I mean, I've already said it earlier, but I, uh, my favorite scene is the one where Jace and Silco are talking and coming to quote-unquote terms. Why do you feel that, that it means more to you than the other scenes that have been mentioned? Because it's just, uh, just a thing where they give the antagonist the choice that normally the protagonist gets. I really like that. Uh, then Jay is just being super confident after everything he's went through and realized that the best, the best choice is to do the whole peace thing and give him what he wants for pretty much very little and basically being a Chad going into his face like, oh yeah, if we do this, you all will be annihilated and it's going to be bad for you. Somebody and said, just, oh, and the one where Silco yeah. kisses Jinx was very moving. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, free. <laughs> um, my oh, I guess is... I guess I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Were you not? Uh, I just Are you wanted, not? Uh, I'm I'm fucking done now. <laughs> well, see, the problem is n most people don't say I am done now at the end of their sentences. I usually just have to go. I know, no, yeah, but but it was a meme They're from, so I was waiting for all. the meme to go through. Um, I'm, I think, well, I'm a carry nice on. People, I think the, man. Meme, the meme is dead now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I just uh and. Silco coming in like super confident in the get go because like oh look at this weak piece of shit he just attacked me and now he's coming around he must be heaven doubt if he's gonna win this but then he's basically just like no I want Jinx and Silco's like uh no and yeah that's the that there you go uh huh uh huh well that's four different scenes anybody who chooses a scene that's been mentioned for their favorite whew, that would be cringe uh Fring, you next yeah super cringe yeah my favorite is uh echo versus jinx on the ah, that, no, that's cringe. Mine. <laughs> I cringe. Yeah. Ah. fine i own that scene i made it myself yep you, you can't just put your little chair in the corner and say it's yours <laughs> <laughs> uh theo ah jesus man um I don't remember him. Either the any. finale, <laughs> either the finale, the finale of episode three, or Echo versus Jinx, and I can't decide. Oh, you're triple cringe. Yeah, that's hyper yeah, cringe. You've got to pick. There's a gun to your head right <laughs> I think now. I'm gonna, I'm, Voldemort's I'm probably, holding it. Yeah, I was gonna come Voldemort. outside. Don't worry. Put fucking get your hat on. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a hat. Probably the finale. <laughs> you do. You have a fucking big mask. That counts as a hat, right? That's not a so. hat. I'd have to ask Braggs. You can have a hat. He's very picky about those sorts of things, but um. Wait, which? Sorry, which? What did you say? <laughs> uh, the finale, episode nine. Ah. Probably that. Uh, what reason does it outplay the others? The character work with Jinx and the final decision she makes. I think. I, I think just working with the character in that scene is really, really interesting. Yeah. Um... And just as the culmination of her arc, like round of applause from me, and the fact that they chose to fucking end off on a cliffhanger. Which is, you know, kind of bold. Yeah, and that's fine with me as well because this we got such a big meal. Uh, the idea that yeah, but you didn't know what happened to people in that room. It's like I'll find out. I've still gotten plenty to to eat. 
Uh, it's just certainly a season's worth, I guess. Uh, Stop eating stories, Mola. So, Echo, <laughs> I'm afraid Theo has lost. That's definitive right there. That's proof, actually, yeah. that he is the cringiest. Like Caitlyn, the second place. Hold on. No, I need Wait, to ask Wait, someone's voted for Victor and Vander now. Those, oh, God. Well, three people have voted for Victor and Vander. The horror. Yeah. The horror. But How often do you see good opinions come out of chat? That's all oh, I'm asking. Oh, chat! Get him! You gonna take that? <laughs> well, I mean, Victor and Vander are the least voted for options, so I'd say that's a good opinion coming out of chat. And then Silco is next. Another very good opinion coming from chat. But then you then got... Then Vi and Jinx are next. Caitlin's another great the opinion coming from chat. Who, well, yeah, that's true. No, fuck chat. <laughs> 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 Just remind <laughs> Jay of his favorite character ending up at number two for least favorites. Like, yeah, chat are ridiculous and must be ejected into space. I well, but then, like, saying above above her is Heimerdinger. It's like, man, no, imagine Heimdinger not liking not. Heimerdinger. Who doesn't like Heimerdinger? Point to the person. Exactly. Oh, nobody's, well, remember, nobody's saying that they don't like Echo. They're all just saying that they, he's the least. Oh, I'm sure that someone yeah, is saying they choice. don't like Echo. Yeah. <laughs> No, I want to see in chat, racist. does anyone here who voted genuinely dislike the character you voted for? And if so, who I... did you vote for? Well, hey, Kyle said, me, I don't like Hyma. How can you not like Hyma? Hyma could have been better used, though. I would need to well, see... It sounds like you like him, you want more of him. Yes, you just like Mal. I cheered really? when I thought Echo died. Oh my god. What? <laughs> That's a bit rude. <laughs> so many different opinions in chat right now. <laughs> yeah. They're everywhere. <laughs> uh, I met on Echo. Well, you can't even spell his fucking name. Wow. Yeah, I learned how you spell Oof. it correctly yesterday, and I'm going to act really high and mighty about it. Wait. Why did you think it was spelt like the way that it's normally spelt, and then you found you out? I'm not gonna it? lie. Yes, I did. Well, look, that's okay. We all make mistakes. I don't. What matters is that we don't repeat them, right? <laughs> that sounds like a that sounds like a Silco line. It was a Silco line. That's sure probably why it sounds like it then. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a good judge of these things. <laughs> you have a Silco line detector. I my Silco die. Patty Jenkins in the form of a pop figure, huh? Wow. <laughs> Why? I can't wait to pick that up. Someone's gonna send you I that. If you, if you have a PO box, someone would send you. Also, that that's one. number two, apparently. So there's only one more that was chosen, like I guess first. As a choice. Well, you know, how many of these do you think they're actually manufacturing? I I have no idea. Seven. Two. Patty Pops? <laughs> I didn't know that this was a thing. F vinyl Funko Pops for directors, specifically. I think there's no a Ryan kidding. Johnson. If there's a Patty uh, wow. Jenkins, surely there's like a J.J. Abrams and a Ryan um, Johnson. I'm interested to do is a poll of who the best one is. Do you think we should allow multiple answers or just one? No, one. One. Um, let's go with one. I, I don't know multiple. It seems fair. Oh, you can I mean you could do one of each. No, see how that changes make the results. Make that could be commit. interesting. One. One. Make them commit. There yep. seems to be more passion on the one side, so I'm going to go with them. Yeah. Fine. They. T I'm sorry. They just wanted it more. I feel like this is not yeah. going to be a contest, honestly. I, sh <laughs> I, I shouted uh, louder. Okay, that well, makes wait. me right. Uh, who do you think is going to win then? Because I'm not go. sure. I'm going to say Silco. Silco. Silco's gonna win. He's he's gonna oh, win. Silco's hands down. He's gonna win. Yeah, especially because we've spent what three consecutive nine-hour podcasts giving him a tongue bath. Four out of six. Oh my god! Yeah, like every time, every time we showed up at a scene, we we're like, yeah, those Four lines. Four out of six. Said that he, would, <laughs> that, uh, he was our favorite, and I saw a lot of people in chat also. Hoomer Duber. <laughs> oh yeah, I called him Hoomer Duber. <laughs> Hoomer Duber. Yeah, 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 look at that. Yeah, already. Hoomer Duber's, you know, doing all right. He's, he's got himself <laughs> five votes, you know. <laughs> you know, whoa. Hoomer Duber. <laughs> look at That's him go. Hoomer Duber. Hoomer Duber. wonder if that spelling has actually influenced more people to pick him. <laughs> Probably has, yeah. Wow.
He's he's voted above Vi right now. I think you lie in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I love Humaduba, but to be fair, I, re I basically like Vi all of these so characters. Vi is so low. Vi, well... Well, is she anybody's favorite? Everybody likes her a lot, but uh, is, would she be anybody's well, favorite? Well, Dastardy was second favorite. Yeah, that's true. I said she's um, my second Silco, favorite. Silco is the character that I think is the most, like, the biggest achievement in terms of writing craft, and then um, Vi is, like, I, my personal I, favorite. I, I, Jinx, one Jinx, I think Jinx is. I but... think it's probably Jinx, I, yeah. If, if we get a lot of roboting right now, I'm getting a lot of robots. I don't hear any robots. I don't, no, I've there were no robots. I've yeah. seen people no. boop. Uh, well, there was, it was a brief robot, but we're good now. Like yeah, look at him run away with this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one. But uh, it's interesting because it's like it's between Silco and Jinx. Victor and Vander are the next sort of tier down. Competition. Even but, though. Uh, Kate, yeah. Caitlyn is very. And, and Echo. I'm actually surprised to see Jay solo. I think it's neat I'm... that Jay voted for Caitlyn, though. I actually did explain. not vote for. I voted for Silco. <laughs> oh, well, there's one vote for Echo too, so I could have voted for Echo. <laughs> the sympathy vote. <laughs> yeah. We Nobody each put, give a coke vote to our character. Nobody's favorite is Savika, which makes sense. It's fine. That doesn't surprise me, but you know, he's a backstabbing cunt. Oh my well, god! You can't say that. Uh, he, ju think... he literally just said that, you fucking moron. I think it's interesting oh, yeah, that Jinx yeah. has managed to score that. this high with a lot of people. Um, yeah. I think they must have... It's, it's, that is a hard character to nail, dare I say. I would it's, say so, yeah, I think it's hard we... to write characters that don't properly process well what they are feeling. That's something I have a lot of admiration for as well in terms of writing. That very human experience of having a lot of feelings bouncing around inside of you that you don't really know what the hell to do with. And the show really knocks it out of the park with Jinx in that regard. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the J score, um, I've seen that reflected in a lot of the subreddit discussions for Arcane, where he's just not popular there at all. People like Jace is meh. I don't think he is. He's not mad. Dude. No. I think he's very well written he's and really goes through good. a very important set of events, but uh, there's something about him that people just don't find him as compelling. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it is. Maybe he's less complex than the other characters? It is interesting, that's, he because he has... Out of all the complex characters, I'd say Jace is low on the list. Um, I but I feel Jace like he's sufficiently complex. complex, though. That's the thing. He's still good, but now you got, like, you got Silco and Jinx. My god, are they complex as shit. They're very fascinating. You don't get a whole lot of people like Silco and Jinx, so I think a lot of people are like, damn, they finally I... did it. They did this character archetype that I could get behind, dude, and I haven't seen much of it. I think there. Jace is a kind of fairly unique character uh, archetype in that regard, though, because like I described him, he's a character who's very idealistic and has a lot of energy and a lot of like drive to do good. But he's got sure. all sorts of voices pulling him in, in different directions, and he doesn't know how best to use that the the power sure. he wields. But I think we can argue that we've seen characters like that before many times. Same with uh, Caitlyn. I don't how like who. This isn't no, even a meme, this is like a... reality. It's reality. <laughs> it, it's just kind of like a... <laughs> That's the fucking... <laughs> the little eyebrows. <laughs> and we've got these pictures as well. Um, we've already... That's just raw sewage, this isn't... This... What is happening here? <laughs> that's, that's Book of Boba Fett. Um, Isn't my thing just amazing? <laughs> That's just raw sewage. What the fuck? Well, you just hate, bigot. <laughs> the other one is uh, your arcane. Despite a few structural flow yeah. flaws, I'm guessing the overall quality of this is the absolute best we've seen in a long time. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, she sh she should be happy. Old Vi is representative of the show. It's not exactly like for those who have been through all three of these streams. We think pretty highly of the show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. We don't typically it's, find that it, uh, that often. Exactly. I would say so far that it is the best show that we've seen since Breaking Bad. 
Um, now all it has to do is lie. pull its lie. Fly. Yeah. Lie. Uh, why was right? I would rate fly above this. <laughs> Daz is like, well, I mean, it was okay. What the fuck are you guys all talking about? <laughs> yeah, I think you're fly a is better liar. than this. Even if I like this more. You're a liar. Fucking yeah, you liar. are a liar. Um, liar. But yeah, I think I think that's probably it. That's it's over. Silco is the clear winner with Caitlyn coming in last. <laughs> Yikes. Hoggy. Wait, some, someone voted for Savika. Yeah, Savika's gotten two <laughs> votes. Um, the pity votes because we mentioned her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, Singed is below Savika now. It's like, damn. Well, they're equal. Well, they're well. even. It's oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. It as being because, I don't know. Well, probably because he's below her. You gotta work on that. Yeah, but he's not actually. No, he is. He's numbers. literally below her. Can you see that? Yeah, she's but there, like, and then you, you go about... down, yes, and he's but... there. So he is below yes, her. It, in the sense of below, what we're we talking yes, about. Literally statistics. below her. I, I just think that yep. that's a fail. Literally time. below. And Heimabuba is bo above both of them. Heimabuba <laughs> <laughs> is above both of them, yeah. Heimabuba. Um, but I don't know. These results, I guess, make sense. They line up. I think that to makes some sense. It's pretty. I like how how well Vanda typically scores in New Zonian three. Yep. He's just such. How, how do you just like Vanda? How do you dislike him? He's a good Heimer, and he left a strong impression on everyone. I, I think everybody's about to have a favorite character later. Um, Muller, another question for the cast. Where does this show rank among your all-time favorite stories? Second favorite. Oh, Schnizzle, what's your first? Breaking Bad. Oh, fair enough. All right. Um, I come back to it a lot more than I feel like. Well, I since you were been, first, so. should we, to, to match the order, then go Metal, and then me, <laughs> and then Bringy <laughs> Theo J? That's, is... That makes sense. This is really sure. stupid. <laughs> I have no fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, literally, whoever you, wants to go down. This is the price you pay for my enthusiasm, so Yay. fuck you. Uh, I'll just go next. I, I think it's like second. Two. After Bly. Wow, all right. Um, I know it's in my top five. I can't be certain it's in my top three, but it's close, but it ain't my number one. It probably isn't my number two. But it probably fits I'm gonna, in. I'm gonna neatly. guess your number one's Buffy. Uh, yeah, Buffy and Angel as a as a package. Two, um, <laughs> I think is Bly. I very much love that fucking story. Uh, and then yeah. this show, it's then in the running. It could be it's competing with other things. Um, but hey, like if we get another set of seasons that are as good as this one, and they tie into each other like significantly and stuff, it could get its way into being number one. But, I mean, it's pretty fucking impressive for one season. Absolutely. Bly doesn't have enough fight scenes. True. true. <laughs> that is very true. It's also not scary. Nah, I didn't find this scary. It was, it, it was mis... It was, they said it was horror. It was really just girls kissing. Yeah. Which is kind of scary, but... You don't scary find that horrible. People. I mean, uh, yeah, of course that's not horror. <laughs> Alright, who's left? J I have not, I'm not thinking, but I don't, really, I don't know. I'll, I don't know if I can rate my favorite stories, you know. Well, you got no choice of chatter asked. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, I guess it's definitely. I don't know. Wow. All right. Theo and Fringy. <laughs> Do you want to go first, Fringy? I still need you to think. Go for, well, <laughs> so that, I was, for me, I. Uh, I don't think I often, like, pick a favorite for anything. Uh, there's usually, like, this big group of things that I value uh, sitting up there. When I think about my favorite stories, it's like, again, it's always going to be this big, vague group of... Well, I guess not big. It's it's a, I guess it's a reasonably small list of, like, super-duper favorites. But it's... It's, um, it's high up. Um, but I guess... You know, like, if you were to ask me, well, what world do you prefer? The world where Arcane exists and The Simpsons doesn't? Or the one where The Simpsons exists and Arcane doesn't? It's like, that's easy for me in terms of choosing The Simpsons, because I value it really highly. But the problem is, it's like, well, do you value it highly as a narrative, or do you value it highly for its comedy? And there are a lot of shows that I value highly for their comedy, 
not strictly their narrative. Um, so it's a bit hard for me to figure out where exactly it would sit in terms of my favorites. I really, really do like it, though. Okay. Um, shit. <laughs> uh, it is. It is definitely in top five. It's certainly in top three. I think. You probably could have uh, just died with the three one instead of the five one then. Well, I'm working it out in my head as I go. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I was doing a process um, of elimination as I went. The latest Simpsons 20 years are pretty garbage, though. I, Dude, you got like like a solid eight or nine seasons there of gold. I don't oh, How sorry. are you meant to look past that? And also, the 20 seasons aren't garbage. This is just not true. There's like yeah. a lot of good seasons of Simpsons that follow. They're just not as good as uh, even as, as the Golden Age. Even the new stuff, even the very new stuff, it's seen a bit of a, a revival, and it's not as it's certainly not bad. At least the stuff of it that I've seen, the very new ones, which isn't much to be fair. Arcane but probably scores third place. Still better me. than like oh boy. a shit ton of new animated comedies that are coming out. Sorry, what? Third place, Theo said. Third place. Not bad, not bad. I'm not at sure. All. It might um, be second. It's like tied with Disco Elysium. Well, so that was something that was fa in my brain as well. It's like, what about like movies and video games? These all slot in when I'm thinking about favorite yeah. stories. I was trying to pull from everything. Oh, sure. I was just and, thinking uh, about serious, to be honest. I think we can make it easier by yeah. saying just consider TV shows. That's not easy. Just yeah. considering yeah. TV shows. Yeah. Uh, does anime still count? I don't fucking know. That's yeah, TV yeah, anime. Yeah, 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 TV yeah. Shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why could, did you have to ask that? How could Arcade count, but anime is disqualified? Like, that's not fair. I don't fucking know. People have weird uh, fucking, you know, classifications. Wow, calling me so weird. it's second place then. All right. Um, I think I, it's something I need to... Because, I mean, for instance, when I think about uh, Angel, I think that was one I had to sit with for a while. Before I was ready to be like, oh boy, that show. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think it's the same here. It's like, I think I want to sit with it for a while before I start making a decision. It's Completely very impressive. Fair. Well, and that's the thing. We've probably missed uh, praises and criticisms. Um, obviously, the comment <laughs> section should be able to take care of it, as well as maybe the subreddit. Um, though, this isn't the end of talking about Arcane because that video has to be covered. It is so tismy. Um, I imagine that video will make me really angry. Oh, it will. Right? It will. You're gonna <laughs> you and Rags specifically, because Rags is very much Ooh, likes boy. Marcus. Marcus is. I nearly said one of my favorites, but I can't say that because then I'd be including everyone. But yeah, he's yeah, really I, good. I know what you mean. Um, these are pretty good memes, by the way. I like all these. Yeah, Long Kong. <laughs> <laughs> We watched Long Kong. It was called The Book of Boba Fett, episode 7, for a bit there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we can't fit Arcane into this <laughs> podcast. Like, maybe if we do multiple episodes. Oh, yes. We well, actually so, I think a lot of people in chat now are asking Theo, what is your first with that anime qualifier? Not allowed to know. It's no, the Monogatari that... series. Okay. I've never That's heard of that. <laughs> yeah, don't watch it. Oh, <laughs> I wish Joe, Theo, don't watch it. Theo doesn't Why want not? more people who don't understand it to watch it, right? That's what it is. I'm sure of it. I'm, I'm actually really I curious just, what's motivating that, though. I just don't want people to watch it. <laughs> what? Like, why? <laughs> That's just odd to me. It's like, it's my favorite show. Don't watch it. <laughs> Look, what? when you've been in enough internet arguments, okay? Okay. Are you worried that we're going to say it's shit? Well, partially, yes. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, oh, it's springy. I don't know if you've seen this before. Definitely an arcane meme. It's still loaded for me. It takes me a little while. Oh, you're going to have to click it as well because there's a bit of text. Or I can read it out, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess I was coming first in this Mario Kart. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay? Look at it, it's a whole thing. It's a whole meme, look at all these drawings. Oh my god. Oh my uh, god actually indeed. a front for Friggy's Gulab, uh, to which, uh, what's the situation in the lanes? Who's, does someone uh, else want to read I, the, uh... 
I think it's Savika is the purple then. So I, I yeah, right. Silco's dad. Both cities devolved into chaos. Pity. He was quite a useful asset. <laughs> Despite everything, we secured all the necessary data about Shimmer. It uses and it it's oh uses its uses and long terms if it's long term effects. I'm afraid that's useless to me now. Get rid of it. And then, and then during EFAP, was that 142? 172. 172. All right. It's the consistency. After careful examination, I've concluded it's not viscous enough to be classified as goo. <laughs> this other thing I've been working on, though, it looks much more promising. And I think... There's a lot of green that's goo a, there. That's Zach, right? That is that so. was a tease of Zach when he came out. <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. really good. I I like making that. Zach. He's got a that's a great to do it. Goo everybody. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good meme. It's a good meme. <laughs> good shit. That's seriously, that's really cool. Whoever made it. Um. So this isn't even arcade, but it's something I just want to show because I got it recently. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up surrounded by Kirby. No, it is wonderful. Yeah, Throw the coins in the helmet as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> These Kirby memes have been awesome. They're <laughs> <laughs> really good. It's not worth it, Kirby. Don't try and gain his abilities. <laughs> You're getting dumber. Um, he'll, he'll learn how to use stick. And that's his ability. I think I, I keep forgetting to show this on stream. I think we've have we only shown this on um, in calls. We ever shown this on stream? I think we might have. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Well, throw so it up there. this is something really neat. Uh, we've talked a little about all the costume design throughout Arcane being fucking great, um, but having the letters most associated with them in their clothing, it's just like that's really cool. Mm -hmm. oh. That's just uh, that's just. That's art direction right there. <laughs> Character design, <laughs> fantastic. It's people with an idea. You didn't have to do this, but you did. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. You will learn rifle and stick. I think the quote is, he says, I will take rifle and stick, and I will go to... Destroy the gun train, I need the stick. <laughs> Oh, and yes, and there was this one. I met, it, it, it came in and regrettably could not make it into the last of the um, Boba Fett recordings, but um, an important meme. Sad that Rags isn't here to appreciate it. <laughs> oh, you've got to save that for Rags. I can show you've it. You've got to him. show him. Yeah. Got to show him on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of pride in Fringy's stance there. He's like, this is, this is I'm production. I'm so proud of the cream, but it's not cream, it's goo. It's my goo. Rags, you know, not having a good day. Something I thought of that would be really fun. I like the idea. I want to, uh, I, I always talk about it. I want to dabble in, in, in video game making. And I, I remember the other day, I was like, I feel like there's got to be an idea of a video game where you play as me trying to, like, make goo. And, like, you're trying to produce goo for what, you know, like, you, you got to go through the experimentation phase and then you got to, you know, start doing, like, distribution, manufacturing. Goo tycoon. Like, scale it up. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, Fringy's Goo Tycoon or something like that. Um, I, I like that as a concept. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, it's sort of like Factorio, except you're making goo. Yeah, and uh, goo related yeah, products. Like, yeah, it's it's all it's goo and other uh, yeah associated adjacent um, substances. Yeah, call it tygoon. 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 That's a good meme too. Yeah. Can't get them. He's got the gas mask already. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. Are there, are there what? Because this is the thing. I just want to make sure we've covered all the things we wanted to say, and then maybe have some like summary things about Arcane. But um, is there anything you guys are thinking of, or you, do you feel you know what we've we've exhausted we've the topic of Arcane? For a long time. We really yeah. have. Yeah, oh, I no, would say there's nothing no, more to be said. I that it was good. Those are my notes. Please write more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Well, needless to say, when Ar Arcane season two comes out, we'll be watching it as it releases. We won't be waiting. 
Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. We will That's for sure. We will give it big thumb, up bum, to see what's going on. Ooh. Uh all of the production elements just just top notch. It's not even just the writing, which is always nice. Um Oh, the, the fucking animation, holy production shit. Production elements the animation in yep. service of the writing and to, you know, make this a really strong audio-visual experience and to complement what's going on in the writing room. There's a lot of communication back and forth, it feels like, between all of the people who worked on this. Someone said, I still don't like Arcane. It would be weird if everyone liked it. So, it's good that there's the least Well, person. Max, I say to that, relax. I'm oh, used to being in a position of like outright affirming something that is universally loved and super popular. So you know, if more people could dislike it, that would be cool. Yeah, it makes it easier for us to like it when it's not as popular. Well, I wonder what the one star reviews of Arcane say. No, I've seen what not. Arcane critics say. That's I've not. seen it. It's not. It's not good. <laughs> you don't need any more of it. Well, I'm just gonna have a look, and I will share anything if I if <laughs> I. So the studio is to. French, right? I couldn't tell from how good the show is. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's something there that needs resolving. All right? <laughs> them French, That's really funny. Damn them. <laughs> He's like super pleased. He finishes watching it. He's like, oh, I wonder who made that. Looks up, sees Fortiche Productions. His face just falls. How could this be Fred? That's <laughs> 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 um, funny because you're shitting on the French. Yeah. What are they going to do? Surrender. <laughs> 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 it's not even been 20 minutes yet. Mm. So, um, that's Arcane. Okay. Season 1. Eve out coverage, three full episodes, and yes, they are full episodes, all right? I won't be hearing anything else, you long goids, you long, long yeah. flumes. Um, and I think we're probably going to end there, specifically because I don't have a lot of time left today, unfortunately. And um, I'm very close <clears throat> to getting something completed. Okay, chat? Oh my yeah? God. Getting something, something close. He, he is very close. I can vouch for that. He is. When this day stream will happen, I was just going to say that the super chats from this sure. stream and the previous one, it'll just be an arcane catch up, I imagine, next Wednesday. Um, well, the coming Wednesday, I should say. The uh, but like, so you got nothing. Nothing's coming out Sunday anymore, all right? Boba Fett's dead. Fuck. It's dead. done. And we can finally Thank get back working on things that aren't Boba Fett. Okay, can we go now? I don't even know what I'm referencing there. Some show or movie. It's fine. Oh, I think it's Newt from Aliens. They're dead, okay? Oh. Can I go now? Yeah, that's what she said. Anyway, um, so this will be re-uploaded on the Sunday. And then Wednesday, you get the stream. And then Saturday, we'll be doing another EFAP of some kind. I'm not 100% sure which one that will even be yet. But at the end of that EFAP, I will tell you what the video is. Because it's that close to being done, and it'll likely be done by then. Sure. God damn. Um, finally, am I right? It's been a while. Uh, we I've just been working on it for 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 all of the the things. Um, and I didn't even tell anybody what it was yet. Fring, on the other hand, told everybody what what he's working on. Fool. I did, and that was my mistake. <laughs> it's <laughs> coming, all right. I'm working on it. <laughs> it's ha I'm working on it every day. It's hey. it'll be done eventually. But, um, it's okay to tell people what you're working on. Release. No, it's not. It's not okay. It's literally evil. Uh, the the release. I'm working on a Lego Star Wars video. Evil. Fuck you. Evil. Release date for the video is is pretty much intended to be uh, the fourth of March, and there's not really anything that should stop me from doing that. So um. Oh boy. Hype. But I I rudely prevented Theo from saying something additionally to what he was saying. You may oh. now continue. I just. Uh, someone in the chat uh, mentioned they wanted to uh, uh, all each of us to answer the question of favorite song in the show. I don't know if we have time for that, but uh, you know, finale song for me. Yeah, finale song. Yeah, finale. That's great. <laughs> I really like the song when it's uh, Vi and and, um, and, Chase, and fight. Chase fighting those people. I mm. really like that one. I don't know. I like the um, the, the 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 bridge fight, Jinx and Echo song. That one's really good too. Yeah, dynasties and dystopia. Well, oh. uh, Das. Mm, I'm having trouble with that one. I don't know what that song. Good. Is. There's a couple of good ones. 
Well, I would, yeah, then I'd have to go ahead and go with snakes. The, uh, the one where, uh, Vi and, uh, Jace are battling the dudes. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Well, good. Wrong I mean, it works with, it, it definitely works with what it is. And then, of course, I, it's either that or goodbye. Because it's like, oh, after the end of uh, episode three, it's stung. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, is that is that it? Is that it? Have we done it? That's all I got. You like forgot to do all the super chats, Molo. I shall <laughs> get to them. We're going to get to the lot of them. And it's going to be real sexy. Trust me. Give me that big old sexy trust. Uh, mm. Though, I was just thinking, there are no more of those types of questions, are there? Like, um... Favorite thing that thinged? I think we went through them all, right? I find that um, favorite episode is a boring question because it's just like I don't even know that anybody here has an easy answer for that, other than choosing which episode has their favorite scenes in it. Yeah, I was gonna say most often it will just be I pick the episode that has my favorite scene. (laughs) Like, yes. Um. Favorite hair of a character. <laughs> I mean, if we're talking like favorite character design, that might be a. Uh... Hmm. hmm. I oh, think it boy. might be. I think. Uh, I was. I was. I'm. I think I'm. Uh, I really like Mel's character design, but I also like Jinx's character design as well. I think that it's an improvement on the video game. That's oh, that's for sure. Massively. Agree. Uh, Silco is a pretty cool character design as well. Especially with his coat. Heimerdinger. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, I'm just going to start listing them all. <laughs> Not ironically, Jericho. He's pretty cool looking. Yes, he is. <laughs> the techno union guy, hell yeah. Wonder if there's just a pile of gears on the floor at the beginning of season two. <laughs> it's like, oh no, there he is. <laughs> no. You hear a vague, like, winding down noise. You guys missed when Mel's mum said that Mel's Mel weakened her. It was pretty huge for both their characters. That's true. We did we did miss that. We did actually miss that. Yeah. My bad. That. And it was a pretty good scene. Amongst yeah. all of the other... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard <laughs> for us to record scene. everything, honestly. And there's going to be people out there who are like, can't wait for them to get to that scene, and then we don't even mention it, and they're like... Oh. <laughs> I listened for 20 hours and you guys don't even fuck. <laughs> I apologize for that, but um, I guess if we can talk briefly about it, it's uh, Mel uh, probably never got that answer from her before in her entire life. But the reason is, is mm. you made me look weak because uh, Mel didn't have the balls to kill their political enemies where needed. I couldn't and fucking. No, no, no. She didn't say that. She says because you weakened me. Like she couldn't stand the look in her eyes whenever it was told, whenever it was time to do things that were necessary to do. Well, that yeah, but so she so, didn't say she looked weak. So yeah, but the idea is that whenever people needed to be killed, which is the right thing to do, I uh, from her POV, she would just judge her and be like, hmm, and then that would make her question and whether or not she's doing the right like thing. Super, um, which yeah. is bad for her as a leader. Yeah, you're no, you're right. That that uh, clarification well is like important. The parental look. It, it's another take on the whole family thing that the show has. Duh. Yeah. I'd say she lost her nuts. She was struggling to do the things she saw as necessary because of her daughter. Hmm, makes you think. Um, you guys also missed it when Savika said, Vander had his chance! Yep, that did happen <laughs> right before she lasered. Laser through. <laughs> All of Vander's embryos. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it was a weird scene, but you know. Um, and, um, thematically relevant. Also, oh wait, no, I got nothing. <laughs> Well, I thought <laughs> no, no, there was a judge brewing there, but it's gone. Unless anybody has anything else, we will end there. Uh, yeah. Is, is there anything else? I'll I'll do uh, Metal's Forge tomorrow. What that's, is it on? That's happening. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about Smiling Friends. Hey, you having anyone on? Hey. Talking... No, it's just just me. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, anything to promote Smiling Friends. I see it as a worthwhile endeavor. Yeah, the friends get really out of smiling. Get, get out, out of my head. head. They, they smile at the end, typically. 
Man, I don't know what to take no more, I man. To... I don't know what to freaking take no more, man. Get out of my head. I like, look, someone said to me that that joke was dumb. You're wrong. That joke's <laughs> I love it. It's one of my favorite jokes in that so show. And I got a lot of favorite jokes. Wow, the Renaissance Man is the best joke. Like, <laughs> bar none. Oh, someone said favorite actor, damn it. So I'm assuming they're saying favorite performance for acting from all of the people in... Uh, Jinx. It's Jinx. gonna be Jinx for me, yeah. Nah, Especially if we get to include Powder. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with that one, too. Yeah, but it's, man, uh, fucking it's, it's great it's selection tough. of performances. It's a, Everyone it's a tough hill to climb, that awesome. kind of character, and she nailed it. Uh, but yeah, alright. We'll, we'll stop there, like I said. I'll collect them all up and put them into a big thing. We're gonna do them all on Wednesday. Thank you all for uh, joining us for this wonderful little journey. And uh, go watch Arcane, I guess, if you haven't. <laughs> you may as well at this point have yeah. gone through I'll all of this. Even, do it. even having watched all of this and having the whole thing <laughs> spoiled for you. <laughs> okay, so why not? Yeah. Watching it. yeah, why not? Um, and yeah. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. Bye -bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.